so let us start with the revision so with regard to the first session we are going to start with three chapters which will be coming for a 22 25 marks in exam a minimum bare minimum of 22 22 marks guaranteed in every item one is the directors another one is a board meetings and powers and third one will be the managerial personal and remuneration so in these three chapters students generally in my opinion may be different also in general student will be having more lethargic towards a chapter called as a managerial personal and remuneration than all the remaining two so first let us cover managerial personal and remuneration because one very much complicated topic is involved called as a schedule 5 so which will be heavily concentrated concentrated in exam so the trends from the past says that questions will be asked in two types number one only schedule 5 question number two schedule 5 linked with section number 197 clear so first thing what are the topics that are covered in this area called as managerial personal and remuneration please please listen first later you can see later you can copy later you can write whatever you want please listen our intention is to cover the entire syllabus very fast each and every section let us cover very fast important areas let us put a stress on that so point number one companies accept nidhi chapter no chapter have great amendments point number one clear companies act nidhi chapter there are nine amendments that have come amendments are not to the sections amendment are not to the entire rules some numericals and numbers have been changed recently clear so the only amendments from the company law point of view will be in that particular area when it comes to economic laws amendments have come in three areas number one first area is sebi lodr guidelines regulations on lodr are there there some amendments have come not some many amendments have come there also small changes have been made not entire regulation not even entire subject point number two amendments have been made in a smallest area of FEMA called as external commercial borrowings hello i am talking to everyone so in FEMA ecb small amendments have been made not so great some basis points have been changed and remaining intact and pmla small changes have been made so from this outset no great amendments are there for exams amendments are there but you can't expect question in the examination from mcq except in the form of a, a normal objective question can come in examination from the amendments that are applicable for your attempt because no great amendments have been done in this particular area hopefully everyone clear on what i said no great amendments are there the only thing you have to do is you have to revise the subject properly let's take these three days and the coming four days for the sfm so the point number one what we are going to cover in these three days number one directors three chapter set is there after that compromises oppression and investigation totally how many chapters six these six chapters take the stats from any of the past examinations minimum 30 to 35 marks will come from these areas six chapters yeah so they may shuffle the marks but definite it will definitely come so this is the marks weightage of these six chapters so first let us concentrate to complete those six areas first clear such that 30 marks will be in your pockets later we are going to start with economic laws also some chapters are there those are called as a sure shot areas from the exams so those areas we have to cover once covered after that the optional chapters we asked we will start after that clear so let us start from the first chapter managerial personal and remuneration point number one first before we start use whatever the book you have if you have my charts okay if you have some book okay no problem because subject is same everywhere clear since subject is same everywhere respect to everyone so point is you can follow any book subject is essentially the same law is essentially the same presentation may change from person to person no problem clear so please open your notes whatever you are following section number two class section number two class hmm. 50 manager and director section 2 class uh, 54 see here there are three definitions here very important three definitions are there definition number one managing director definition number two manager definition number three whole time director three definitions are there two class 53 two class 54 two class 94 
Hello, clear everyone. Two class, fifty-four, fifty-three, ninety-four, fifty-four MD, fifty-three manager, and ninety-four will be whole time director. Okay, so let us first start with that particular area. so this is the first area we are going to start with as i said you can use whatever the book you are using as of now essentially the same first what is the first definition we are going to cover there managing director so the definition of managing director is governed by section 2 clause 54 of the companies act 2013 wherein it says the following point number 1 managing director must be a director means to become a managing director first you should be appointed as a director to be very clear on this resolution appointing you as a director should be passed first and then resolution appointing you as a managing director should be passed that's the meaning of that statement clear everyone so first one point number one managing director must be a director first second one if managing director equal to director as i said already as you said already md means If MD equal to director, then everyone should be an MD. Every director should be an MD. So, MD equal to director is not a complete statement. If MD is a director, then every director should be called as a managing director. But every director will not be called as a managing director. There should be some difference. Therefore, who will become a managing director? What difference will it make when you are? added with uh, substantial powers of management instead of being called as a director i will call them as a managing director so in a simple way to understand who is an md director having the substantial powers of management but one important point here answer my question substantial powers of management must be there in order to call someone as a managing director someone as a managing director he should be given with a substantial powers of management now answer what is substantial powers of management what do you mean by may 2016 a question was asked in examinations so on this area if you have your patience please check the number also may 2016 atom date marks question came from the definition of md there they tested only on this area which area substantial powers of management not on the remaining parts of the definitions Clear? So now answer. What do you mean by substantial powers of management? The word substantial powers of management is not defined anywhere in the Act. Rather, they define what are not substantial. Clear? They didn't define what are substantial. They define what are not substantial. Hello, everyone. Now answer from your side. Who? What do who you mean by? What will be included into the list of non-substantial powers? what do you mean by non substantial powers ah uh, i will i will uh, now i am hearing some answers affixing the common seal drawing and endorsing the checks the drawing and endorsing the negotiable instruments signing any share certificate drafting for the registration of transfer of shares all these are so tell me first who is an md md means a interested with the Uh, what do you mean by substantial powers of management not defined anywhere in the act what is defined what are not substantial is defined 
now tell me how many non substantial powers are there how many non substantial powers are there that's i told so many times i don't know whether you heard or not it's a wrong answer those are such as ee youtube channel everywhere in the physical classes the same answer i'm used to tell every time at again same mistake those five are examples of non substantial you can see the bare provisions of the law in the bare act they will clearly tell that managing director means a director who is subjected to the powers derived from the articles memorandum or any other agreement or resolution passed by the company in the general meeting or by the board of directors is entrusted with the substantial powers of management of affairs of a company and includes a person occupying the position of a managing director by whatever name called explanation clearly they will write okay section 2 class 54 below on explanation they clearly write that power to do administrative acts of routine nature power to do administrative acts of routine nature everyone repeat what is that everyone whenever anyone ask you what do you mean by substantial powers of management answer number 1 is not defined answer number 2 is administrative acts of routine nature are not called as substantial that's all game over in that person asked okay power to do administrative acts of routine nature are not substantial give me some examples if you ask na then you should tell such as power to fix common seal draw and endorse any check draw and endorse any negotiable issue signing in share certificate or registration of transfer of shares clear everyone i'm talking to everyone in the class definition completed please answer now summarize everything first one uh, then you can see here tell me now managing director means a managing director means a uh, who is entrusted with what powers of management substantial powers of very good now tell me i have substantial for example i am a director i am a director substantial powers of management are given to me by volition i don't get any power i am a director director don't have substantial powers means someone has to give the powers to the director who should give four sources are there from where you can derive substantial powers number one articles number two agreement number three resolution passed by the company in a gm and resolution passed by its board of directors so summarize everything and answer now and by the way also answer this then we can go please see there what is the topic read the read the meaning of the term substantial powers of management uh, read section defined what are non substantial powers and it is as follows power to do administrative acts of routine nature that's all such as four definitions are being given power to fix draw and endorse any draw and endorse any registration of signing any shall be deemed as shall not be deemed as substantial substantial so one small rider before we go to the next definition why only these five definitions are given five uh, points are given because those are common for every company purchase of iron and steel raw iron and steel by tata uh, iron and steel company limited is not a substantial power because it is a routine administrative activity or routine operational activity clear everyone for that functional operations uh, managers will be there so but purchase of raw iron and steel by a software company will become substantial power because it is not within its objects clear yeah. so what is substantial or what is routine transaction what is a non routine transaction will be derived from the nature of business a company does real estate company ki purchase of real estate property will become routine <laughs> Ah, routine next like that if the same real estate property is purchased by a, a software company if a big property was purchased it becomes a routine activity a yeah? substantial power ah uh, that means what defines a substantial it defined by the nature of business so i can't give any five examples which suits everyone except these common seal is common for every company that's why it's called as common if it is uncommon it will be called as uncommon seal clear so it is common or uncommon common for whom every company therefore that's what coming into the example check is common for every company i'm not talking bank is common check is common for you separate check concept is not there everyone is subjected to same negotiable act 
transfer of shares is same across everywhere in India. Registration of shares is everywhere same because both are governed by only one single act in India called as a Depositories Act. Clear everyone? Transfer through DMAT accounts is governed only by one single act in India that is Depositories. So therefore these five are such powers which are common across every company. You can't have different different powers in these five aspects. Therefore they have given these five examples. That does not mean that only these five are non-substantial. These are examples of non-substantial. Don't commit mistakes in the exam in this regard. Everyone had a clarity on what I said? Just a minute. I will show you the past exam question also how it came. Sir, once we complete every topic, best question in that area I will show you in the past trend. Clear? Such that you can also understand how question will be tested on a particular area. Then we can jump into the next area points. So before it open, let us uh, first complete this. See here. So managing director means a director don't see that just answer managing director means a director who is entrusted with what powers management and the substantial powers of management is defined not defined but what is defined what is not substantial has been defined by the act and those include these examples okay power to do administrative acts of that's all those are called as non-substantial in that these five are examples Okay. okay, done. Next one. What is the next definition? Manager. Okay. So, listen, I will ask you one question. Those who attended the regular sessions will already know this is a famous question what I ask. But reminding also, please try to answer this question. One unique question that uh, defines and uh, differs MD from a manager. Okay. So, point number one. I am a director entrusted with the substantial powers of management entrusted with the substantial powers of management who am i please sir answer fast fast very good first point second one i am a director i am a director exercising substantial powers of management not separately entrusted i am doing that's all no one gave me and no one even questioning me and objecting me when i am exercising those powers Clear everyone. Then who am I? Do I be called as a manager, a managing director? No, I can't be called. Third one. I am a person, not even a director, but I am entrusted with the substantial powers of management. I am called as an MDA, not an MDA. Why? First MD must be a normal persons can't become directors so therefore here also i can't be called as a managing director very good fourth one i am a person or i am a director i am a director i don't have substantial powers of management but in company records my name is written as an md do you understand what i say originally i am not interested with any substantial power but i am called as an md Okay, so called MD. My name is MD in the company, managing director. In the record, secretarial records, I was named as an MD. Now, do I be automatically called as an MD? Answer, yeah. See, point number one mixed answers are not accepted in revision classes. So, point number one fourth case, you see there, who am I? Uh, having or not having substantial powers but still I am called as what now will I be called as an MD will I be called as an MD first point uh, answer is no why no also let us explain and then go to the next one because some are still answering yes ok so therefore still they are answering yes for them this answer will relate point number one why last sentence of the MD definition will tell that Includes a director occupying the position of a managing director by whatever 
name called sir by whatever name called sir name is uh, whatever the name they give he is an md yes listen carefully i just told you what differs a director from an md yes exactly that substantial powers will will uh, show a difference between the position of an md and position of a director clear everyone i made two chairs one chair md one chair director if you sit in director's chair you will get substantial powers or no substantial powers but if i sit in md chair uh, that means what is uh, the difference between normal director and managing director substantial powers that substantial powers is called as occupying the position of an md that means substantial powers is important not the name you name whatever you want example i didn't write there but you should answer i am a director interested with the substantial powers of management named as a president now i am an md not an md because i am a director huh occupying the position of an md by taking substantial powers but named as president but does doesn't matter naming is not important whatever name called he will be called as a managing director one very very important definition we have completed hope everyone understood the concept clearly up to here right okay see here this is one question similar question was asked in uh, 2016 may this is 2017 final may please read the question everyone there are four directors in two squares limited mr rao being a director in station means in the city has been authorized to draw and endorse a check or other negotiable instruments an account of the company and also to direct the registration of transfer of shares and uh, signing the share certificates etc whether as per the provisions of companies i he will be treated as a managing director of the company first answer up to there yes sir no ah uh. why ah uh, but uh, question came for 8 marks you are yes or no will give half mark but how to present in exam this is how you should write in the examination okay as per first you need to write clearly as per section 2 class 54 first you need to write the definition clearly always remember four marks question facts of the case analysis of the case conclusion four marks to five marks question first one facts of the case second one analysis third one ah uh, don't do this adi achap done over action venda over action facts of the case do you think that the valuer is a blind fellow already have the question don't recompile facts of the case over action okay so first point when four marks or five marks question come don't do over action directly come to the point enna do ah like that valuer will feel are you understanding or not are why you are rewriting the facts you are wasting your time four marks five marks question why you are writing the facts of the case do you think that i don't know the facts and you will explain the value of the facts of the case eh? over action do so so point is try to understand when it is a four marks five marks question come directly to the point two points you should conclude the answer first provision next conclusion apply the case to the provision and answer close so you said this is eight marks two four marks questions are there inside clear everyone this is a four marks bit another four marks bit was asked on procedure to point md clear or not everyone so therefore ensure that you are not unnecessarily wasting your time by writing unnecessary points like facts of the case sir so then facts of the case is required for 8 marks question they are also not required sir we valued papers till 2019 after 2019 because of heart stroke after seeing the question papers we stopped so never ever in the history of icai they gave facts of the case okay directly but 8 marks question what they generally do is first they will give the provision next they will give the analysis of the case third one they will apply this analysis and provision onto the conclusion clear everyone means if it is a four marks question directly apply the provision concluded two points a like this a b if you can see 
What is the pitta? A. A la, if you see, I explained only the provision. That's all. Provision completed. In a point format, you explain it. In your language, no problem. You need not write as it is bare act. That is another over action. If that be the case, no one will pass in law paper. If you have to reproduce the bare act as it is, it is not possible. Okay. So, people like us are forced to read and remember. But for not for you, because you have another seven subjects other than law. Point number two. Next one. You need not write as it is. That does not mean that don't show your own screenplay direction. What is a company? A company is a very important organization. What we do in company? We do business. Chapati Kurma Banata by company me. So don't write your own screenplay, but come to the point first. In your language, you clear that. And don't expect that answers in suggested ones are the answers in the key. Point number one. I told this also so many times in the classes, but through you again I am re uh, recreating the same situation. Listen carefully. Suggested answers in RTP, MTP recorded official. Okay? Uh, whenever suggested answers are given, suggested answers are only recommended answers given by the institute because the reason is very clear. Examination council will prepare the answer key. Clear? That's a council. BOS is a body which is established by the council which will prepare the study materials and answers. Hope you understood what I said. Answers in the key are not the answers in your MTP, RTP, study material, etc. That's why they don't tell that this is a key answer. They say suggested. I suggest you this answer. It may be there in the key. It may not be there in the key. For your kind consideration, every time institute releases Korigandam. Korigandam in Telugu means a Savarana. Okay. Small rectifications. Do you know what rectifications they will make? SFM especially, old study material, new study material, these answers have been changed. Like that they will give supplementary study paper. 72 questions, wrong answers have been rectified in 2021 in SFM. Means, old material 71 mistakes are already there, which you prepared. Clear? Every time, whenever board of studies will be having two years, ki one time, there will be a council meeting with the board of studies. At that time, they will take the study materials and they will reshuffle everything. Mistakes will be rectified. Please, my dear brother, I am telling you very clearly, don't be under the wrong impression that we have to reproduce the same answer. If you do that, Marks may be given, may not be given. So, come to the point. Write in your language, no problem. Rather than writing nonsense, write in your language, in your understandable format, no problem. So, therefore, try to understand. Maximum of the paper, try to answer properly with law. Sometimes language you may not remember. You can use your words, but don't unnecessarily change the whole motive of that particular question. Same way, try to understand here. He is asking here about who is a MD. First, you need to write the answer. Okay. Next, after that, please read. In the given case, Mr. Rao being a director in station has been authorized to do all those things. Here, you will write everything. All the powers to which he is entitled are uh, routine nature administrative task. And uh, by entrusting them, Mr. Rao cannot be considered as a managing director. You have to close the answer. Four marks for that. Another four marks is a procedure. We will see later. Up here, clear everyone. Uh, then come to my question. Tell me these four answers. If you answer four questions, done. Tell me first case. I am a director. Interested with? Will I be called as an MD? Very good. Yes. Next, the second one. I am a director. Uh, interested with substantial? I am taking substantial. I am called as an MD or not called as an MD? Yeah. Very good. Say, third one. I am a I am only a person, director, not a director. Uh, interested with? Now tell me, will I be called as a managing director? No. Last one, I am a interested with SPM, but still I am called as a. Now, come from the last, tell me, in the last case, will I be called as an MD? Why? There are no substantial powers. Second one, uh, third one. I am a person, I am given with SPM? Or? Yes, I am given with SPM. I am a director? I am called as an MDA. Answer. Second case, I am an MDA. In all the three last three cases, I am called as a manager. Wherever a person tries to escape the clutches of a managing director, law is ready to catch him with the other side around. That's called as a manager definition. Clear. Answer. 
therefore a company cannot have managing director manager both if you have an interest to appoint md na why you again cheat by appointing a manager that's why in company law they said a company can't have more than a company cannot have md and manager at the same time if you try to fool fool through manager if you try to probably go normally you should go by md a person don't go by md and manager route therefore that is not provided and that is also clearly said in section number 196 sub section number 1 that's why md manager can't be there in a company clear everyone so therefore answer my question now manager is a director individual answer at this stage don't be under a confused state as to what the definition is manager is a individual or a director ha huh? ah uh, what powers he is having he is entrusted with subsidiary powers or not no he will not be manager means an individual who subject to the superintendence of the board of directors has the whole or substantially the whole of affairs of the company and includes a person occupying the position of a manager by whatever name called whether by a contract of service or not section number 2 class 53 let me define everything clearly see here see the screen once definition of a manager first one manager means a who is subjected to the superintendent's control and the direction of board of directors has the management of whole or substantially the whole of the affairs of a company and includes a director or a person occupying the position of a manager by whatever name called by whatever name called listen carefully here if you observe do you find any where the word called as a entrusted you will not you will not because if you entrust i will become md hello i want to escape from the definition of an md if i am an md na section 2 class 54 section 196 197 throughout the entire chapter including 203 kmp everything will get attracted to me or not i don't want to get attracted by the provisions of company act i want to sit safe in the company in that case what they will do i will be a director no one will give me substantial powers but i will exercise substantial powers in the records of the company official i will not be given with substantial powers but i will exercise substantial power now i am an md not an md that means you are escaping from the provisions of company act or not you should catch this thief or not law came with alternative called as a manager if not this you are this clear or not everyone either a company will be totally genuine or either a company will try to fool the government both will not be there in a same person therefore a company can have managers a company can have md that's why company cannot have at the same time genuity and non genuity therefore they didn't tell md and manager combination possible that's what said in 1961 clear everyone in the class okay so now conclude the answer manager sorry manager means a director or an individual can be a director cannot be a director may be a director may not be a director clear everyone individual plus spm past answers individual plus spm mda manager fantastic individual plus no spm but exercising the powers very good In director plus uh, no spm but exercising director plus spm but not interested director plus spm interested managing director that's all this is a definition everyone don't commit any mistakes in the exam this is a conclusion for this answer everyone understood the point clearly ah uh, next uh, whole time director don't waste the time whole time director means a director in what employment uh, whole time employment of a company everyone had a clarity ah uh. now one small question before we go to the next one listen carefully managing director okay manager okay whole time director is one peculiarly one important concept is there tell me i am a whole time director clear i am a whole time director can i become okay i repeat once again i am a can i become director in other companies because being a whole time director in one company already answer here everyone first tell me in company a i am a in company b i again want to become whom director normal director any director in one company i am a in another company i want to accept 160 appointment through general meeting are answer here possible or not possible answer absolutely possible 
Listen carefully to the point. This is a mistake everyone is committing. Whole time directed definition. You are not reading properly. That's why you are getting these kind of doubts. Read the definition of MD uh, WTD. Whole time director includes uh, a director in yes. Employment should not be whole time. Directorship is not an employment unless and until you are an MD. Whole time directorship la what is whole time? Employment is whole time, not director. That's why they clearly said in the definition. Like this, people will get confused. The lawmaker also know this. So therefore, whole time director la what is whole time? Directorship is whole time. Huh? Our employment is whole time. Huh? Employment is whole time. Doubt. Uh, then see the definition. What they say? Please see the screen. Whole time director includes uh, a director in whole time employment. No, stop there. Director is an employee, not an employee. Sir, I am an additional director. I am an employee, not an employee. Not an employee. I am a casual vacancy director. Answer here. Say, example, she is a women director. Indian resident director. The answer here. Nominee. Uh, no one is an employee here. MD. Employee. KMP. Employee. Whole time director. Employee. Employment you should not take again. You can accept directorship because directorship is never an employment. Understood the point or not everyone. Uh, this is one small sigma rule number one. Like this so many sigma rules will come. Uh, so, so therefore, try to understand clearly so many concepts are there which uh, we have to fill the gaps wherever required. Whatever type are required. So, listen carefully. So, my point is whenever whole time director is convert. Whole time director definition la whole time applies to what is a question because word is whole time director we think the directorship is whole time but we need to read the definition properly uh, tell me what is whole time employment is whole time not the directorship therefore I am listening now tell me I am a one company uh, now tell me can I become director in another company next another company as many companies as you want, you can accept. If you want proof, I am telling the section numbers, you can check later. 197 subsection number 14. Which section is it? Everyone, everyone, please repeat, repeat. Subsection number 14, which says that, later you can read. 197, when we come to 197, I will only show you the point. 197 subsection 14 says that, if you are a managerial personal, means any of the three, in one company, you can accept any number of directorships in other companies. Just to take the permission of the existing companies. That's all. So, no, sir, I am not convinced that. Uh, read section number 203, subsection number 3, class number 1. There also it was uh, referred to the same format. When we come there, I will only tell you now. Another half an hour, we will come to uh, schedule 5 and uh, KMP concept. Then we will discuss about that more deeply. Sir, everyone, understood the point clearly? First part completed, three definitions over. Tell me, what is the number 1? Uh, managing director, second one, third one, managing director means a manager need not be a manager need not be a manager must be a director must be a sorry managing director must be a very good in all cases procedure is same 196 is the section which applies for the appointment of MD appointment of MD uh, manager and appointment of whole time director let us go into that section Mark that section important. The setup chance is there. 196. Mark it important. Shall we start? Okay. Now, see the screen once. Appointment of MD, WTD, and uh, manager. Okay. Now see here. Now everyone is aware. What two appointments are not possible at the same time? Uh, not possible. Reasons are very clear. I told you already. If you are genuine, go for. If you try to fool me, you should go for. Why at the same time I will go for both? Okay. So law also understood the same. Therefore, a company cannot have MD and 
manager at the same time answer over first point over next everyone in the class don't read anything this is a revision session please see here most of the time see the screen or me let's answer point number one tell me what is the tenure of an mtwtd manager once i'm appointed maximum how many years ah very good now tell me this license renewal is there whenever you are having insurance copy na one year validity okay today uh, last year i renewed on this date now yesterday it got expired insurance example i am telling okay yesterday it got expired i applied today for a license uh, sorry uh, insurance renewal may take 3 4 days exactly today police caught me they said show me the insurance copy i shown they said it is expired i said sorry sir i applied just another two days it will come uh, you have a good story line to sell to trivikram sinha he is having old scripts so therefore you sell to him but not to us pay the fine of 500 rupees or 600 rupees something they asked i said sir i really sir promise anti promise uncle promise i really applied for a new insurance copy it will come in another 2 3 days okay but no one will listen to us same thing bike car means okay no problem but if happens in a md's position are you understanding or not king's position should never become vacant okay <laughs> listen <laughs> king <laughs> king's position should never become vacant that means law also understood the same you are a king sitting in a particular chair the throne should not be taken by anyone so the game is on what he said is in another one year your office is getting expired or not are answer here how many years is my tenure one year over second year over third year over fourth year over from fourth year beginning onwards you can start applying for md's appointment procedure you can start continue reasons are very clear tell me how many steps are there to appoint md this you have to remember for the examinations for sure tell me how many steps are there sorry okay steps remo i want to appoint md wtd manager what is the procedure first one dei 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 yeah. md appointment i expected some answer to my surprise no one is answering so tell me md i want to appoint tell me what is the procedure step 1 first one who should appoint by chance you said but correct eh? tell me what is the first step board of directors will appoint where board meeting first step over i will appoint after appointing them i will go to general meeting reapproval has to happen there listening ah uh, who should approve by passing dash resolution bah some people are so talented i will tell you what they said ah uh, what resolution अब जो रेजोल्यूशन, वाटर से अब जो रेजोल्यूशन, विच रेजोल्यूशन आठ हजार यहाँ स्पेशल है। Do you know how these people will write in the exam? Resolution, अरे ये स्पेशल है, आठ हजार यहाँ। So when they don't remember ना, this is a meme content. So whenever they don't remember answer, they will write something there. This is called as creativity. This is possible only in descriptive. That's why they made thirty marks subject. <laughs> so listen carefully. The point is, whenever you want to appoint an MD, managing director, or a manager, three step, four step procedure is there. At least see now. Remember this. By heart, this literally, you have to do that. No option. Four steps. So fifth step is a filing requirement. Okay. first to see this later we go to qualifications and disqualifications of md concept first to see the procedure everyone please be serious follow this steps properly step 1 comply with the provisions of section number 197 and schedule 5 please tell me what is 197 what is 197 remuneration what is 197 sir remuneration next second one what is schedule 5 remuneration in case of a company making profits a company not making profits a answer here company not making profits remuneration of a company not making profit or making profit but they are inadequate so many confusions will be there 
those all will be covered in another half an hour when we come to schedule 5 schedule 5 is a most important thing three sections are in a hit list this time number 1 196 sir. number 2 schedule 5 number 3 203 what is 203 2 as far as i am concerned definitely this time in your paper 203 will be there two questions can come in md area this time those two areas the one will be 203 another can be either 196 or schedule 5 any of the th things they can ask okay first listen carefully to my point Please everyone concentrate, tell me, MD manager definitions over, I want to appoint them now. First thing, step number one, comply with the provisions of 197 covers, schedule 5 will cover. Ah, so, simply to tell, 197 and schedule 5 will cover remuneration, yes or no? But schedule 5 will cover one extra point, that is called as conditions for appointment, what is that? Conditions for appointment. There are four conditions. Okay. First, listen carefully to the point. Schedule 5 already part 1 of schedule 5. You might be aware. Schedule 5 is having four parts. Part 1, 2, 3, 4. Listen. Part 1. Conditions for appointment. Part 2. Remuneration. Part 3. Approval of part 1 and part 2 at a general meeting. Part 4. Exemption to a private company. Please tell what are the four parts. Number 1. Part 1 of schedule 5. Everyone. Conditions for appointment. Appointment of whom? Manager director, full time director, manager. Second one. Second one. Remuneration. Part three. Approval of terms and conditions and approval of remuneration in a general meeting. Third one over. Fourth one. Exemptions given to which company? These are the four parts. Parts of. Now tell me. Section in Schedule five there are four parts. What is the part two? Part 2, two again 5 sections are there. Section 1, Roman number 1, I am talking about listening. Capital Roman number, section 1 to section 5. Here, yeah. section 1, remuneration by a profit making company. Everyone repeat. Section 2, remuneration by a non-profit company. Non-profit means non profit organization. Profit is not made or inadequate profits were made. Clear? Huh? Uh, remuneration paid by a company making inadequate adequate or no profits at all okay this is second third one we'll be talking about special cases of remuneration there ibc nclt bifr those concepts will come that is what you can expect for the coming attempt section three of uh, part two of uh, schedule five he can ask an exam because no one will read as simple as that their target is which areas are left out by students. They will directly ask those questions. You are clean, bold. So, therefore, we should concentrate on that more this time. Which is section? Section. Part of schedule. Talking about special cases for the payment of remuneration. Clear everyone? Very good. Section number 4. So, please revise properly. Be serious. Section 1. Remuneration. Sir, so one second. Which section I am talking about? Schedule, file, part, tool. How many sections are there? Number one, profit making company. Number two, inadequate profit or no profit case. Number three, special cases of remuneration. Number four, perquisites not to form part of remuneration. Everyone repeat. Perquisites not to form part of remuneration. Okay. Last one is, Remuneration and managerial capacity from two companies at the same time. Remuneration? Remuneration in a managerial capacity. In how many companies? At the same time. Can I get? Can I get? But there is a limit on that remuneration. How much is the limit? How to understand is the point. How many sections are there totally? Now summarize everything. Tell me. Schedule 5 means in your brain. Blocks should be divided now. How many blocks are there? Four. First one. Part 1. First one. First one. Part 1 is having four sub branches again. Sub branch number 1. Sub branch number 1. There are the acts which were given. Two points are there. First two, two limbs will be talking about. Condition 1. You should not be fined. You should not be fined. Or you should not be imprisoned for any period. Fine exceeding 1000 under 19 acts list was given. 
how many acts in that 19 last three are newly added okay gst ibc and uh, uh, what to say economic offenders act is there fugitive economic offenders act these three are added recently remaining all are already given let's not waste time in reading those 19 you have to remember some of the other way okay now tell me part 1 2 3 4 tell me schedule 5 how many parts what is the part 1 please everyone conditions for these conditions for appointment we call as the terms and conditions in section 196 that's why i'm first telling you the schedule 5 no schedule 5 na? no chapter what is the heart of entire managerial chapter schedule 5 around that only the entire story will revolve so please don't lack clarity in schedule 5 which the students are generally having so point number one schedule 5 has how many parts part one is having how many conditions condition number one is 19 acts no fine no imprisonment second one no detention under coffee posa conservation of foreign exchange and the prevention of smuggling activities so c o f e p o s a in whatever word name you want you pronounce it so under that act you should not be detained meaning all the things we will uh, explain when we come there third one is age restriction minimum minimum max can i cross beyond 70 how procedure you remember now everyone in the class i will explain that i will re-explain that just if you have a clarity that will become more easy for me and last but is a residential status what is that residential status everyone please stop reading one question from my side anyway concept has come answer this can a non-resident become a director md can a non just now you said you should become what answer you should become a resident to become an MD. Can a non-resident become a managing director? How? 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 How is it possible? First point number one. Answer is yes or no. General answer is no. But there is a special answer because it's a special academic zone. So the special concept is first there should be a company established in. There should be a company established in a, that company should be appointing you as a managerial personnel says developed means who will get developed india will get developed says development means india will get developed eventually the whole gdp will increase taking that into consideration government of india said that welcome non residents atidi devo bhava you come to india you serve for our nation you work for our company increase our gdp take remuneration no problem you will come to india and work but subjected to some conditions. Number one, you should come with an employment visa, not with a visit visa. Come with? Answer. Employment visa. Okay. So, visa means what? Visitors' intention to stay abroad. So, with what intention you are leaving India? Please explain that. I am going for employment. That visa should be employment visa. Clear everyone? Sir, okay. Employment visa, you should come to India. This company will be there now in India. Who is offering you the job? The company's job profile. Employer here. Their details you have to submit to the embassy abroad. To whom? India. La foreign embassies will be there. Foreign la Indian embassy will be there. Right answer here. That's why they use the word Indian mission abroad. Okay, in the Bay Act, they will use the word. Means in the Indian embassy in that foreign country, for example, you are coming from USA, USA will have Indian embassy. In Indian embassy, you have to submit all the details of this employee. They will confirm with the employer in India here. Everything is satisfied, a non resident come and, uh, can come to India and he can serve for that particular company as a managing director, provided that company must be established in. Uh, says now tell me we completed part one of schedule five to some extent why we are reading is to understand 196 first we need to understand schedule five schedule five is having how many parts be patient answer number one four part part one is having how many condition no mistakes number one terms and conditions for appointment the first one is no fine or imprisonment under how many acts sir Second one, no detention under conservation of foreign exchange. Number three, age, minimum age, maximum, 
and the last condition is resident in india resident in india very good answer over can a non resident become a managing director yes one small exception has been given tell me when he can become first he should be a non resident please answer one by one i will ask question answer he should be a company is established in a he is coming with a and got all the approvals in the indian mission abroad answer over if you can write these four points you will get the two marks or three marks whatever he give everyone understood the point clearly uh, now listen carefully whenever you want to become an md first point is schedule file a part 1 you have to comply with part 1 will be talking about the terms and conditions of your appointment first terms and condition of first one is they have given the list of 19 acts how many indian stamp act is there or not don't see here you might have already gone through them indian stamp act is there or not there come it will be there here companies act companies act are companies act la companies act is not there na tupuk companies act will be there or will not be there will be there it's obvious answer next labor legislations like bonus gratuity provident fund yes sir hey hey are telling wrong answer is one thing will be there what will be there labor legislations will not be there to sell that i asked you to ask you the question bonus gratuity provident fund esip f illa clear everyone so listen labor legislations will not be there only economic offenses like gst income tax companies act these will be there along with that basic fundamental rights are disturbed like food adulteration okay food adulteration food clothing shelter in that if you disturb those acts will be governed there labor legislations are not covered first point remember because in one of the act they asked the question bonus act yeah bonus act is not covered within the provisions of managerial person even though you are paying fine no problem everyone understood the point clearly or not now answer my question clearly income tax is there or not companies act gst now answer gst la i paid i paid a penalty of around 2500 2500 penalty i have paid now tell me am i qualified to become a managing director through schedule 5 route now are answer here answer yes it's a fine not a penalty penalty is different fine is different game over read properly don't commit mistakes like this only questions will come penalty is different fine is different what is the difference between fine and penalty sir okay listen carefully from the sections point of view if you have to read the same fines will be levied by the special court established under section number 435 penalties will be levied by an adjudicating officer under section number 454 clear who will levy fine special are answer who will levy fine who will levy penalty adjudicating authority or adjudicating officers clear everyone whenever in law anywhere you can find two types of language see here please liable to a penalty these all goes under 454 shall be punishable these all go to section number 435 sir which act sir every act section number se change concept is same you take sebi act sebi act la section number 15 i 15 a to 15 h concepts will be there penalties will be given those are all penalties those are not fines don't interchange both fines in sebi was provided under section number 24 penalties are provided under section 15 of sebi fines under at least answer no yaar fine under 24 penalties under 15 which act which act samala again fines are provided under section number 13 1a 1b 1c 1d penalties are provided under section number 15 and 14 do you understanding or not 
FEMA. This is on FEMA. PMLA. Penalties are provided under section number 70, 72. Like that. Fines are provided under section number 4. Read with section number 45. FEMA. Take any act. Pe penalties are different. Fine is different. Now, I will ask you a question. Since the occasion has come. Tell me, I didn't give a notice of a board meeting properly. Notice of a board meeting. Section number 173, subsection number 4. Uh, tell me, what is the amount that will be levied on me? 25,000. Fine, uh, penalty. Uh. Some people. Penalty. This is the answer. Because some are telling fine. Some are telling penalty. Finality. Tell me, it's a fine, uh, penalty. Uh. It's a penalty. It's a penalty. 187. Register not maintained properly. Fine, uh, penalty. Uh, there. Penalty. I understood. Ah, first penalty. Next automatically he will ask a fine. <laughs> but you are wrong. Adida penalty. Okay. So point that is also penalty. 185 loans to directors. <laughs> so fine penalty. Yeah. That's a fine. 186 is a fine. 185 is a fine. 187 is a penalty. Observation required now. Monetarily, some public money is involved. Na. Fine imprisonment. Only registers of filing, procedural compliances are mistaken. Then they will levy a penalty. Penalties are levied at the lower level grade officers like ROC. Clear? Fines are levied directly by special courts, magistrate, all these people. Chalo, Charlapalli jail batch. So, Directly magistrates will come to levy the fines and imprisonment. Understanding or not everyone. Ah, therefore, listen carefully. Here, tell me, this section, 196 read with the schedule 5, I should not be fined, not penalized. I am talking to you, sir. Ah, fine, penalty, anything. Fine. 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 Okay. Exceeding? Not even 1000, 1000 also okay. Exceeding 1000. Now tell me, income tax of 500, companies act of 500, in another act of 500, total 1500 I paid. Fine. Now tell me, I am disqualified, huh? not disqualified. Huh? You should check for each and every act separately, not aggregate. He didn't use the word aggregate. Clear everyone? These are all some observations that you need to make on the section. It is for one act, huh? all the acts put together. Huh? Another answer here, everyone. One act, all the acts put together. Only one act you need to consider. Clear? That means income tax. Totally 1000. Uh, more than 1000. Companies act, more than 1000. Like that you need to take. Hope you are clear. This is a point. That's why. If you listen to my point now, then you can understand what wrong you have done in the past. Listen. How much you find? Everyone, how much you find? How much you find? Exceeding? Thousand for an offense convicted. See the book you are reading. Or any offense. Offenses are different. Contraventions are different. Offenses incurs fines and imprisonment. Contraventions will have penalties. Clear or not, everyone? Those are offenses. You have to involve in offense. Okay, you should be convicted for an offense. Okay, next. So tell me, in Schedule 5, how many parts are there? Four part. Part 1 is terms and conditions. So tell me, how many acts were given? In the 19 acts, I should not be fined. I should not be imprisoned. Fine, uh, not even 1 rupee. It is exceeding 1000. Imprisonment, how many months? Any number of months. One day also, it will be attracting the section. Clear everyone in the class? Next. Condition number two, there is an act called as a COFE POSA. Okay, under that act, you should not be detained. Detained means arrest on a doubt. Suspicion, if you arrest, that is called as a detention. Detention means stopping someone to do something. So that's called as a detention. You should not be detained under COFE POSA. Clear, everyone? Number three, age. You already know the age limitations given. Minimum? Maximum? That's all. More than that, I don't know. Residential status already understood. Clear or not, everyone? Now listen carefully. 
now which part of schedule 5 we completed one of schedule 5 completed in the meanwhile we also complete 196 now tell me to appoint an md wtd manager first step number one we should comply with the provisions of 197 and schedule 5 da, what does it mean now you understood schedule 5 will be talking about schedule 5 will be talking about terms and condition that means before you get appointed everyone listen please procedure important before you get appointed as an md wtd manager first company will make a pre-checking company secretary or chartered accountant being auditor of the company will come approach a proposed md person and he will ask him sir i will ask you four questions answer for them genuinely because you have to sign at the end as an affidavit number one i will give you the list of 19 acts are you convicted with a fine more than thousand or imprisoned for any period under these 19 acts you should give me some information you are an md i am a company secretary and an auditor i am giving you the acts indian stamp act no companies act no i given all the 19 list every answer he said no never i paid fine uh, more than 1000 under any of these acts clear now tell me i complied with everyone i complied with schedule 5 part 1 condition 1 Tick, uh, second condition didn't shadow he said that i uh, i heard this act the first time in my life kofre posa what is this karap posa i don't know so he said that i heard the first time in my life so no chance out of the box question okay no age sir i am 45 he said or i am 55 or i am 60 so okay no age restrictions tick number four so i didn't even go on flight anywhere outside india so that question i invalid i don't have passport okay done so four questions tick now tell me i complied with the dash Full schedule 5, eh? ah, part 1 of schedule 5, fully complied, clear everyone, that's what he mean here by schedule 5, first comply with all these, once the company is confirmed that this person is a correct person who complied, then you proceed for discussions on remuneration, clear everyone, I am a manager, management person already there, you are an MD coming. Now I will ask sir. Four conditions you satisfied. Perfect. Now let us discuss about uh, monetary terms and conditions as well. Tell me how much you want per month. AGMA, GMA, Shipyada, Chinka, Banka. So what you want he will ask. <laughs> so he said how much salary you are expecting from this company. You should be a whole time sir, or you should be a managing director. How much you are expecting. He said that anyway companies had decided a percentage rate 5% of net profits Okay within that 5% only No 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 Are net profit 5% means you join today April 1st you fool Year will be completed on 31st March p and will be prepared by June or July That means if you ask only net profit based on wait for 16 months for remuneration No 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 not like that You do one thing I will take some amount monthly basis Okay monthly I will take some amount yeah, last at the end of the year you calculate at that time three situations will come my total drawn may be lesser than total what we calculated i will take extra are you understanding or not i will first take some amount monthly basis i will take five lakh five lakh five lakh five lakh every month 60 lakhs done at the end of the year i calculated np into five percent it came to 72 lakhs balance how much is there obviously what he will do hey answer here you drawn how much per month? Totally how much? At the end of the year, what is calculated? Net profit. Into 5% you done. How much it got? Answer here. You are eligible to draw 72, but you drawn how much? Balance what you will do? Sacrifice to Sudhishtha. Uh, what you will become? You will, are you will collect the balance for lack of will not collect. Uh. Answer. Therefore, law also didn't tell anything. Anyway, he will collect. Therefore, there is no provision in companies act saying that you have to collect extra. Anyway, he will collect. One rupee also he don't leave. But the problem is with the second, third case. Second case, na, I drawn 60. Exactly 60 I came. Then no pain, no gain. Third situation will come. Ah, this is a very, very important one. We are linking all the sections if you understand. Tell me, 
I drawn 60, but 5% of net profits came to 40. Then how much extra I have drawn? Then I can hug 20 lakhs and sit there. Ah, uh, No. Now what I have to do? Are answer here? Refund back. Refund back within how many years? Two years are time decided by the board of directors, whichever is earlier. Understood the linking point, what we link it now? Uh, like this, if you understand, you will remember forever. So the point is, tell me now, you only answered almost all the points now. Thank you very much. Uh, my strain reduced. Uh, tell me, I want to negotiate with regard to? I came to you. I asked you what you are expecting. Okay, you said I want monthly as well as annual one single payment. But at the end, they may not be favorable to you. May be favorable to you also. Tell me, I drawn how much? 72. 60, 60, 60, 40. Tell me, 60, 72. Draw excess. Okay. 60, 60. Nothing. And 60, 40. Refund how much? Entire amount. Huh? Excess water you have, you have to refund. Now tell me that for 20 lakhs, I said, I don't want to refund. I already used it. I can't refund. Can I do waiver? Can I get waiver? Whose approval is required? Shareholders special resolution is required in order to waive the excess remuneration drawn. Some parts of 197 also we completed by the way. Okay, now everyone answer properly. Which schedule we are reading? Part one. Ra, bite ra. We already into schedule schedule by part two. Ah, tell me now. Ah, we are in which schedule? Part two. talking about talking about now. Listen. In that how many sections are there? First section is remuneration by a profit making company that's what we discussed now profit is there means you can tell monthly i will get six five lakh at the end np into some person as a npa not there then then uh, sorry, sir, listen 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 please 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 i draw how much per month five lakhs at the end 60 lakhs okay i calculated np at the end of the year okay Suddenly, my freight is so bad, it came into losses. Okay. So, really it will happen. It happens. COVID and so many companies went through that. Okay. Sudden losses came to the company. Now, tell me, loss happened, but I drawn 60 lakhs. I have to refund the entire amount. Ah. Okay, then, Schedule 5 will save you. What will save you? What will save you? Schedule 5 limits are given already. Clear. Limits we will see later. From this limit to this limit, negative effective capital to 5 crores of effective capital. How much? 60. Answer 60. That's why I have taken 60 lakhs example. Now tell me, how much I have drawn? Answer. My effective capital is 3 crores. Now how much I can draw? How much I have actually drawn? No problem again. On this also exam questions came in the same way in which I am asking you the questions now. Merging 196 or 197 with schedule 5, all these they will merge into one single question. Student will get confused and by the way, the first thing, the better answer is, first question in the paper is from managerial personnel. Open a chain. Managing director, managerial person question. That will damage your very psychology and your confidence will be damaged because of this chapter. Therefore, we are first taking this area. Clear everyone. Exams also be 100% perfect. Ultimately perfect with this chapter. Question bank all the questions you do. Whatever the way in which the answers are given, observe properly. This chapter will come for 6 to 8 marks in exam. First question in the paper. Opening, opening, this question will come. So therefore, if you are perfect with this, that confidence will drive you throughout the paper. Okay. Now tell me, schedule file up part 1 negotiation started. I ask how much remuneration you want. Monthly, this much amount. Annually, on the percentage. If company makes a loss, I will pay through net profit basis, huh? through schedule 5. Huh? That also you should tell to him at the beginning of his term or not. That's called as schedule 5 again. So, tell me, profit making companies will pay remuneration as per schedule 5, huh? 197. Huh? Answer. Inadequate loss will paid by schedule 5, huh? 197. Huh? 
these two you should tell after appointed or before appointment now tell me schedule 5 covers terms and conditions or remuneration or both 197 one schedule file part 1 schedule file part 2 197 that means whenever you are appointing any person first you need to comply with the terms next you need to negotiate the remuneration after appointment you should do these two before appointment that's why first point came comply with the provisions of 197 and schedule 5 first you convince him for remuneration first check his terms and conditions clear or not everyone perfect a candidate a perfect candidate we selected stage 2 we are shifting now stage 2 what we will do in the stage 2 appoint them appoint at the hello everyone appointment at the board meeting okay in this board meeting, two things you have to do. Step three. First one, tell me. One second, as I already said to you, who will sit with MD while approving terms and conditions? Company secretary or an auditor? Yes or no? Are you answer here. Yeah. Along with him, nomination and remuneration committee, if there, that person also will sit. Clear everyone? Because remuneration negotiations, they will make on behalf of the company. Who? Nomination remuneration committee members. Okay. Now listen. NRC with auditors or NRC with the company secretary will sit with the uh, candidate or not. They will negotiate on the remuneration details. They negotiate it. Now listen carefully. Only one director being a person in NRC will go. Auditor anyway not a director. Company secretary also need not cannot be a director. That means all the directors, other directors know about his terms and conditions. Huh? Therefore, Whatever the terms and conditions which are already approved by the auditors, whatever the remuneration negotiations accepted between the company and the candidate should send for an approval again to the board of directors at a board meeting. Read the step 3. Read. Approval of terms and conditions of appointment and approval of remuneration at the same board meeting. Means in that board meeting, how many things they will do? Three things they will do actually. First one. Appoint. Second one, approval of terms and conditions. Third one, approval of remuneration. Later, put it again before next important person. Who is that fellow? Who is that fellow? Shareholders. Please read. What is the step four? Subsequent approval of terms and conditions and remuneration by the shareholders at a general meeting. This will be a OR, SR. Ordinary or special? This is ordinary or special? Ordinary or special? Your clarity in concept I will understand in another one minute to tell me. Is it ordinary or special? Ordinary or special? It is a special if your age is 70 above. It is special if you want double the remuneration. Now did you understand the link between schedule 5 and 197? 197 and 196 if you read. Or schedule 5 when you are reading, schedule 5 they will write. If you want excess remuneration, you have to pass a special resolution. Ah, here they will pass. Generally, 45 years normal remuneration I want to draw. 75 years normal remuneration. 45 years excess remuneration. That's all. That's the point he want to convey. Here, don't tell ordinary special. That's why Lala they didn't use ordinary special. If you read the bare provision, he will use by a resolution. Which resolution will be decided by the activity you are doing there? Clear or not, everyone? Okay. Next. So, subsequent approval of terms and conditions and remuneration by the shareholders at the general meeting. Up to here, clarity everyone. Very good. After that, filing compliance is there. Tell me, what form we need to file? Form number within from the date of from the date of appointment. Means from the board meeting 60 days. Shareholders don't appoint. They will approve. Already they are appointed in board. Clear or not everyone? Tell me, what are the five steps procedure? Summarize everything, please. Don't commit mistakes. Five steps. See the screen at least. First one, comply with 197 and schedule. Five. Now everyone remember that point. Uh, don't forget. Comply with provisions of 197 and second. Appointment at a board meeting. After that, approval of terms and conditions. Approval of remuneration. Next, step number four. Put it before whom? Shareholders. For what? 
approval what approval approval of appointment approval of terms and conditions approval of remuner means how many times a filtration will happen three times that's why they became managing directors you know not after all these you need to file with file with form number within 60 days of appointment will happen in a not in a perfect this is the answer over main point hope everyone is thorough with the section 196 ah how many big sections are there in this chapter 3 196 197 203 in that which section almost we completed 196 but small gaps are there let us fill those and let's go to the next one my question is there answer cg approval is required in some cases yes or no what cases a cg approval is required when there is a sorry okay variance should be there from from the schedule 5 uh, from 197 section uh. answer yeah yes. answer okay now tell me there are four parts in schedule 5 okay na variance should come in any of the parts uh? part 1 only because part 1 contains terms and conditions those terms and conditions if you could not comply with then you can go for whom central government approval listening everyone now tell me cg approval is required if you comply with the schedule 5 uh, if you could not comply with schedule 5 uh? everyone then you should go for central government approval everyone please repeat this central government approval is required if you can comply with schedule 5 uh? if you cannot comply with schedule 5 uh? if you cannot comply with schedule 5 then you should go for central government approval now tell me in our five step sequence step 1 197 schedule 5 step 1 197 and schedule 5 step 2 appointment step 3 approval at board meeting step 4 approval at general meeting step 5 mr1 now my question is if schedule 5 could not be complied with tell me the sequence of the steps sir. five step procedure you tell the sequence normally what is the sequence uh schedule 5 and 197 uh plus board meeting plus approvals plus shareholders plus mr1 okay this is general sequence clear now tell me what change will be made if i could not comply with schedule 5 instead of first one schedule 5 what will come in sit in place are answer here uh, now tell me what is the sequence cg plus 197 plus all these things will come as yes or no like this you should not think okay so first point is this is not the way sequence a wrong do you know why cg approval is required if you could not comply with the provisions of part 1 of schedule 5 who should not comply the person who is appointed means all the appointment should be made listening or not it should come between this and this between what and what after both appointment before shareholders approval sir how who said you a question will arise yes or no obvious answer 201 section will give the answer for this come to 201 wherever you have the book please open section number 201 if you don't have at least see the screen see the screen once which is section 201 okay na procedure and forms there will be a question if you can see there section number please everyone listen carefully to the point now please concentrate very important linking issue will be there listen carefully 201 section says that whenever you are going for a cg approval why you will go for cg approval for your kind information why you will go when you comply with the part 1 of schedule 5 when you could not comply ah uh, ah uh, means we are appointing a right candidate uh, may not be a right candidate ah uh. it may not be a right candidate you are not appointing him as a normal director you are putting him in the seat of a king directly so this will be a interest affecting issue happening in the company or not 
when you have a, a responsibility to inform your shareholders about it therefore listen carefully whenever company appoints any person as an md who mdr manager director manager who is not complying with the provisions of schedule 5 if you want to appoint such a person you appoint him board meeting was appointed clear but apply for a central government approval apply within 90 days from the date of appointment means first appointment should be made you should not replace in the first case understanding or not within 90 within 90 days from the date of from the date of that means already what should happen appointment should happen first after appointing him then which, whose approval will start cg approval will come in place so take the central government approval accordingly first step St now tell me the step steps properly step one variance is there step one comply with section 197 what will not be there schedule 5 will not come plus board appointment plus approval in board meeting ah plus central government approval later we conduct what shareholders general meeting will be conducted who will be reapproved there clear or not now listen 201 section says this you are appointing a correct candidate wrong candidate wrong candidate means if you could not comply with schedule 5 you are called as wrong candidate only okay you could not comply with schedule 5 you are treated as a wrong candidate but still company is appointing as if there is no alternative you should inform the shareholders or not therefore section 201 says that 201 says that first you should give a general notice to your shareholders everyone repeat what you should give not general meeting notice what notice should be given general notice should be given which notice to whom by whom company company should give so slowly you will lack the clarity so please listen again who should give general notice should give general notice to whom to whom shareholders what form is there for that there is no form newspaper you have to give two newspapers one in english another one in the local vernacular language you should choose and you should give a newspaper advertisement hello clear everyone tell me now i am appointing whom md uh complying with schedule 5 or not complying with schedule 5 i have a responsibility to inform whom therefore inform using what inform using what general notice general notice is a notice given in a making our shareholders aware of the fact that we appointed a person uh, as a md who could not comply with these provisions of schedule 5 part one of schedule 5 we should clearly explain them with reasons for appointing everything clear or not everyone now tell me our shareholders are informed about a happening which is uh, something uh, uh, weird and uh, not obviously happening every time yes or no now they will have a knowledge clear everyone now listen to the procedure we should apply to whom for approval now central government within how many days in form number mr2 everyone repeat mr within how many days within how many days very important point to that mr2 attachment should be the note to newspaper cutting what should be attached newspaper cutting that means the proof of sending the general notice you should attach to what you should attach to what and then apply to the cg that means cg should also believe that really you have sent what general notice to the public that means what is an obvious common sense point here if you already conduct general meeting why general notice again that's why one can understand from this point that this will happen before general meeting which is costly affair say cg approval or general meeting costly affair lakhs and crores will be spent on general meetings or cg approval cg approval or thousand rupee form mr2 thousand rupees general meeting now it will take around big big companies means it will take around lakhs and crores now tell me which is more economical cg approval or general meeting if I first go for general meeting, even though before CG is approving it, CG if it disapproves, what will happen? Are they common sense? You can answer like this. Clear or not, everyone? So therefore, answer my question clearly. What should come first? 
everyone cleared your all the doubts in this regard ah uh, now tell me now what is the procedure if i could not comply with schedule 5 part 1 of schedule 5 couldn't comply what is the procedure instead of going for schedule 5 you should go for you should go for cg approval will replace schedule 5 ah huh? cg approval will come after board appointment ah huh? that's all that's the answer given here everyone understood 196 in its correct sense ah huh? along with that there are four outright disqualifications given on mds see here these are the four outright disqualification what is the first one h minimum already you said the answer properly only tell me minimum maximum this is the first age restrictions that were given very good that so can i appoint a person below 21 above 70 pass special resolution i try to pass a special resolution but special resolution is not passed properly say for example 200 are there here 200 la let us take for example uh, 60% approved 200 la 60 means 120 yes or no 200 la 60% approved means how much 120 special resolution required 60 ah more than 60% ah 75% is required or not i couldn't get 75 i got only 60% now tell me 60% is enough to have an ordinary resolution or not answer that means how many votes 200 are there votes cast in favor are ha uh -huh. votes cast in favor are 120 votes cast against are 80 now tell me votes cast in favor is more than votes cast against or not ah uh, now tell me who i am age is above 70 want to get appointed as a i try to pass which resolution if passed the well and good if it is not passed no problem there is a compliance conditions also given to that what is the next compliance condition at least you should get votes casted in favor must be more than votes cast against the resolution then after that you should apply for central government approval clear or not this is not mr2 it's a normal application you have to make there are normal forms called as a gnl forms in companies act which form gnl3 has to be filed by that uh, 75 years person or 72 years person gnl3 he has to file to the central government that's called as a general application it's not company related application my personal application company is applying for his age uh, or he is applying uh. therefore it's your personal application why you are mixing with the company forms those are all called as a gnl forms clear everyone so file a gnl form with the central government central government will check whether he is right candidate ratan tata tell me right candidate to stand as an md or not 70 or more than 70 ah shareholders are fools they didn't approve his appointment can i go for cg now not to insult to such kind of great people that provision has been inserted by amendment in 2019 clear or not everyone done so now last question for 196 step 1 compliance with 197 schedule 5 step 2 board step 3 approval at board step 4 shareholder step 5 filing of mr1 okay now listen both appointed approved shareholders disapproved then acts done from appointment date to the disapproval date will be valid or not valid ah valid deemed as a valid transaction only everyone understood the point clearly with this we completed 196 part 1 of schedule 5 and also some points of 197 clear or not everyone okay 15 minutes i will give a break ah 201 section also we completed simultaneously along with that which section we completed 201 also completed next 197 give me 15 minutes i will cover the entire 197 the biggest section in this chapter 17 subsections are there totally how many 17 subsections are there 17 subsections 16 applicable for your exams one is deleted 16 subsections are applicable 16 subsections we are going to see now first point number 1 slowly one by one answer see this section can be divided into four parts see the screen once part 1 maximum remuneration to various categories of managerial personnel very good second one increase in remuneration 
in certain cases and related issues. Next one, sitting phase, remuneration, other capacity and impact of schedule 5. Next one, disclosures and miscellaneous issues. These are all the points. Clear everyone? Last attempt of question came from the last part, which no one will expect. They will leave, he will ask that. He will not ask, that's why we will never tell CA is a difficult course, it's a different course. They don't ask questions what you expect, they will ask questions what you don't read. What generally student will leave, he will also see from that angle. When I will read one answer, seriously I am telling you, I am not joking, you read some sections. When you read some sections, some sections or some problems in SFM, some sections in love when you read, they irritate you. See, never I should touch this, you will feel na. That person also will feel same feeling. That's why they give those questions only. Always, that's why we feel, I, I have done everything except for this. Exactly same question came in exam. Do you know why? Like you, so many people will leave that. That concept will irritate everyone. Are you understanding or not? Managerial person chapter, people overall read schedule 5. But no one will read 201. It irritates us. Are you? What is this question in the middle? We will leave. They will ask. You will read everything in 197. Disclosures will come. Audit report disclosures, board disclosures will come. That's it. So many number concepts are there. 5%, 3%, 2%, 1%. Adi da important. So, Adi da unimportant. He will feel reverse. He will give the same question. He also know. No one will read requirements of uh, disclosures. He will ask the same question. That's why 4 marks question in the last term came from. Last part, disclosures and miscellaneous issues. Do you know what is the section number for that? Section number 197, subsection number 12. And read with the section number 197, subsection number 15 and 16. Both sections they have asked in exam. So therefore, keenly observe each and every point inside this point. First one, maximum remuneration. You should tell. There are two categories of managerial person. Number one. That also I should only tell. Okay, thank you very much. See there. There are two types of companies. Number one. Public number two. First, happiest answer. Private company na chapter A not applicable. So schedule by concept A not applicable. 197 A not applicable. Happy life. Okay. Come to the other part. Because examination he will not ask this. Never he will ask this. My guarantee. So he will ask the first point only. Okay. First one. Tell me what is the company we are dealing with? Answer here. Company. Public company. Public companies are again divided into two categories. Public companies with managerial personnel, public companies without managerial personnel. Sir, without possible, sir. Some companies, sir, it is possible. There are unlisted public companies. Which company? There, they don't even want an MD. Every director will start managing the company. Therefore, you can't spot out exactly who will, uh, really, uh, like private company. Private company, is there MD? CEO, women director, no color. Which I am talking about. I <laughs> am talking about company. So, in a normal private limited company, you will find categories of directors. Huh? No, don't join. So, <laughs> join listed companies, a number will be more. So, therefore, listen carefully. I am talking about directors. You understood as I did that, Thank you very much. I am a very nice guy. Listen. So, point is, there are two types of companies. One public, second private. Uh, public companies, again, they divide into two parts. Companies with the MP, companies without MP. Sir, in this chapter, when I use MP, MP means three persons. Three persons, okay. MP and other directors means, this plus all the other uh, bacha directors will be there, na, with no use. Fit for no use candidates will be there. Like other directors, so who will come sit to take sitting fee, sit to fee, sit to fee. That candidate, that batch, separate batch will be there. So now listen carefully. There are two types of companies. Companies with the MPs, companies without MP. Companies with the MP, again we will divide that into two parts. Only one MP, multiple MPs. Means, only one MP means only one MD is there or one whole time director or one manager. Second one is MD, WTD, WTD, WTD. Manager WTD, two WTDs and one director, one managing director, like that, any multiple combination. Clear, 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 everyone. Now tell me, companies are divided into how many parts? 15 minutes time is there, we have to complete this. Next to 45 minutes, we will complete the chapter, we will go to board meetings. 
So please, as fast as you answer, we will go to the next one. Tell me, what is the section governing remuneration in profit companies? Companies are broadly classified into how many types? Number one, public. Number two, public companies are again categorized into two. Companies with the MP, companies without MP. Companies with the MP is again divided into two parts. Number one, companies with one MP, companies with multiple MPs. Now, I will ask questions. You start giving the answers or else you see first I will tell. Sir, I have only one MP. I have only... I am not telling I have only one director. I am telling I have lot many directors and one MP. One MD, five directors. Clear? How much that one MD can get? Not exceeding, uh, see there, 5% of net profits. Fantastic. Second one. I am an MD. Okay? I am an MD. But along with me, another WTD is also there. That means this is a company having one MP, uh, multiple MPs. Uh. Tell me, both of them put together can draw how much? Not exceeding 10% of net profits. 10% of? But please answer. In the first case or second case, MPs are there or not there? MP, MP or MPs are there or not there? First case, how many? Everyone. Second case, are there two or multiple, some number is there. In the first case, MP is there. Second case also, MP is there. If MP is there, other directors don't get more than 1%. Other directors, bacha candidates are there, na? Those don't get more than. So, how much they will get? 1% they will get. Clear or not, everyone? Maximum 1%. Sir, only 1 MP, 1%. There are multiple 1%. If you want more than that, different discussion is there. Excess remuneration drawn. As of now, everyone understood the logic clearly. Uh, so tell me, I am a MD. Tell me, companies are broadly classified into fast. Fast, fast. Number one. Number two. Section does not even apply to. Section applies only to. Next one. Answer. Public companies, again, I divide into two parts. Companies with. Second one, companies without. Company with the MP, again, how many category? Number one, only one, multiple. Only one, again, we'll divide into two parts. How much to that one MP? Other two M MDs and one whole time director is there. So all the three put together will get? All the three put together will get? Not less than 10%. All the others will get? Answer. Uh, my company don't have MD concept. All are normal directors. Eh? All of them put together can get uh, not more than 3% of net profits. Everyone understood the point clearly or not? Clear everyone to the concept up to here? Uh, now tell me. I can draw that remuneration. So this is the first chart we need to understand. Next. Please read. Section covers. Be able to manage real persons and other directors also. Section deals with maximum remuneration payable. Don't be in a wrong impression. Exactly 5 should be paid. No. 5 is maximum. 10 is. 1 is. 3 is. All those are maximum. You can't go beyond the limit. That's all. Everyone understood? Next stage. Net profits are computed in the manner referred under section number. 198. Tell me what is 198, sir? 198. Uh, computation now? Uh, net profit. So, occasion came now. Let us uh, correlate and complete that concept as well. Uh, see here. Okay, so small observation, small observation, whenever I am talking about managerial remuneration calculating the net profits, net profits are calculated under section number 198, 198 section is a small common sense issue, what they want to tell is in 198, whenever you pay remuneration, remuneration should be always a performance based remuneration, what remuneration, performance based remuneration. Greater the performance, greater the remuneration or greater the performance, greater the net profits, greater will be the remuneration. Percentage is same, amounts will increase. 
Net profit 100 crores, net profit 120 crores. If you perform well, 100 become 120, 120 become 220. Law never objects you to take higher remuneration. Law objects you to take higher percentage. Are you understanding or not? Law don't deny to take the higher remuneration. Last year I took uh, 5 crores. Now I want to take 10 crores. You take 100 crores. Equivalently, you show the net profits. LHS or RHS, if you take X into some percentage, na, government like to increase X. It don't want to increase a percentage. Are you understanding or not? So, therefore, don't increase the percentage for the same profit. Increase the net profit for the same percentage. Clear or not, everyone? Ah, this is the thing that he want to convey. 198 section, of what they say is, any payment which is not linked to the performance of the directors should be added back or deducted accordingly. Clear everyone? I sold a machinery, land and building, plant and machinery I sold. I got some amount of profit. Profit come because of directors. Therefore, I added deduct. Clear? Discount and issue of debentures is there. Tell me, discount and issue of debentures, discount is given because of directors. Uh, or premium is there. Premium becomes because of the directors. Uh, uh, in all these cases, that means no need to read 198 separately. The point what you need to focus is you have to observe whether the elevator item given in the exam is uh, something related to the director's performance or not. If it is not directly relatable to it, add or deduct accordingly. Income na income income na deduct expense na add back. Clear or not, everyone? Like that they have given here. List. List don't mug up now. You can read later. Understood the concept or not. Answer here everyone. So therefore, there is a point. Sir. Okay. So next. Uh, but one small point. You sell a capital asset. You sell what? You purchased for 100 rupee. Please listen carefully. Exam question. You know that. 100 rupee cost. How much? 100 rupee is the cost. You sold this 100 rupee cost asset. Say for example, at 130, example, land. What is that? Land. 100 rupee cost you purchased. Sold at 150. Okay, now how much profit came? 50 rupee profit came. That 50 should be transferred to capital reserve, not to the profit and loss account. Yes or no? Therefore, they are not allowing here. Because 50 crore profit doesn't come because of directors. It comes because of the asset. Asset generated cash flow, directors generated cash flow. Very good. Sales directors because of them it happened. Therefore, sale income will be taken and you can uh, pay the remuneration accordingly. Okay. Now listen carefully. Last one. You purchase a land and uh, plant and machinery. Purchase a very unique kind of plant and machinery. Advanced model you purchased in India. Cost is a two three times more. You imported that from Germany. Listen carefully, like this question was tested in one of the three attempts back, they tested one question. They imported a machinery from Germany. Unique machinery they imported. That machinery which is imported from Germany is such a unique one, which is three, four times costlier in India. You purchased it, 1000 rupees. There they have given somewhere around 500 crores or something. So 1000 rupees you purchase an asset. Three years after you are selling it, when the WDV is a 400. WDV how much? Everyone, very good. Cost, WDV, you sold at 1,250. You sold at, now tell me, how much is the total, what is the profit that you made above the cost? Above the cost, above the cost, listen, above the cost, 250, very good. Above the WDV, 600 will not be allowed, 250 will be allowed. Because after WD also excess the directors have brought or not, the balance you can transfer, the remaining you can't transfer to the PNL. On this problem also came, I will show you. How the question came in examination, I will show you. See here. Please see the question. Simple question only, but please see there. Net profit as per the PNL account. How much is given? Very good. Profit from the sale of machinery. 50. Is this a 
directly have given no WDB nothing. Normal question they asked in exam. So tell me, double sorry, uh, sale of asset is made on the profit has come. How much profit? This is because of directors. Huh? No. Next, uh, like that profit on sale of forfeited shares because of directors. Huh? Do you know what is a forfeiture? What is forfeiture? If you don't pay the calls properly after the due date, what they will do? Forfeit the share. Share price is hundred rupee. You paid fifty. Balance fifty are not paying. They will cancel that and they will reissue to someone. They will again reissue at hundred. That means whatever the fifty you collected is a profit or not? That profit came because of others' default. Huh? That profit has come because of directors' performance. Huh? That's why don't add them. Don't add them. Don't take it as a profit. That profit should not relate to the directors. Clear. Next, next question. Please see. Profit and loss does not include the following items: interest on unsecured loans and advances. It is a operating item or not? Everyone, you should have deducted it, but not deducted. Read, read. Interest on. Interest on. It would have been deducted already. Sir, interest is a item which should be taken as a financing cost for the company or not? But the company has taken or not taken on. Last one. Bad debts to the extent written off. Bad debts is to the extent written off. You can see here. See there once. See here. Deductions to be made, not to be made. Like that they have given the list. Na. So that's why. See here. Bad debt is a allowable deduction. Bad debt is allowable deduction. Okay, so because the business profits will come down because of some other person's uh, default in making the payment, therefore you can consider that because income tax also considers the bad debt as a expenditure under section number thirty-six. Yes, sir, no, everyone, uh, those will be considered. You can see there, first one, net profit, how much? Profit on sale of machinery is this profit related to the performance of a director? No. Next, uh, is this profit belong to the performance of a director? No. And expenses time, you should not see the performance related expenses. You should see whether company related expenses or not. When profits and incomes are concerned, you should see from performance point of view. Expenses concerned, company operations and financing point of view. Tell me, interest on secured and unsecured loans and advances. It is a financing cost to the company or not everyone. Deductible, but not already deducted. Now you deduct it. Clear everyone. Next, bad debt to the extent written off. How much is the bad debt written off? Five. So reduce all the five. What is the profit? Everyone under shop to hear clearly. Yeah. Uh, now listen. Which section we completed along with the section number 197 now? 198 have been completed. 198 have been completed. So tell me, in 198, what should not be added to the incomes? What should not be added to the incomes? Not to be made. Uh, please see the first one. Profits on premium on issue of shares and debentures. Next one, profit on sale of forfeited shares. Next one, capital profits. Next one, profits from the sale of immovable properties. Next one, any carrying amount change due to fair value measurement. In days, one not seven, one not nine, you will make a fair valuation. Which valuation? Fair valuation. SFM will use fair valuation. PV factors. Whenever PV factor is involved, that's called as a fair value. Called as a fair value. Those are called as fair values. So, when I purchase the machine, the running PV factor in the entire uh, India in general is 12 percent. Three four years after, the running rate has increased to somewhere around 14 15 percent. Clear? If I calculate as per that particular PV factor, this particular cash flows were discounted at that rate. Answer will change or not? Fair values will change. Asset fair value is 100. Revalued asset to fair value is, uh, say for example, 130. That 30 excess how come? Na? That's because that's because of shareholders' performance. Ha? That's because of the fair valuation. Do do not uh, uh, put it into the income society because that's because of valuation difference, not because of the performance of directors. Clear or not, everyone? That's the next one. Last one. Any amount representing unrealized gains or national gains or revaluation gains. Can you please tell me what do you mean unrealized gain? Unrealized gain means everyone answer whenever you make investments in the share, long term investments at cost or at the market value. 
long term investments in the balance sheet will be reported at a cost uh, market value uh, cost but uh, current investments current investment whichever is a uh, uh, sir okay let us take market value is having a more clear evident and lesser number of market value you are taking clear everyone now tell me my question is last i made a long term investment i made a long term investment in shares of another company when i invested i invested 100 crore that 100 crore investment now gained value of 130 crore now how much gain is there 30 crore really i sold huh? or if you see the difference is 30 huh? that's called as a unrealized gain so don't include that into the pnl clear or not everyone or else if you allow them what the directors will do they will make investment sir one second answer this do you know what is a capital employed concept capital employed you do eva calculations huh? capital employed you take uh, whenever you do capital employed calculation investments and non trade investments all these things will be there na will be taken will not be taken into the capital employed while calculating capital employed investment in shares will be taken will not be taken capital employed can be calculated in two ways assets side liability side liability side means equity plus resources and surplus assets side means total of assets minus outside liability everyone know this na ah when you calculating the total assets will you take investments or not some yes some no again not investment in land and building plant and machinery furniture fixtures etc investment in shares will be taken or will not be taken a capital employed la doubts have come na because we are lacking the clarity so listen carefully that's how you can understand this listen capital employed you should not include investment why reason capital employed by our company in its projects we should take if you invest in the shares of another company, the inflow of that particular investment is dependent on others' performance or not on my company performance. This is not capital employed in my company. It's a capital of my company employed in others' business. Economic value added. Now, whose value addition I should see? My value addition I should see. Not others' value addition. Are you understanding or not? That's why even in EVA calculations, they don't consider capital employed investments. Reasons are there for everything. Though we consider, do not consider. Likewise, in 198 also, they have a clarity. Unrealized gain means gain really recurring to the company. will not come. If you calculate, you may get a gain. But that does not mean that you really sold it. Don't give that profit to them. What is the next one? Notional gain. Notional gain means there is a company which is having its own factory. If I don't have a own factory, I would have incurred a rent of so and so amount like that they are taking. Correct or wrong? It is correct in costing, wrong in accountancy. Are you understanding or not? It is a relevant cost in costing, but it is not a correct cost in accountancy. Clear or not, everyone? Uh, these are the things. So, 198 section, everyone had a clarity. Uh, answer, please. Answer. So take a break and come. We will continue with the last parts of 197, increase in profits, etc. And then we will be going into the uh, schedule 5 balance part and 203 first. After that, 15 20 minutes, we can complete all the remaining small sections on the chapter. Take a break and come soon. So let's continue. So increase in remuneration in certain cases and waiver of excess remuneration to be drawn. So let's focus on that area. Please see the screen. See there, four blocks are there A, B, C, and D. Four points are there. These four points are talking about four different issues. Number one, increase in remuneration within the sublimits. One, three, five. Sublimits. Next mode of determining the remuneration next one mode of payment of remuneration excess remuneration drawn and related issues these are the various concepts we need to cover now all our exam questions only in every single point you are seeing on the screen was already tested in examination in one or the other way first let us focus on try to understand in the concept first see here what is the general limit on remuneration 
Just now we read the limits, na? Tell all the limit numbers: five percent, one percent, ten percent, three percent. Totally, uh, one, one, one percent two times you need to tell. Tell the percentage. That's all. Five percent, one percent, ten percent, three percent. Overall limit will be taken as a. Uh, will be taken as eleven percent. These are all the things that we already we discuss here. So now the question is, these limits are given. Okay, I wanted to increase within the sublimits. Say simply to understand. I will give you an example. See here. Let us say, please, sir, everyone. Sublimits are given like this. Five percent, three percent, one percent. Okay, so <clears throat> not ten percent as the case may be. See here, I wanted to increase my remuneration. My company is only board managed company. Means there is no managing director in my company. Then how much percent I can draw? Answer, sir. What is the maximum in all cases? Eleven percent is maximum in all the cases. No answer. I wanted to draw more than three, but within eleven. I wanted to draw more than five, but within eleven. I wanted to draw more than one, but within the eleven. Clear, everyone. If I draw more than ten, it becomes what? Eleven percent and more than eleven. Yes or no? Therefore, sublimit for ten. I don't write. Sir, five you have written, three you have written, one you have written, then where is the five? Ten percent. Question will arise or not? Tell me. My company is having two MDs. How many? How many? And uh, two MDs are there, and the seven ordinary directors are there. How much the seven ordinary directors can draw? How much they can draw? How much all these two people can draw? Ten plus one will be. If I increase this at ten or that one. It will cross the limits of eleven or not? Therefore, crossing the eleven within the eleven, crossing ten and being within eleven concept doesn't arise. Clear or not, everyone? So, therefore, any increase beyond five within eleven, beyond three within eleven, beyond one within level within eleven, these are requiring which resolution is the exam question number one? Ordinary or special? Ah, very good special resolution. I want to go beyond eleven. Ordinary or special? Ah. Answer. I want to go beyond the eleven. Ordinary resolution. No, listen. So many will get confused. Which one special? Which one ordinary? So tell me. I want to go beyond five. Request special. I want to go beyond the overall eleven. Request ordinary. What is this logic? Did you understand my point? Na? Reverse should be there actually. What is the reverse? Within the limits, uh, we should go for. Ordinary. Beyond the limits, you should go for. But in reverse, it was written in the act. First thing, not a regular class, not even a fast track class. Since it is a class, why I don't want to go deep into the words and analysis here. But one important thing everyone has to understand is lawmaker never makes mistakes. Bare act mistakes will never be there. If there are any mistakes in the bare provisions, they will make amendments to the amendment act. So let's not pinpoint the act makers as wrong. We don't understand it properly, but listen carefully. So can I change that off? I put it. So the main reason behind that is understand the logic clearly. Tell me, as I already pinpointed one issue, as a MD, how much I am getting? As a MD, how much I am getting? Very good. I wanted to get more than five. Within the five. Normally I should get five. I am asking for five. More than five. Who is asking? I am asking. It's a special case. I want to increase only for that one person. This was special. Eleven is a increase because of one director, because of all the directors. Ah, therefore, it requires ordinary. Eleven is because of all directors. Beyond five is only because of you. That you is a special case. There for the makers of law. Are you understanding the point or not? Therefore, they made it as an ordinary resolution or special. Ah, special. That's why it became special for that. Hope you are clear to the points and endings. So therefore, tell me within five. 
nothing is required within 5 nothing within 3 within 1 nothing and a normal composition should be made nothing you write that in exam nothing marks also nothing required but what is not required special compliance is not required normally schedule 5 all those things whatever we have done already those are very much required special compliances are not required okay so anyway tell me now within 5 within 3 within 1 any special compliance is required beyond 5 within 11 beyond 5 within 11 beyond 5 within 11 very good i wanted to go beyond 11 i wanted to go beyond 11 now tell me i wanted to go only beyond 11 without increasing the sublimates can i do that you cannot 11 can't increase unless and until internally you are increasing for all managerial persons i am increasing by 3 3 percent they said because of the 3 3 percent increase it may go beyond 11 11 can cross without increasing sublimits true or false 11 percent can increase go beyond 11 a number can go beyond 11 without increasing 5 percent or 3 percent or 1 percent true or false false first you have to increase the sublimits which in turn increases that 11 listening uh, means if you are passing an ordinary it is as good that you are also passing a special special resolution is for me order resolution is for all that's why that's why they can specify like that hope everyone is having a clarity on the concept right next so increase in remuneration we understood now let's go back to the chart to see here next mode of determining remuneration now tell me in this chapter we pay remuneration to whom in this chapter we pay remuneration to whom mainly to the managing director so whole time director manager yes or no i ask them how much you want they will tell five percent is a law prepared amount they will tell i will take less than five he will take maximum limit no fool will tell five Okay, I will be happy with the 3 means, no one will tell like that. 5 means they will take exactly the 5, whatever is possible at the maximum level. The answer here, therefore we should not give a chance to the managing directors to fix their remuneration. Therefore, law mentioned like this, see that, remuneration payable to the directors including managing, whole time manager, everyone shall be in accordance with the articles. In the articles mention how to pay. Sir, if articles la, you can directly write. Articles la, you can directly write. Managing director, whole time director and manager will be getting 3% only. Right in the articles. Clear everyone. Or in articles they can tell, pass an ordinary resolution every time you want to fix a remuneration. Or in articles they can tell that fixing remuneration will be done by shareholders by passing a special resolution. I repeat once again if you are confused. Listen carefully. Who will fix remuneration? Can board fix remuneration or not? First tell me. Can board fix their remuneration? No. Who should fix? Articles has to fix. Articles can fix in two ways. Directly it can mention the percentage. In the articles you can directly write. MD, uh, managerial personnel will get 3% only, not 5. Write like that. No. Uh, then you do one thing. Give the power of putting the limits to the shareholders. Clear or not everyone? Give that power to whom? Let them fix the limits according to the needs of the company. Sometimes they may put 4, sometimes they may put 2, sometimes they may put 5 totally. Let them decide. Understood or not? Now tell me, who will fix remuneration? Or sometimes what articles can tell? It will give power to the shareholders, either by passing ordinary or special resolution. Important, remember this. Next one. You should tell this mode of payment of just uh, one hour back. I discussed about this. I will take remuneration once in every 15 16 months. Uh, I will take on monthly basis. Uh. We have three options to draw remuneration number one, monthly, number two, fixed percentage, number three, both. In my life till now, that means in the last 2013 onwards, I started practicing on NCLT. 13 till 2023 take it uh, sorry year not completed 2022 in my 10 years of my practice i never seen other than the third case never seen other than the third case what is the third case combination combination means which combination 
yeah no one will only take monthly no one will risk for the second one generally they will go for combination means what first you pay me 1 lakh or 2 lakh per month at the end of the story at the end of the year you count it as i told you now 60 72 draw access 60 and uh, uh, 50 60 no need to uh, take any action but 60 and 40 means refund listening uh, that comes under excess remuneration which are, which remuneration excess that's the next one we are going to deal with so please read mode of payment number one monthly payment uh, or specified percentage of a net profits or combination okay next excess remuneration now tell me if i draw excess remuneration crime or no crime no crime you can hold it in trust keep it with you but you have to refund back within a period of two years or such lesser period allowed by the company this is option one option two is you can go for waiver waiver means first you require the approval of specified creditors means uh, non secured uh, sorry secured creditors uh, non convertible debenture holder like the creditors list is given you should take their permission and also approval of the shareholders by passing which resolution special resolution within how many years you have to pass two years first one summarize everything and tell me remuneration in excess is possible or not possible answer i want to increase everyone answer i want to increase within the total limit but beyond the sublimits special or ordinary along with that specified credit as approval is also required if there is a default creditors approval is not required in all the cases that's why i didn't mention before creditors approval is required only if you are having a default with the creditors you need to take their permission clear or not everyone if default is not their creditors permission required or not required not required everyone understood up to here next issue please i want to ink i want to take remuneration within the limits provided by the act I want to take remuneration within the limits provided by the act. Any special approvals required? No. I want to take beyond the sublimits but within the total limit. I want to take remuneration beyond these total sublimits and which is also crossing the 11%. Special resolution plus ordinary resolution. In any of these cases, I have a default with the creditors. Before taking the shareholders' permission, first you need to take the creditors' approval. Everyone understood the concept clearly. Uh, excess remuneration drawn. What I can do? First option number one is what refund. Refund or time fixed by the board, whichever is lower. Or second option is waiver. Waiver means you should take whose permission? If there is a default creditors' permission, no default the shareholders. Special resolution in a general meeting. Same two years are such a lower period. Everyone understood the concept. Next also completed. The most important area and most doubts carrying area sitting fees. So many people are getting so many doubts. Now ask me, I will tell. Sitting fees paid once, paid twice. I attended for urgent meeting, not for original. Stop asking questions in telegram group. Ask me directly, face to face. Okay. So tell me. Uh, sitting fees will be paid to one director. I came for original, not for adjunct. I came for adjunct, not for original. Sir, okay. You have so many doubts on sitting fees. Na? First answer one by one, point number one. Sitting fees is paid to whom? Director. Sitting fees is paid to the director. For what? Attending the meeting. It is a performance related visa, attendance related visa. One doubt clarified. Sitting fees can be paid to women and independent directors or not? It should not be lower. It can be higher to encourage them. Okay, to encourage independent directors concept and women directors concept in a company. Government said that you can pay higher, but you cannot pay lower. Second, so third one. Can I pay sitting fees? Can I pay sitting fees of any amount? Are there any limits? Answer. Tell me how many stages of limits are there? How many stages? <laughs> so see here so point is first there are four levels of sitting fees payment i will write here okay see here there are four levels of sitting fees totally that are possible First, 
ఫస్ట్ వన్ సెకండ్ థర్డ్ ఫోర్త్ లాస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ వన్ ల్యాక్ రూపీస్ వాట్ ఈస్ దిస్ వన్ ల్యాక్ కెన్ యూ ప్లీజ్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ మీ వాట్ ఈస్ దిస్ వన్ ల్యాక్ మ్యాక్సిమం ప్రొవైడెడ్ బై ద యాక్ట్ అలాంగ్ విత్ రూల్స్ దే మెన్షన్ హౌ మచ్ వన్ ల్యాక్ పర్ డైరెక్టర్ ఆల్ డైరెక్టర్స్ ఆ ఆల్ మీటింగ్స్ ఇన్ ఇయర్ పర్ మీటింగ్ ఆ మ్యాక్సిమమ్ ఆ మినిమమ్ ఆ వెరీ గుడ్ ఐ కెన్ డిసైడ్ దిస్ ఈస్ ది అమౌంట్ ప్రిపేర్డ్ బై ది యాక్ట్ i wanted to pay within the act but beyond my articles i wanted to pay within the booth approved amount but within my articles or i want to pay actually below the particular board approved limits how questions can be tested listen i am paying 20000 per director board has said maximum we can pay 40000 per board meeting articles have provided a limit of 80000 now 20 40 80 1 lakh on this front please answer my questions one by one tell me how much i am actually paying ha huh? now tell me i want to increase that to 20 to 30 what approvals are required or else i will mark it you answer i will write here i want to pay whose approval is required no special approvals okay done number 2 i want to pay 45000 here i want to pay what approval is required first we need to make the board approval what approval is required sir board approval is required they have to enhance this limit from 40 to somewhere 50 55 they have to enhance clear or not everyone answer i wanted to go from 40 to 85 directly 40 to 85 direct see the from 40 i want to go to 85 now tell me what to do first you need to pass a board resolution first you need to pass a board resolution after that you need to alter your articles of association and make it how much 85 or 90 here you required board approval plus articles i wanted to go to 105000 central government approval is required correct eh? central government narendra modi permission i will take g20 summit question i had this kind daily permission now did you understand my point ha? can i go beyond 1 lakh i cannot ha? are answer yaar upon the 1 lakh it is impossible you can't go beyond that so therefore like this he is asking the questions as per a trend same question with a different different questions they are asking sub questions question is same sitting fees is the concept in that they are asking questions like this already articles fixed to 30 ఓకే ఆల్రెడీ ఆర్టికల్ ఫిక్స్ థర్టీ ఆర్ సెవెంటీ దే వాంట్ టు పే సెవెంటీ ఫైవ్ వాట్ టు డూ ఫస్ట్ వన్ బోర్డ్ అప్రూవల్ నెక్స్ట్ వన్ షేర్ హోల్డర్ సారీ ఆర్టికల్స్ ఆల్సో నెంబర్ వన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్ యూనిట్ రిమెంబర్ ఈస్ నో వేర్ షేర్ హోల్డర్స్ ఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ ద పవర్ టు ఫిక్స్ సిట్టింగ్ ఫీస్ మ్యాక్సిమం అట్ ద టైమ్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ట్రేషన్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ దే కెన్ ఇన్వాల్వ్ బట్ డెసిషన్ ఆఫ్ సిట్టింగ్ ఫీస్ కెన్ నాట్ బి టేకన్ బై ది షేర్ హోల్డర్స్ ఇన్ ఏ కంపెనీ ఎవ్రీ వన్ అండర్ ద లాజిక్ ఆర్ నాట్ ఓకే నౌ టెల్ మీ some superficially important points have been completed sitting fees is paid to whom sitting fees is paid to whom which directors any director attending the meeting manager can be a director need not be a manager manager therefore no sitting fees for the manager if he is not a director since he cannot attend the board meetings clear everyone Uh, that is also completed next see one by one there are seven to eight questions sitting fees for what for performance uh, attending board meeting uh. who is eligible who is eligible yeah. one very important question for you tell me there are two types of remuneration in a company remuneration based on performance remuneration based on attendance everyone repeat first one remuneration based on second one remuneration based on we are talking about what attendance based remuneration we are talking about okay so the remuneration is based on attendance of a director performance related uh, payment is called as a remuneration for 
professional service. This is called as remuneration for attendance at a meeting. Up to here, everyone had a clarity. Answer here. Sitting fees is paid for attendance or for a performance. Attendance, we will pay sitting fee. Clear? So, therefore, in this outset, 5% of net profit came to 10 lakhs. Four meetings conducted in a year, I paid 2 lakhs sitting fee. Sitting fees is paid at the end of the year, during the year. Sit meetings will be conducted at the end of the year, during the year. Therefore, sitting fees also will be paid during the year. During the year, four meetings conducted, 450,000 I paid. How much total? 5% of net profits comes to 10 lakh. Now, I will deduct this 2 lakh and pay 8 lakhs or again I will pay 10 lakhs. Did you understand my question or not? 2 lakh for sitting fee plus 10 lakh remuneration totally 12 or 10 lakh is inclusive of sitting fee. Sir, 10 lakhs is inclusive of sitting fees huh? or 10 lakhs plus 2 lakhs. Huh? That's all. That means sitting fees is never included into the remuneration. That's what you want to tell here. Exclusion of sitting fee. Read. Sitting fees is in addition to remuneration payable on the basis of net profits. Next. Maximum. All these you know. Maximum sitting fee. How much? 1 lakh. Next one. Who will decide sitting fee? Board of Directors. Next. Special status to independent and women directors. Sitting fees payable to independent director and women director shall not be less than sitting fees payable to other directors. Okay. Please read this point. No sitting fees to manager since he is not a director. Sitting fees is payable even if company incurs inadequate profits or losses. Sir, I told you. Sitting fees is paid after the era, during the era. During there, you don't quantify profits and losses. Therefore, it is no way connected with your profit. Sitting fees must be paid even if the company incurs losses. Next. Sitting fees is not a performance-based payment. Different sitting fee may be specified for different categories of directors in a company. My question now. I attended for original but not for adjournment or vice versa. I will be paid sitting fees twice or once. I will attend to... Listening, everyone... I will attend to both the meetings, original and adjourned. Then, sitting fees, I am attending original and adjourned. Okay? Example, example, listen. A person attended for original. Uh, simply, I will ask you one question answer. Sitting fees will be paid for original meeting or adjourned meeting or both. This is a common question that I find. Whenever. I will see, I will laugh and I will turn to next message. How many times I have to tell to these people? So tell me, sitting fees will be paid for what? Original, adjournment, both. Answer. Original or adjournment or both. So doubt will come. So, it requires what? Common sense to answer. Nothing greater than that. When law is silent, na, common sense will prevail. Sir, okay. See here. Sorry, one second. Listen. Why it will be related to some common sense is simple answer. Whether sitting fees will be paid for original meeting or for the adjourned meeting or I will pay for both means simple question. First point is adjourned meeting a separate meeting or it's a continuation to the original Answer. Sitting fees will be paid for a meeting. Means one full completed meeting, I will pay sitting fee. Clear? For one full completed meeting, I will pay you sitting fee. Listening. Now what will happen in a company? Once a sitting fee per director, per meeting, say it is 1 lakh rupee. Take the maximum amount. Listening. Listening. Huh? If I attend for the original and adjournment, I will be paid that 1 lakh. If I am attending only original but not adjournment or only adjournment but not original, I will be paid half. For which meeting you came, for that meeting only I will pay. Are you understanding or not? Proportionately when remuneration is paid, why can't you pay a sitting fees proportionately here? So clearly law has given for proportionate remuneration payment. I worked only for 230 days in a year. What will happen? 
full year. Sit, you have seen schedule five, ah? Sixty lakhs I can pay, ah? Sixty lakhs per one day, na? Sixty lakhs per year, ah? But I worked only for two thirty days in a year, or only six months a year, or seven months a year. What to do? I will be paid entire amount. I will be paid proportionately, ah? Yes. Let not they get unjust enrichment. They should not get unnecessary payments. Therefore, one meeting one lakh means. All adjournments, inclusive, it will be one lakh. You only said original meeting is sorry. Adjourn meeting is not a separate meeting. Adjourn meeting is included into the original. Ah, it is separate meeting. Ah, means meeting represents meeting plus all its uh, adjournments. I will pay that. Clear, everyone. You attended original, but not adjournment. I will pay half only because you attended only for the half of the meeting. Clear? Ah, uh, that's how you need to answer. No question was tested till now. No court case also happened on that till now. So if you have that doubt, this is the answer for that. Okay, two times no fool will pay. Am I clear? Two times I mean one lakh and one lakh no one will pay. Clear, everyone. Sir, meeting started. Understand this way. Meeting started. They came. Okay, ten persons quorum is required to attend the meeting. How many? Two. Those two attended the meeting will be paid fifty fifty thousand one lakh one lakh. You will not pay because sitting fees is paid for. Sitting fees is paid for attendance and participation. For your travel anyway, reimbursement of expenses is there. That we will pay you, not sitting fee. Therefore, sitting fees is always a subjective discussion. That's why law didn't involve into that. It decide will be decided by whom? The board of directors of the company. In general, when two meetings are productively conducted, original and adjournment, those who attended for both, they will be paid full uh, sitting fee. If you attended only one, proportionately they will pay. Clear or not, everyone? But one case, one case la happened. Radia Industries, Mumbai, Bombay High Court has given a judgment on one single issue one time. What it said is, whenever you pay sitting fees, okay, but a director was attending only for the original but not adjournment, or adjournment but not original. How to pay full amount? Uh, proportionate. Uh. Answer. Proportionate of what? Not number of days. Proportionately on the resolutions passed. For example, there are ten resolutions. I attended original where four resolutions are passed. Clear or not, everyone? Means I attended for hundred percent meeting. A uh, forty percent of the meeting. A uh. sitting fees into forty percent you will get. Clear, clear, clear. Everyone in the class. Uh. Understood the point? Ah, uh, this is what you want to mention in the sitting fee concept. Okay, next. So next, remuneration in other capacities. Listen, I am a chartered accountant and also a director in a company. First, you are a everyone, and also a, in a particular company, you are a chartered accountant and a director. I am not telling you are an auditor and director. Auditor can't be a director. Chartered accountant. And come a director in a company. Clear, everyone. Uh, now listen carefully. For that particular company, you are also doing accounting and bookkeeping. Can I do that or not? In my company, can I do that or not? Auditor not to render certain services. I am not an auditor of a company. I am a third party. I am a director. Tell me, who am I? Managing director. Come, chartered accountant. I am doing bookkeeping and accounting work in that particular company. Clear. For that, I received five lakh. My managerial remuneration come to fifty lakh. Okay, now tell me how many remunerations I received? How many remunerations I received? Two. Number one in. Number one in director's capacity. Number two in professional capacity. What is the professional? Chartered accountant. What is this? The director, managing director. As MD, I am drawing how much? Answer here. Answer. As a normal uh, accountant or bookkeeping person, I am taking how much? Now the question is: This fifty lakhs will include this five lakh, or fifty lakh five lakh separate? Which is the right answer? Separation, inclusion, separation, inclusion. Both are wrong answers. Depends on the facts of the case. If the person who is doing this bookkeeping service is having a valid certificate of practice. I am an accountant, not a chartered accountant. If you do that, fifty will include that five. I am a chartered accountant with a valid COPN membership. 
then that will be separate direct assimilation will be separate don't give those type of lame answers in exam please see there first read unexpected wrong answer idi i didn't expect that sir remuneration other capacities please read services rendered by see the screen one services rendered by uh, in two capacities capacity one capacity one uh, payable under section which section other capacity again two types are there first one next one next one now i am a director come professional now i will be paid separately uh, include into the managerial remuneration uh, separately not includable into remuneration clear uh, second one i am a i am a see the screen i am a and also a tell me my remuneration will be includable or will not be includable or includable in this case clear or not everyone so i should pro i should possess a professional level qualification certificate of practice must be there if that be the case yes or else no same question ditto question chartered accountant is replaced by doctor in the exam you might have seen the past exam question also on that that question was based on apollo hospitals apollo hospital 2012 la one case la happened in the company sir old act la same question same section is also there in old company act in that old company act one person is there apollo c reddy you might have heard his name very popular pratap c reddy has a name that person has listen that person's son in law is there that person is also a physician and a doctor in the same apollo hospitals limited private limited at that time before they went for a listing so at that time what happened companies act used to apply this remuneration apply to private public everyone at that time what happened is this particular company called as apollo hospitals limited they paid remuneration to the particular doctor who committed uh, operations or surgeries in that hospital along with that he is also a director means he is a doctor a director both he is a director come doctor for a doctor he received around 1 crore 1 and 1/2 crore from that company as a director on the basis of net profit he received around another 2 3 crores above that now the question came to roc that whether i have to include this 1.5 uh, drawn in capacity as a doctor or not at that time that went for a supreme court case they win that point they kept in the act in the new act previously that's not in the sections did you understand the point or not understanding that case law when new companies act is drafted they said that this confusion should never come again therefore they said that in the new company said you include into the point directly therefore they divided the total capacities into two number one professional number two ah, other than director say professional non professional what is the difference between professional non professional certificate you have a certificate you are called as a you are having professional knowledge but no qualification in hand you are called as a professional ah? no never you are called as clear or not everyone that's why law also use the word professional level knowledge la professional level qualification is required for me not the knowledge clear everyone okay now tell me we summarize everything disclosure this is what asked in exam what you are seeing on the screen disclosures two disclosures are required how many two disclosures i will tell you what is the type of disclosures they make so there are two reports one is board another one is everyone first one second one audit report board report will be always on a responsibility front means it is a responsibility of the board to tell what happened in the company during a year that's the uh, uh, obligation of a board auditor's report is to project what happened in a fair way so that people can understand both intentions are different both report la they should be responsible in telling what has happened in the company sir i will explain like this one director mukesh ambani is drawing a remuneration of drawing a remuneration of say example 100 crores from reliance industries limited say for example how much 100 crores what is the age of mukesh ambani say example 60 years example i don't know exactly so take 60 next number 2 what is his qualification say mba how many years of experience is there say for example 25 years yeah uh, now in your company look for another person having same experience same
Uh, see here, compensation for loss of office of a MD, WTD manager. Section number 202. First, compensation will be paid only to whom? Managing director, whole time director, manager. Compensation cannot be paid to whom? Any person other than these three. Next one. Compensation will be paid for loss of office. Not you intentionally going out. Really a loss should happen to you. And next very important point is, in what cases to these three persons we don't pay compensation? Six cases are there. Listen, all the six cases I will explain in written form. Please see here. Number one. There are, say for example, two companies are there. How many companies are? Two companies. Company A and Company B. Two companies are there. This company, la, I am a MD. Second company, la, I am now not entering what happened. Let me explain. A Limited is merged with B Limited. A Limited is merged with B Limited. Reconstruction happened. External reconstruction. Clear everyone. Now tell me, who acquired whom? B Limited acquired A Limited. Therefore, I am a MD here. Again, I was compensated with the MD position or some good position in the other company. That means tell me, in this company I am resigning or not? Answer here. Who taken over? In this company I am again getting some position or not? Now, compensation is already done. Your loss of position in one company is already compensated for compensated with another office in other company or not. That means compensation is already given or not given. Huh? Therefore, monetary compensation again you should not ask. Clear or not everyone? That means indirectly how to interpret when you can get compensation. Two companies are matching. In one company I am an MD or a WTD manager. In another company I am given with an office or not given with an office. This is a loss. You should be monetarily compensated now. Clear or not everyone? Tell me, two companies are going into? In that, in one company I am a managerial personal. In another company I am getting some office. Now, one office is compensated with? Another office already compensated. But, therefore, will you be paid a compensation? No compensation. Now, I am a MD in one company. Merger happened. In another company, I don't want to join. I left now tell me what will happen. I will be paid a compensation, will not be a will be paid a compensation because you are not compensated with office there. Clear everyone in the class. Not done. One point over. So this is first one. Second, resignation in any other way. Voluntary resignation. Listening. In A limited I am a in A limited I am a in A limited I am a managing director. In managing director, I am continuing. I resigned voluntarily and I am leaving. It's your fault to leave the company or not. Who asked you to uh, uh, get out of the company? Therefore, in this case also, we don't pay any kind of compensation. Third case. If, if director was removed by his personal negligence, breach of trust, etc., we don't pay. Next, vacation under section 167. Do you know about disqualification and vacation section? What is the section covering disqualification? 160. Vacation. Everyone, disqualification. Vacation. 167. Now tell me. 164 talks about disqualification. 167 talks about vacation. Vacation, there are seven grounds totally. Okay. So, eight grounds, sorry. Eight grounds are there totally. In what? Vacation. First ground is disqualification under 164. Next ground is not attending the meetings. Clear. Like that eight grounds are there or not? So tell me. Attracting by any grounds of 164 like unsound mind, insolvent, conviction, etc. Is your mistake or not? Second. Not attending all the meetings in a year is your mistake or not? Then why I should pay compensation? If the vacation of office happened because of 167 ground, then you will be paid a compensation or will not be paid a compensation. Everyone understood the logic clearly or not. Very good. Next issue. After that, everyone clear to the point? Huh? So now tell me how many grounds we complete till now. First ground is reconstruction and amalgamation. What is the first ground? Uh, second one, voluntary resignation. Third one, negligence, breach of duty, breach of trust. Third, fourth one, 
vacation under 167 vacation under fifth one company went into winding up company went into and the director is responsible for that winding up so winding up pay happened because of you rather you should pay compensation you should not ask compensation at the time of winding up who will take the company who will take the official uh, uh, all the total works of a company who will take uh, liquidator then who will leave at the time he is saying pay compensation well winding up happened because of you you should pay sit here so fraudulent preference all those things will come you should pay to company we will not pay to you so therefore at that time if the winding up of a company happens because of the fault of director no compensation even in that case i told you five cases now please summarize everything and tell me number one reconstruction resignation by any other reason voluntary reason breach of trust negligence next one vacation under section number 167 next next one winding up due to the fault of director any other reason not due to the fault of company but due to the fault of director that's called as a that's that concept is called as instigation instigation means any other legal cause not due to the fault of company but your personal reasons are there because of that if your office becomes vacant or if you terminate we will pay compensation will not pay will not pay compensation so how many cases are there totally six so i will put before all the six cases what are the book you follow plus uh, read the six Read up to here, everyone. Oh. So, how many grounds are there where the compensation will not be paid? Six. Last, maximum compensation that you can pay. First, see here. Average remuneration actually earned during the period of three immediately preceding financial years or, or such a lesser period or such lesser period. Qualifying period to which we can pay is reminder of the term or three years, whichever is shorter. If you want, observe those two words clearly. We will have some numericals in that regard. You will get confidence after doing those numericals. First, see this. So tell me what is the equation for the payment of compensation average remuneration average remuneration actually earned during a period of three immediately preceding financial years or or lesser period okay next this is a remuneration how much i can pay compensation okay next for what term you can pay that compensation Reminder of the term are three years, whichever is shorter. If you read like this, theoretically maybe you can remember, but how the questions can be tested. See, I created a self-made illustration on this. See the screen once. Problem visible now? Ah, please. See that I will clear this. Try to answer one bit only. Let's not do everything and waste your time. But some main one illustration is there. That let us try. See here, this is the info given to you. I want answer for case 7 and case number 6. 6 and 7 cases I want an answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, no need. 8 also no need. I want answer for 6th and 7th. Let us see the question. Tell me, this person is a director who is having a proposed remuneration as follows. First year, 
10, 20, 30, 40 and 50. Listening everyone. Now listen. Case 6. I worked for how many years? Sixth case, sir. I, I worked for how many years, sir? Two years and three months I worked. After two years and three months, I vacated the office because of reasons not mentioned in the section. Means I am eligible. It is not due to resignation, etc. Clear? Huh? Suddenly they removed me. I don't know why they removed. I went out. Okay. I lost my office. Everything. They are ready to pay me compensation. Clear everyone? I am having a 10 years experience. Another person is coming who is having 15 years experience. They found him more advantageous. They replaced him with me. Or they replaced uh, me with him. This is what happened. There is no concept of fraud, negligence, etc. I am eligible for compensation. Not eligible. First tell me that. Ah, eligible case I am falling into. Now answer. I worked for how many years? After that I am vacating and leaving out. I should be paid some compensation or not? How much compensation is a question. Like this questions will come. Don't expect exactly, I worked for 4 years or 3 years, exactly at the end of the year no one will go. If really I have to ask a question, I will ask 2 years and 136 days. Like that I will ask. More sadistic. Tell me now, how to answer this? If you ask a question like this, 2 years and 3 months. If you have any page, you please calculate. Do along with me, first one, point number one. How many years I worked completely? Two completed years. How many months of next year I completed? Answer here. Now tell me, as per the provisions of the act, what he said? Actually earned in three immediately preceding financial years. Therefore, months should be first converted into year format. Clear or not everyone? Everyone tell me, months should be converted into what format? Years format because nowhere he said in days and months everything should be expressed in years format. Shall we do the answer? If you have any rough page, please do there, but copy. Copy the answer. If you have an answer already, well and good. If you don't have, at least copy now. First one average remuneration drawn. Average remuneration drawn. First, tell me what is the total term? Please, everyone, what is the total term? Five years. What is the expired term? Don't tell two years and three months. That's what I told you. Three months means three by twelve. You have to make or not? Three by twelve means one fourth. Uh, one fourth means point two five or not? So, therefore, express in that format. So, tell me how many? 2.25 uh, years. So, what is the reminder term? 2.75 years. First, copy down this. Step 1. Calculation of, right like this, A bit. Calculation of reminder term. Calculation of reminder term. Calculation of reminder term. Shall we go to the next step? Uh, step number two. You have to do in stepwise format. You will remember easily. So, step one is average remuneration. Sorry, step one is uh, uh, calculation of reminder of term. Next one. Shall we? Calculation of actual remuneration drawn. You can write full form. Calculation of actual remuneration drawn. Calculation of actual remuneration drawn. Calculation of actual remuneration drawn. Please answer my question clearly. First year, I would have received completely. Yes or no? Second year, I would have received completely. Yes or no? Third year, I would have received 30 lakhs uh, proportionately. Uh. How many months? So, 30 lakh into 3 by 12. Am I clear or not? Ah, tell me how much actual remuneration is how much 10 plus uh, 20 plus uh, 30 into 3 by 12 so totally how much 37 lakh 50 thousand am i clear everyone 
now tell me tell me tell me now answer this is paid for two years and how many months or in point decimals of a years how many years they have paid this three years or two point two five years everyone tell me tell me the provision of law now average remuneration again again wrong answer average remuneration actually drawn therefore you should take proportionate don't take like gratuity six months are completed years of service part thereof in excess of six months lord intellect that actually is the word used means if you work for 136 days 136 days ke you should make actual calculation clear everyone tell me how much i drawn in the first year second year third year seven lakh fifty thousand proportionate one fourth of the total clear everyone uh, now tell me what is the total remuneration drawn we want total average uh, average of average of actual period or three years whichever is shorter now tell me i worked for three years uh, shorter uh. how many years i work 2.25 therefore 37 lakh 50 thousand divided by 3 or 2.25 uh. right on average remuneration 37 lakh 50 thousand divided by 2.25 please 16 lakh 66,667 uh. okay done up to here everyone understood uh. I should multiply this with uh, Expired the term, uh, remainder of the term. Uh. What is the remainder of the term? Into 2.75. Please. 45? 83? 333 or 334. This is the maximum compensation you can pay to him. Clear everyone in the class understood? This is the point, sir. This is how people will generally do. So, whenever the question is given on a decimal, sir, partial, fractional year, sir, this is how you need to do the answer. Everyone understood the point or not? Sir. Right? Clear? Hello, everyone. I'm talking to you. Okay, done. Now, tell me, please, I will give you two minutes time, not more than that, do the seventh one. Same fact, the question change. Three years and five months I vacated. If you do sixth and seventh, no exam question can corner you again. What is the step one you need to do? Reminder of term. Sir, answer me and then write down what is the total term? What is the total term? What is the uh, expired term? 5 months means how to take? 5 by 12. How much is a 5 by 12? Huh? 0 0.42? 422 like that it came out. Huh? 416, uh, take 416 only. 0.4167. Take like more accuracy will come. 0.4167. 0.4167. So, totally how many years he has worked? 3.416. Uh, now, tell me, average you have to take uh, what? Average you have to take 3.417 or oh, you will take average. Uh? You should take what? But there one confusing question will come. You do. You will understand what confusion is there. You do that three years. Do somewhere, but please do. And nothing will happen. You do. The screen is off, no problem, you solve the answer.
ఏంటిది త్రీ ల్యాక్ సిక్స్టీన్ థౌజండా కాదనుకుంటా వన్ సెకండ్ హోల్డ్ అండ్ డెజిగ్నేషన్ ఏ హోల్డ్ టైమ్ దన్ విత్ ఆన్సర్ లో దన్ విత్ ఆన్సర్ సార్ నమస్తే సార్ దన్ విత్ ఆన్సర్ టెల్ మీ వాట్ ఈస్ ఆన్సర్ ఫర్ దట్ క్వశ్చన్ సెవెంటీ టూ ల్యాక్సా బ్రో దెన్ స్టాండింగ్ ఇన్ ఆఫీస్ ఈజ్ నాట్ బెటర్ దాన్ లీవింగ్ ద ఆఫీస్ దెన్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ విల్ లీవ్ కంపెనీ ఫస్ట్ then rather than continuing in company all directors will be busy in calculating the duration of their office when to leave company for better compensation are why you are getting those vichitra vichitra answers 35 a uh, one second i will value you please help me in getting the answers done Uh, see here now tell me please please sir please what is the total term please help me in the answers what is the total term very good what is the expired term 4167 years so what is the remainder term 1.5333 years is the remainder of term first please remainder of term is clear sir remainder of term are three years which are is shorter so 1.5833 is the remainder term qualified one number already done don't confuse in that over if there is any confusion that should come only on this area now listen this is very important uh, calculation average remuneration drawn listen carefully you should only answer did i take total 10 lakhs remuneration or not no uh, who is that yeah villain is there in first bench you have taken one 10 lakh remuneration already or not yes you have taken 20 or not yes you have taken 30 or not yes you have taken complete 40 yeah no you have taken what 40 into 0.4167 tell me how much is a 40 into 0.4167 16 lakh same as uh, 66,600 67 next uh, you have already taken how much uh, 30 lakhs next you have taken 20 lakhs next you have taken 10 lakhs now listen carefully listen please i should take average remuneration of actual period uh, actual period of three years which are is shorter actual remuneration earned uh, in three years or such shorter period Yes or no? I worked for 3 years. 3.4167 years. 3.4167. But average should be calculated on actual period. Uh, uh, 3 years. Maximum 3 years allowed. 2.5 is allowed. Huh? Yes. 2.8 is allowed. Huh? Yes. Maximum how much is allowed? 3. Can I go beyond 3? You cannot. Now the confusion starts. This. Please. This remuneration is drawn over 3.4167 years. Yeah. We want to take average only of 3 years. Now everyone see there an answer. This was paid. For, so please, this was paid. Bracket 1. Paid for one full year. 0.4167 years. Immediately preceding 3 years. When you vacate, na, immediate preceding three years you have to take. I will do working. After that you have doubts you can ask. Tell me, how many years are there here? Last one. 0.4167 years you worked after third year or not? For that you have paid how many? 
for that you have paid 16 lakh 66,667. Okay, now next. This 30 lakh is paid for fraction of era, one full era. Answer. 20 lakhs is paid for fraction of one full era. Important. 10 lakhs is paid for one full era, fraction of full year. But we can't take full because if you take full, it will come to 3.4167. Clear. Take reminder as 3. 3 minus 0.4167. 3 minus 0.4167. 2 point minus 1. 1.5833. Minus 1. Uh, that means here I can take only 0.5833. Everyone understood or not? Tell me how much is this? How much? 5 lakh? 83,333. So, your, so your average remuneration will be calculated as under. Tell me how much you need to take? 5 lakh 83,333 plus uh, 20 lakhs plus uh, 30 lakhs plus uh, 16 lakh 67,667 whole divided by 3. Please tell me how much you got? 24 lakh 16,660 into 1.5833. Some amount you have got 30. How many of you got that answer here? 38 lakhs answer. Sorry, now my question is who is having any doubt on this question? First, tell me, everyone understood the valuation. Huh? Sir, in a fast track class, in a crash batch, I can't go beyond this and explain the logic, sir. First, one understood the sequence, how to do. If a question is given after third year in exam, very dangerous question he asked, sit calmly, think and answer properly. When you are calculating three years average, you should come from down to top or top to down. Huh? Because the law uses the word any three preceding, huh? immediate three preceding. Huh? That's all. Because the immediately preceding year, no fraction is there. So, 0 0.4167 years only you can take. Next one full year. Next one full year. From the first year, you can take only the balance fraction of the third year. Understood how to calculate everyone in the class? So, very, very important. Compensation for loss of office also is completed. Hope everyone is having a clarity on the concept. Everyone in the class. Sir. Last part is the concept relating to schedule 5. Very easy. Listen carefully. We will first understand the schedule with regard to the effective capital calculation. What are the book you follow? Please open that once. Oh, this page. This page itself is enough for you from the exam's point of view. Please see there. If you can remember this page, if you want to take photo, if you don't have. Okay. If you don't have the charts book, you take the photo. Okay. If you already have, no problem. Okay. See here, this contains entire schedule 5, the most important concepts from exams point of view. What is required for you from the exams? See there. Shall I explain? Ah, see here. Already we have completed part 1 of schedule 5. Part 2 also, first one completed. When adequate profits are there, go to? When company makes adequate profits, go to? Not to? Now we are coming into which part? Part 2 of schedule 5 is section number 2. Okay. Section 2 says like this. First point. In any financial year, please, in any, during the tenure of a managerial person or any other director, a company has, a company has no profits or has inadequate profit. No profits are inadequate profits in that case what to do is a question okay in such a case it shall pay a may pay a answer number one it is optional to pay remuneration as per schedule 5 or mandatory optional or mandatory optional only it's not mandatory if you want you can pay when you pay it should be as per schedule 5 companies making adequate profit or inadequate or sometimes it can also make a no profit situation also can come clear everyone this one very very important how many of you know really correctly about professional directors remuneration and the non-professional directors remuneration from the point of your schedule 5 schedule 5 two types of directors are there 
Number one, professional. Number two, non-professional directors. Okay. Tell me what do you know about the professional directors emulation and non-professional? Have you gone through this concept before? Before. See. Uh, see there. Limits provided by the schedule. I will be putting it before you. This is the content I am going to discuss now. See there. First one minute time I will give. See the screen properly once. First, everyone, table the contents and numbers, whatever you have read, already you know that or not. Hope everyone might have knowledge about those numbers at least. Yes or no? Uh, tell me, first point. What is the base for calculating all these things? Effective capital. Come here. So, the point is, first thing, everyone in the class know about these limits properly. Effective capital negative to 5 to 100 to beyond first slab. Tell me, my company is having MPs. How much I can pay for each MP per year? Next stage? Next stage, 84. The next stage? The next stage, 0.01 percent in excess of effective capital I can pay. Yes or no, everyone? I paid that. Okay? If it is a non-managerial, other directors are there? Yes or no, everyone? Uh, how much I can pay in the first stage? 12. Next, 17. Next, 24. Last, 24 lakhs plus same. 0.01 percent of effective capital in excess of 250 crore. Up to here, slabs everyone understood or not? Everyone understood? Huh? Very good. Next. If I am a professional director, first question will arise, what do you mean by professional? Here professional does not mean COP etc. Graduate level qualification. Everyone repeat. What is that? Bachelor's degree is also a graduation only. Graduate level qualification you should have to be called as a professional here. Clear everyone? Examination life, if a question is asked to you, technical consultancy director, director who is a professional in information technology, like that past questions are tested. You see the answers, how they give, they will write this answer, not this. You will write this in exam, they will not give marks. Whenever question is given, if they got to schedule 5, where director is processing some professional graduation, you should not just write this, you should write this and this. Yeah? How question can be tested? I will show you one of the past questions tested on this. Maybe seeing that you will realize how the questions can be tested. Okay. So, I will do one thing. I will search for that question. After the break, I will first to show you that because I need to see where that question is exactly in the 60 exam questions. So, I will show you definitely two times a question was tested on part number B. Part A, part B, two points are there. Slab limits will be given in part A. Part B will be given non-professional director concept. Listen, professional here represents a COP, a graduate professional. Whenever the managerial personnel is a graduate, then 
he should be independent and graduate first one he should be repeat sir last points on schedule 5 please we will close the main chapter so tell me graduation qualification means he should be professional means he should have a, a cop a graduation answer graduate qualification is required okay point number 1 he is appointed as a managerial person now we want to pay remuneration to him generally whenever you want to pay remuneration limits are given or not what is the base work uh, tackling with the minutes uh, with the limits effective capital you need to consider clear or not how many slabs are there how many i should see when which slab it is falling out yes or no i calculated md having a graduate level qualification in the field in which company operates very good he is treated as a professional director in the company we treated he is coming into the third slab that particular company is falling into the third slab i i can pay 84 lakhs or not sorry 120 lakhs or not i am ready to pay 120 but for a professional director to pay that 120 lakhs remuneration you need to satisfy additional conditions like this okay first condition you can take remuneration as per the limits provided you satisfy these conditions one by one please read what is the first one he is acting in which capacity he is acting in a next one he possess what level of graduation sorry what level of professional expertise sorry graduate level qualification next the very very important he should not only be a graduate he should be disinterested he should be means he should not have any ownership in the capital of the company listening or not everyone please answer my question point number 1 he is acting in which capacity professional means which level of professional that's all next one he is having an interest or not having any interest interest not having any interest in the capital of the company clear and he is not related to the directors and promoters means he is a he is a dependent professional independent professional if you can satisfy all these four conditions then then i can pay remuneration to a professional managerial person as per the limits given here did you understand what i said tell me now i will ask question answer okay tell me i am a professional director ca is treated as a graduation ca is treated as a graduation ugc guidelines are it is treated as a graduation today sir i am a graduate level qualification professional come graduate level qualification i am also having a bcom i am also having a ca degree now i will be called as a professional director under this category or not sir i am a chartered accountant i joined eventually company made a loss say for example after four years company made a loss even in case of loss i can take remuneration or not what checks you will make as a company secretary before paying remuneration to me can i get paid as per the limits sir answer companies in third category how much i can receive third category how much i can receive provided i satisfy extra how many conditions sir next the first one tell me professional capacity graduate level qualification no interest in the capital not related to promoters and directors not related to the promoters and director everyone understood the point or not now listen sir last right up to this point sometimes i may receive esop directors and uh, other persons can receive sweat equity shares uh, esops answer sir everyone in the form of sweat equity shares esops or any other methodology if you receive shares to the extent of not more than 0.5% of the paid up share capital then no problem even though you have the interest in the capital simply to understand total capital of the company is 100 crores everyone repeat total capital is a my holding is 0.2 crores mean to 20 lakhs is my interest in the company now tell me will i be qualified to take remuneration not qualified i am holding 2 crore amount of capital in the company i am qualified or not qualified not qualified to take as per the limits given clear
Now tell me, sir, everyone, who am I? Normal director, professional director. Professional director. Now can I take remuneration as per the limits or not? Yes, you can take uh, remuneration as per the limit. Provided I should satisfy how many conditions, sir? Four. Summarize. First, I should be a professional director having graduate qualification, no interest in the capital of company, not related to directors and promoters. In that no interest, exception is there. To what extent I can hold? Not 5%. 0.5 percent half percent of the total capital you can hold that too not by purchase in open market it should be received by you in the form of uh, ESOPs and any other method they're listening everyone understood this concept today now uh, this is how the questions are being tested in this eight marks chapter everyone understood the concept clearly yeah one last uh, see here special remuneration concept I said now in the morning that special remuneration concept means whenever company is falling into the category of a sick company, S I C K sick. Okay, which company? Sick. Whenever company falls into sick company category, sick company category means the total paid up share capital is wiped by accumulated losses. Tell me. Paid up share capital is wiped out by accumulated losses do you know what does be what do you mean by that debts are more than equity sir i have 100 rupees own capital okay i kept 100 rupee own capital listening uh, i kept 300 rupee debt capital total how much 400 listening uh, i purchased the plant and machinery and manufacture some uh, goods i try to sell in the market machinery is outdated product is also outdated no one is buying it Clear? If I sell my, listening everyone, I sold my assets. Since it is outdated, I got only 20 rupees out of it. But I have 400 rupees to pay or not. Huge losses are coming. That means my total equity is incapable to pay the debts. Such a situation, simply we call them insolvents. Sick companies are about to become insolvent. In near future, they will become insolvent. So sick companies will go to a concept called as a revival. Which concept, sir? revival and rehabilitation of sick companies concept is there okay sir in that concept they will go revival and rehabilitation means they will enter into arrangements with the creditors waiver all these concepts will happen we see this in compromises chapter na. all those they will make okay second one insolvency bankruptcy code la, there is a concept called as a resolution plan have you heard about it or not what is a resolution plan a plan to resolve insolvency not to throw you into insolvency a plan to resolve insolvency is called as what resolution plan so a resolution plan will be there in the plan a company will go and come out simply to tell sick companies in a resolution plan related companies all these companies are sensitive companies means they are not in a position to pay a huge remunerations yes or no even in that case, if you want to pay remuneration in case of losses, in case of losses or in case of inadequate profits, sir, obviously, sick companies who came out from revival or uh, insolvent companies who came from resolution plan will have strong financials or weak financials. Sir. Obviously, they will have profits or losses. Sir. But even in that case, they want to pay remuneration as per Schedule 5. Clear? They have to comply with some extra conditions, credit as permission, secure credit as permission, no default, all those things should be there. That's all. This is all about the concept relating to Schedule 5 and this is all related to the first very important chapter is a managerial personal and remuneration completed. So everyone understood the concept from the beginning till the end. Uh, so next uh, we are going to start after the break with the board powers. Okay, and next we will start with the directors and complete off. So that set of 25 marks area we have to complete first. Once completed now, next we will start with the economic loss. After these sessions, economic loss we are going to start with another 20 marks area. Main important core areas like insolvency, bankruptcy code and PMLA and FEMA. Most important. So hard striking areas first complete. Later I will take the remaining concepts on companies act and complete off. Clear sir everyone. So substantial portion I promised you to cover in the time that was given. Most important difficult to left out concept first I have completed. All the remaining are known concepts are easy. Okay. We will take that after the break. 
So 135, 245 will meet again. Okay. So let us start with the next area. Board meetings and board powers. Two different concepts covering 20 sections again. Once covered the directors. Only directors set of sections are there. We will go into that. First, we have to complete the concept called as a board meetings. So where, whatever the book you follow, please come over to section number 173. Come over to section number 173. Meetings of the board. First point everyone answer. Are you absolutely thorough with the first chapter of the managerial personnel? Another 20 marks area is still there. Means one is a board meetings, board powers, a 12 marks area, or 13 to 14 marks area, another 6 to 8 marks area being the exclusive director's area. Clear? Those are the 25 to 30 marks, sure shot areas in the exam. Okay? So here we are into the second one called as a board meetings. Board meetings, board powers are the two chapters that we are going to complete now. Okay? So listen. In the board meetings chapter, we are having three sections inside. Technically five, three are on meetings, so two are on committees. Here, yeah. three topics which are on the meetings is number one, 173, meetings of the board, frequency. Second one will be on quorum and third one will be on resolution by circulation. Clear everyone? Let's start with the concept. So let everyone settle down please. We will start with the board meetings chapter. Please settle down everyone. <coughs> so we start with the concept everyone. Uh, listen now. The name of the concept is meetings of the board. Section number 173. In this section number 173, we are going to discuss the following points. Number one, first board meeting. Number two, subsequent board meetings. Number three, notice of a board meeting. Number four, shorter notice of a board meeting. Number five, penalty for improper notice. Number six, exemptions from meeting. Clear everyone? Six aspects we are going to cover. Number one, first board meeting. Subsequent board meeting. Notice of a board meeting, shorter notice of a board meeting, penalty for improper notice and exemptions from the meeting. How many questions we have to answer? Six. Along with this, one question is there that is called as a video conferencing. What is the concept sir? Video conferencing. Video conferencing area exclusively we will cover at the end of the board meetings chapter. Let us cover the remaining portions first. See the screen. Meetings of the board, section number 173. Sir, so everyone settle down. Can we begin? Dangerous time will be from 245 to 345. Not normal danger. Every second it is a danger. After 4 again, everyone will be very much vigilant. From, around, uh, from 4 to 637 again, everyone will be okay. But the dangerous time will be 345 to 445, not sorry, 245 to 345, 4. Uh, board meeting will become board meeting. So, therefore, which should not happen. So, I will ensure that you are not sleeping in the class. So, please listen. So, the topic is meetings of the board. Three sections, sir. 
73, 74, 75, 173, 174 and 175. First one. See the screen? Let's complete fast. First board meeting must be held within how many days? Within 30 days of the date of its incorporation. From the incorporation, how many days? 30 days time will be given. First board meeting over. Subsequent board meetings. How many board meetings must be conducted? After the first board meeting is a question number two. Every year... When I use the word year, year here represents a calendar year, not a financial. Clear? Meetings concept, we don't have financial year concept. It is a calendar year. So, in one calendar year, how many meetings we have to conduct? Which meetings? Sir? Board meetings. Four board meetings we need to conduct. Maximum permissible gap between any two meetings sir, can't go beyond 120 days. So, two questions over. Tell me, first board meeting? Within 30 days of the date of it? How many meetings every year after that? Four meetings. Maximum permissible gap between any two meetings will be? Over. Next point also completed. The next. Notice of a board meeting. How to give the notice? Notice is of two types. General notice to short term notice. The general notice means five conditions you need to satisfy. Okay. Five points. First thing, to whom? Second thing, where? Place. Okay. So, first one is the recipient. To whom you have to send. Second thing will be the place. Where to send. Third one will be, third one will be the time limit. Fourth one will be, how to give a notice. Fifth one will be, how to send a notice. Five questions if you answer, 173, 3 will be completed. 173, Subsection 3 will be completed. Sorry, let me answer all the questions. See the screen once. See there. Notice to whom? See the screen, sir. Notice to whom? Place. Not registered officer. Address registered with the company. What address of the director will be registered with the company? DIN address. Every director, when becoming a director, he need to inform his DIN to the company or not. At that time, when he provide a DIN, he will give some address or not. That address is called as an address registered by the company. To that address, you have to send the notice. Clear everyone in the class? So now, tell me, point number one. Notice to whom? Notice to whom? Where to send the notice? Address registered with the company. What is the mode of, sorry, what is the time limit to give a notice? Seven days before the meeting means gap between the notice and meeting must be minimum. Very good. Next one. After that, the next point is, what is the mode of giving a notice? Writing. What is the mode of sending a notice? Three options are given. Hand delivery, post or electronic means. Everyone, first one. Everyone understood to here. So please convey once again. We completed first board meeting date. Within 30 days of the date of its incorporation. Subsequent how many meetings every year? Gap between two meetings can't go beyond. Notice to whom? Place. Time. Minimum seven days. Before or after? Number four, how to wait, how to give a notice, how to send a notice, post or electronic means. Fantastic, completed. So, 173 subsection number three. Below that, there are two provisos called as a shorter notice. Most important from the exam's point of view. Shorter notice means it is a time limit plus shorter. Generally, what is the time gap between meeting and notice? If I could not give a seven days time for you to react, such kind of shorter reactive notices are called as shorter notice. Clear everyone? Listen carefully. Sometimes company cannot give in advance a 7 days notice. 4 days, 5 days before they may give. Clear? At that time, the notices what we give are not called as a notice, are called as a shorter notices. Shorter notice, the short will be size, short will be the time. Time limit will be shortened. Generally, generally, it will be shrinked to 
lesser than 7 days, say 6 or 5 or 4 or some number of days, they will take a reactive time. Clear everyone? Listen carefully. Whenever shorter notice is given, two conditions are required. How many? Two. One is a precondition, another one is a post condition. Why I call this? Let me explain. In the law, they say that whenever company want to give a shorter notice, two conditions have to be satisfied. One pre precondition, another one observation is required. Urgent business transactions are there. What business transaction? Urgent business transaction. That means I can't wait for seven days time. It has to be taken care immediately. Some urgent business matters are there. Where we can't wait for 7 days. In such case, in order to take that emergency decisions, we need to go for shorter notice. Clear? So, therefore, what is the condition number 1 to give a shorter notice? Urgent business is condition number 1. Sir, you came to know about urgent business and thereafter you gave a shorter notice. Or first you gave a shorter notice and thereafter you came to know that there is an urgent business. And after giving a notice, you came to know that there is an urgency. Yeah? Knowing about urgency, you gave a shorter notice. That means which comes first? Understanding the urgency of a matter comes first. Knowing about it, you have given a shorter notice. Now the question starts. That means knowing about the urgency, you have given a shorter notice. Understandable. Now, presence of at least one dash. Please, everyone, participate. Presence of at least one. Uh, now, the question start. Whether independent director will be present or not, how would I know at the time of issuing the notice? That means you will know about it after beginning the meeting, uh, before beginning the meeting, uh, before giving notice. Uh. After starting the meeting, then I will know whether independent director is present or not, yes or no, everyone. Did you understand the logic or not, everyone? How many conditions are there? Number one. Number one, precondition. Number two, precondition means before beginning a meeting. Post condition means after beginning a meeting. Before beginning a meeting, what is the condition? Urgency in the business. Second one. Presence of independent director. Whether independent director will be present at the premises or not, you will know after meeting started, before the meeting starts, or before issuing notice. Therefore, everyone try to understand clearly, I know about my presence only after starting a meeting or not. Then how can you call it as a precondition for issuing shorter notice? Therefore, tell me now. Listen, listen. Law, how it drafted, you only tell the answer. I started a meeting. Okay, I started a meeting. Uh, in a company, there are 10 directors. 10 law, 130 is a 4. 3.33, taking it as 4. 6 normal directors, so 4 independent directors should be there. Hello, answer. Short notice given. All the 6 directors are present. Quorum is also there. Quorum is how much? One third of the total strength are two, whichever is a one third of ten is one third of ten is four. Are three point three three means round off to the next number na? any in any fraction at least one third means at least three point three three means if you make it three, it will become least than three, not at least three. So okay, so four. Tell me now, in 10 of my company, how many should be present physically at the meeting? Everyone? 6 present or not? Quorum is present or not? All are disinterested also. Quorum counted. Take like that. So tell me, how many directors are there in my company totally? How many are present? Who are not at all present? Are they four? I'm asking who? Category. Independent, no one is present in the meeting. Now tell me, can I continue with this meeting? I cannot continue. Happily you continue, that's the logic of the section. You pass resolutions, you continue with the meeting, you close the meeting. However, however, I will tell you that last continuing line, final touch, so see here, last what you want to tell is, whenever you complete a meeting, you should prepare some book. Huh? 
that minutes required independent directors approval that's the meaning of resolutions can't become final unless approved by independent directors a result sir what is the proof that the resolution is passed in a company do you know that answer what is the proof that the resolution is passed what is the proof that the resolution is passed that minutes can't become final unless independent director approves that in the uh, minutes of the meeting that's the meaning of the shorter notice clear or not everyone uh, so again i repeat for the last time generally notice will be given within 7 days if i have to give within uh, lesser than 7 days i don't call it as a notice rather i call it as a shorter notice for that there are two conditions one is a pre another one is a post pre means what pre means what that condition you will satisfy before starting the meeting what is that condition urgent business one condition you will satisfy after the meeting what is that after meeting is after starting the meeting what is that presence of independent air. sir answer 10 directors are there six directors came from one came from california one came from chennai to hyderabad one came from australia to hyderabad someone already in hyderabad everyone came to a place 10 less 6 present 10 less 6 means quorum is present or not this quorum is present or not quorum is also present company secretary and chairman are looking at independent directors they said oh independent directors are not present let's cancel the meeting they said these six will kill the chairman and the company secretary into equal parts yes or no do you think that i am a fool pagal dikta hume pichola ganisthana so then why we came all the way from california you called me all the way from australia i came all the way from chennai i came then why you called me just to cancel this meeting therefore law is very clear on that independent directors present or not present are irrespective of that fact continue the meeting pass the resolution but the resolutions will become final only on approval by at least one independent director if any means what does it mean what does it mean means whenever you pass a resolution in the absence of independent director you pass it because absenting from the meeting is the mistake of independent director clear or not and canceling the meeting is also not a wise idea so continue the meeting close the meeting resolutions can't become final unless the minutes is approved by independent director that means generally minutes will be signed by whom hey minutes will be signed one concept to give correct answer here i will not repeat that again promise on you uh, who will sign shorter notice minutes where independent director is absent along with the chairman id also have to sign on that clear or not everyone huh? everyone understood the point huh? that's the meaning of resolution shall be final upon approval of independent directors that's the meaning of that sentence okay don't mug up law understand the idea behind this sir anyway everyone understood the point clearly yeah next go to the next point so now we completed notice and short notice concept last level we'll do the revision for everything but uh, basic uh, in principle everyone understood uh? next uh, i don't give a notice in a proper way what do you mean by improper notice time less than 7 days i have given short notice conditions not complied contravention i didn't give to one of the director contravention listening ah uh, i didn't give to one of the directors contravention i didn't give in writing made a telephonic call to some directors and informed that there is a meeting contravention notice to whom i didn't give to one of the director notice to where address says i didn't give like that number 3 time limit i didn't comply with that number 4 over only in a telephonic call i, I said about a meeting number 5 i sent a whatsapp which is not a valid means of communication any of these contraventions happen na the person who is in default that mean one officer will have a obligation to give the notices in a company or not he will be liable for a penalty of rupees 25000 liable to a penalty god's grace is so great that at least you came to know before exam or else if you would have asked the question on adjudication of penalties gone 
there is a section called as section 454 adjudication of penalties have you heard mm -hmm. before sir what is there in adjudication of penalty adjudication of penalty section on the చాలా ఆ సిచ్యువేషన్స్ లో క్లాస్ రూమ్ అయిపోయింది నా ఒరిజినల్ డిబేట్ వచ్చేస్తుంది మళ్ళీ సో ట్రై టు అండర్స్టాండ్ క్లియర్లీ పాయింట్ ఈస్ వెన్ ఎవర్ అడ్జుడికేషన్ ఆఫ్ పెనాల్టీస్ ఈస్ దేర్ సెక్షన్ నెంబర్ ఫోర్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఫోర్ విల్ గెట్ అట్రాక్ట్ ఫోర్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఫోర్ సో ఐ మీన్ కమ్ ఇన్ ద సెషన్ వీ విల్ డెఫినెట్లీ డిస్కస్ అబౌట్ ఫోర్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఫోర్ ఫిఫ్టీ ఫోర్ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ సమ్ అమెండ్మెంట్స్ ఇన్ సైడ్ ఈ అడ్జుడికేషన్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఈస్ అన్ అమెండ్మెంట్ బట్ నాట్ ఫర్ దిస్ అటెంప్ ఫర్ ద ప్రీవియస్ అటెంప్ ఇట్ కేమ్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద కాన్సెప్ట్ E adjudication. What is E adjudication? What is E name? Lone it is there na. Ah, electronic adjudication system. Because of COVID, they are not allowing physically to the offices. You can directly have a E adjudication process. Amendments came to section 454 read with the rules. When we come to the adjudication of penalties in miscellaneous chapter, we will definitely discuss about that basic area up to here. Everyone understood the point, da. Ah? last conclusive point for 173 section there is a partial exemption given to five types of companies how many five which exemption was given partial exemption was given not fully listen generally how many meetings we have to conduct every year everyone however section 8 company one person company small company dormant company startup private company i said you five names repeat ah uh, first one company one person company small company dormant company startup private company private company which is a startup he will write like that in the bare act leave that easy way startup private company please repeat what are the, all the five names section 8 company dormant company startup private these five companies need not conduct four meetings in a year okay it is enough if they conduct two meetings one in one half of the calendar year another in the another half of the calendar year first half of the calendar year means from when to when jan 1st to june 30th july 1st to december 31st clear one meeting in the first half another meeting in the second half please tell me how many companies are there what is the first one other four one person a dormant small and startup private now bifurcation tell me all these companies need to conduct four or five or two or two meeting one in first half of calendar another in second half of calendar first category section 8 is there na gap also not there you can conduct june 30th to july 1st also but remaining four companies are there na those companies conducting two particular events like in one in one calendar of another in another calendar of but the gap should be minimum 90 days gap should be gap should be minimum 90 days gap should be there means at least don't for a name sake or formality sake don't conduct on june 30th and july 1st if you conduct on june 30th na, very good but maintain a gap of at least 90 days and conduct the next meeting in the second half of the calendar okay everyone in the class understood or not section completed but before going into that revision everything revise point number one first meeting within ah that's the point on that no exemption adi section 8 a one person a small a dormant a startup private a no exemption from the first meeting every company must conduct its first meeting within how many days 30 days okay now tell me now my question is all company 30 days exemption is not given generally generally how many meetings must be conducted every year maximum permissible time gap notice should be given to given to place every one in the class answer address, address register with the time not less than seven days next one before meeting or after meeting 
next one notice uh, uh, it should be given in which mode sent in which mode post or electronic means very good next one can you give a short notice precondition post condition post condition approval of independent letter presence presence if he is absent can i conduct a meeting continue the meeting pass resolution final the resolution no any yes yes so first one can i pass can i conduct the meeting conduct the meeting pass resolution can i make it final final it only on approval by independent directors thank you sir next what is the penalty for improper notice to which companies the concept is partially exempted section company one person company small company startup private company dot i think the dormant a uh, dormant company these companies need to conduct how many meetings in a calendar year one in another in gap should be minimum this is not applicable for section 8 companies over this is all about the contents covered by section number 173 this is not complicated like managerial chapter i am telling you very clear managerial chapter horrible here horrible chapter managerial remedy half the time we can complete all these sir everyone understood section 173 clearly yeah i covered 173 except to video conferencing now video conferencing i already said you we will cover it separately these are the important concepts but examination la some variety questions are coming in 173 what are those variety questions they will give time limits and ask you whether section is complied or not means they will give four dates first meeting conducted on so and so date second meeting on so and so date you should always count how many days 120 days okay 120 days should not intervene between two meetings of the board means Listen, my question is, I conducted one meeting today. Clear, ah? Huh? I conducted one board meeting today. One twenty days, how to count? I need to exclude the today's date and one twenty, and include the last date. Sir, I will ask you four questions. Today I conducted one board meeting. Okay, today I conducted one board meeting. Some date I conducted another second meeting. Now. my question is 120 should be inclusive of first date and excluding the last date excluding first date and including last date excluding first and including last do you understand or not include first include last include first exclude last exclude first include last exclude first exclude last all of them na Tell me what is the not joke here seriously miserably you will fail in exam in answering that point please be serious did you understand what is my question so today conduct one meeting okay na next to 120 i should count or not one two three like that will that include today's date or not <laughs> so how do you know ah dantana kadnel telisipothe <laughs> so the reason behind that is very clear not more than 120 days should intervene between two meetings sir you understand the point or not not more than 120 days should intervene between two meeting between two means two dates you take exclude that exclude this gap 120 days should not be there more than 120 i mean Here, yeah, exclude, exclude. In the middle, the gap should not be more than one twenty days. How to count one twenty days is your headache in exam. Take a calculator, count. Monthly how many days? If you don't know, Om Namah Shivaya. So, have the clarity in calculations. He will give a date. Okay, already one meeting is conducted like that. He will give a date. Exclude that. Okay, exclude the next board meeting date also. Middle of one twenty days should not cross. clear everyone even if middle gap is 119 what does it mean meeting is conducted on 120th day that's also correct gap if it comes as 121 it's a contravention i conducted one meeting 
exclude that day from tomorrow you have to come so today i conducted a meeting today i conducted a exclude today from tomorrow you have to start clear today's date is 3rd march na 3rd i conducted a meeting exclude this 4th march 5th march 6th march like this you need to count 120 days 120th one date will come or not that day also you can conduct the meeting if you conduct in the very next day or later it will become a contravention everyone understood the point or not clear next this is a point how they ask in exam but one small another question what they test in examination they will confuse you with reverse type of questions listen carefully how they give in the articles of association of a company in the articles of association of a company they have written that shorter notice must be given by must be given by electronic means through a email like that they have written in their articles clear or not everyone i repeat once again the point is in the articles of association they have written that in case of a shorter notice it should be given only by way of a email they have written like that in their articles do you understand what i said is that provision in the articles valid or not valid answer here yeah. they have written that in the in case of short notice give the notice only by way of a email they have written like that in the articles valid or not valid answer absolutely invalid reasons are very clear that's why it was asked in exam no wrong see here the reason is very clear when articles can interfere every student should know that answer when the articles can interfere articles can interfere when the act is silent articles can interfere when there is a limit which is given to the discretion of the company examples i will give you second point example number of directors minimum required in a public minimum 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 uh, maximum their chance is given in between you can fix anything by articles i will give you minimum maximum limits only minimum public maximum what does it mean they are telling don't go beyond 15 don't come below 3 means you can have anything in between are you understanding or not that means it is giving a chance for the company to fix any number in between here yeah. next second one when act is telling very clearly about certain things first understand what type of section this is this section la notice has to be given yes or no i have given you how many chances answer yeah three say for example she is a director i am also one of the director in the company say managing director on a particular occasion to sign some documents in the company she came here yeah. when she came what i did is i have notice copy pdf in my hand print out i have taken i said that please do attend the meeting which is going to get conducted in another 4 days i said clear ah huh? when she personally attending the company why i should again send her a email and delivery is better are you understanding or not she came to the no meeting she came to the board room in the board room on the table notice is there even at that hey, don't touch it i will send you email now our action when articles gave you a chance okay then you cannot narrow the chance given by the articles act clearly they are saying that you have three modes number one hand delivery first one means what whichever is beneficial to you at that time you choose and send are you understanding the point or not ah uh, then who are you to restrict the chance given by the act article should increase the scope of the act or article should increase the restrictions provided by this is not a restricted section this is a procedural complaint section they are saying that either send by post or by hand delivery or by electronic means number of attempt also i am telling after a class you please see that november 2015 exam this question was asked 
after that it, they didn't touch it again but one of the most unique type of questions they asked because most of the students have done wrong in exam Ans always remember one point articles has to interfere when when act is silent sir if act plus short term notice how to send if they didn't tell notice concept then articles will have a power to tell that okay send only by electronic means act plus three chances are given or not answer yeah there is a there is a point in companies act section 6 which says that articles can't go beyond uh, art, act articles uh, can't go beyond act uh, now you are going beyond that i am telling three means you are telling not three only one you are going beyond what is said in the act which is not possible it becomes ultra wise the act understood or not everyone answer everyone uh, now tell me uh, act said minimum directors three act said maximum directors 15 now if i make maximum in my company to 10 by articles valid or not valid because i am going above the act i am within the act that's all that's valid now articles can interfere because i gave only maximum minimum in this you can choose any of them through your articles i said three options post to handle electronic means why you are deleting those two i understood the point huh? question if comes articles question comes now be very much vigilant understand the scenario and then answer remember again and again i've been repeating when an articles related question comes in exam you be very much vigilant he will give some twisting point inside that see whether it is going above the act or within the act you have to check clear everyone listen there are two types of sections always there are two types of sections procedural section and contravention sections clear procedural sections means like this post hand delivery how to send you should read them liberally liberally means as many number of ways as possible you need to bring into the mode of sending a notice because our motive is not to make the section strict our motive is to send a notice to the board of directors clear or not everyone I am somewhere in a remote place, internet will not catch me. At the time, at least my house will receive a message or not if you send a post. Are you understanding or not? I may not be in a position to receive notice in most of the times through email I am talking about. At the time, if you would have sent a physical notice, my house might, not, my, might have received the notice or not. So, therefore, everyone in the class, remember, no way articles can interfere into both meetings chapter except in case of quorum. Except in case of quorum. Quorum and other five issues are there where articles can involve. I will ask you one question answer. Agenda, optional mandatory. Optional mandatory. Answer. Because act is silent. Articles, if we tell that agenda is mandatory, how to give? Did you understand what I said? Agenda, optional or mandatory? Optional or mandatory? When it becomes mandatory? If he, now, if act is silent, he can interfere into that. Now tell me, mode of giving a notice, act is silent, huh? specific. Huh? Then why you are doing our action? Did you understand the logic clearly? That's how you need to understand that point. These are the important examination related points on 173. Everyone understood. Tell me, I didn't conduct four meetings in a year. I conducted only three or i conducted four but the time gap is going beyond 120 what will happen what will happen how much a fine how much penalty how much a penalty Are answer here wrong answer 25,000 is for improper notice there is no fine no penalty specifically given in this section that's why section number 450 will get attracted penalty where no specific penalty or punishment is given elsewhere in the act Section number 450, Messiness Provisions of Companies Act. Section number 450 will get attracted, 450, which says that punishment where no specific punishment or penalty is provided elsewhere in the Act. Whenever there is a section, it is saying about some strict provision, but there is no penalty provided for that or fine provided. That does not mean that I am leaving you scot-free. You will be subjected to the provisions of section number 450. Clear or not everyone? Ah, if that be the case, I will ask another two questions. Answer this. Charitable contributions, everyone remember. Huh? Charity. Charity. 
how much charity I can make directly board of directors 5% of average net profits of 3 immediately percent when they can make it directly or not beyond that they require which resolution ordinary resolution special ordinary resolution okay ordinary resolution is required sir I didn't pass ordinary but I made beyond 5 what will happen hey, contravention what will happen nothing is said nothing is said 450 will apply again am I clear everyone in any section of the act no penalty or punishment is provided specifically then a penalty hub section is there what is that 450 will get attracted squarely clear everyone okay next one quorum concept what is the concept we are going to start with quorum important from the exams point of view I will give you one or two minutes time please everyone whatever the book you are following please read the quorum concept first okay don't rely directly on what I tell first you have your own reading after that I have an important question to ask Please, please read. Okay. Can you continue? Okay, now tell me, quorum, <clears throat> so many doubts again, one section which you asked in a twisted way gone, that section is quorum, if you plainly ask the section well and good, no problem, everyone will write, but if you twist with the numbers, na gone, sir, I will ask you some questions, first answer these, after that we will go into analysis, quorum means what? minimum number of directors that must be present at the meeting in order to come uh, in order to convene a particular board meeting is called as a quorum tell me i will ask you a question answer quorum is required for starting the meeting uh, every resolution uh. everyone every resolution quorum is required reasons are very clear it's not like general meeting quorum Quorum is required for every meeting, sorry, every resolution because reason is independent directors concept will come and interested directors concept will come. Interested director means you know section 184, disclosure of interest section is there. In that there will be a concept called as a interested director. Interested director is nothing but a director who is a related party to a transaction. Can he vote or cannot vote? Answer, yeah. 184 section, everyone know. Huh? What is 184? Disclosure of interest. Second subsection to section 184. 
every director of a company who is in any way whether directly or indirectly concerned or interest in a contractor arrangement proposed contractor arrangement entered into or to be entered into with a body corporate in which such director such direct in association with any other director holds more than 2% of the paid up share capital of that company or a promoter manager or chief executive office of that body corporate or a firm or any other entity in which such director is a partner owner or a member as the case may be shall disclose his nature of concern or interest in the meeting of the board and shall not participate in such meeting summary is if you are an interested director interested in any contractor arrangement directly or indirectly concerned or interested contractor arrangement proposed contractor arrangement if you are an interested director you can participate or cannot participate are yeah. answer yeah can vote cannot vote can be counted for corona cannot be counted for corona on the only the issue started there are five resolutions in the two are related party resolutions three are other resolutions clear in both the related party resolutions i am a director and i am interested clear ah huh? how many resolutions in that how many i am interested in that to two i cannot participate in the quorum but remaining three i can participate or not therefore always board meeting quorum means resolution quorum first point everyone has to understand everyone quorum for meeting ah quorum for the resolution ah answer quorum for the resolution there are two types of quorum in case of board meeting one quorum to begin the meeting quorum to pass a resolution quorum to begin the meeting second one is quorum to start the sorry quorum to begin a meeting and quorum to pass a resolution quorum to begin a meeting means that much amount is required first to start the meeting clear ah sare through one example i will explain this rather than theoretically minutes and hours together discussing this i can uh, easily explain this in one single example i want every one of you see the screen like compensation for loss of office this will become a eye opener for you listen carefully a different way of analyzing the quorum concept see the screen total strength in my company say there are 18 directors how many 18 in this total strength of 18 in a particular meeting directors present are say for example directors present are five how many five directors absent are say for example a uh, balance 13 directors interested zero disinterested directors five five minus zero yeah okay this is a scenario quorum is present or not present first answer this first you say what is the total strength 18 what is the basic quorum one third of the total strength or two whichever is higher One third of eighteen mean six or whichever is higher. How many should be present? But only how many are present? Answer. Now quorum is there, not there. Everyone. That's all. Quorum is not there. Everyone up to here understood. Are you answer here? Now resolution quorum. Let us understand. Say for example, in my company, to my surprise. Out of eighteen, twelve directors are present in the meeting. How many? Twelve. Directors absent are six. Directors absent are six. Directors who are interested in the contract has become nine. Disinterested directors are three. Whether quorum is present or not is my second question. On this, don't get excited, please. On this, we have to analyze very deep into the point. Every one in the class. please see the screen this chart will definitely drive you towards a correct answer small uh, mistake is there in the printing i will tell you if you already have the book you can make the change so by mistake it should be more than or equal to 2/3 by mistake it was printed as less than or equal to except that everything is correct sir see here quorum quorum la two types of quorum are there basic quorum concessional quorum first one is basic quorum second one concessional quorum 
I am not talking about beginning meeting quorum. Resolution related quorum. Please see that. Whenever you are passing a resolution and counting a quorum, it should be interested quorum or disinterested quorum. Whoever you are taking into the quorum concept should be disinterested directors or interested directors. Or. Means quorum for a board meeting should be an interested quorum or disinterested quorum. Or. Everyone, quorum means quorum means disinterested quorum. Everyone repeat. Quorum means who should not be there inside. Interested directors should never be counted into the resolution quorum. Clear? Ah, now listen. See that. See the chart. First, everyone, whenever question comes in exam, first you try to calculate the basic quorum. Basic quorum means one third of the total strength or whichever is. Sir, after this five questions, I will ask any of you five. Please ready to answer that properly. Okay, please. For my checking purpose, I have to ask you, not for any other reason. So, please listen carefully. Whenever quorum has to be counted, we have check number one basic quorum you have to calculate basic quorum means what what is the formula for basic quorum total strength or whichever is higher if you for example that is satisfied say for example in my company how many directors are there as per example answer 14 are present how many are present 14 are disinterested now quorum is there or not there answer second question 18 directors, 18 directors, 6 are present, all the 6 are disinterested. Quorum is there, not there. Answer, quorum is there for entire meeting, quorum is there for a particular resolution. Why, why these 6 are disinterested on this resolution? Maybe the next resolution may be related party resolution in that one of the director may become interested. Everyone understood the point or not? Ah, that's the point. Okay, very good. Done. First point you understood. Second, five are interested. Sorry, five are disinterested. One is interested out of that six. Quorum there, not there. Did you understand my question? How many are total directors? In that, how many are present? How many are absent? Well, absent leave of here. Okay. Present the one is interested. Now tell me how many are there? How many are there? So see the screen and tell. I should go to the left side or right side. Are you see the right answer here. What's your problem? Now where is left side, where is right side also? I should only discuss. Huh? Tell me, I should move to the left side or right side? First, tell me what is basic quorum? One third of total strength or two directors, whichever is. This comes to how much in our case? Six. This quorum should be interested or disinterested. So, six DIDs are required for us. Yes or no? But in our case, only how many are there? Means basic quorum satisfied or not satisfied? Huh? Left hand, left side I need to move or right hand side I need to move? Left hand because the answer is no. Now I go to the second condition. Okay. In the second condition they check. Check for, please read. Check for applicability of concessional quorum. Checking for applicability. We are not calculating. We will check whether at least if a basic quorum is not applicable, at least what should apply to that? Concessional quorum should apply. What is a concessional quorum? It will apply if you satisfy one condition. Two conditions uh, exactly. Number one, basic quorum should not be there. If basic quorum is there, you need not come to the concessional quorum concept everyone in the class. We will come to the concessional quorum only if Basic quorum is not present. Basic quorum not present. Say for example, we are going to concessional quorum. One condition satisfied or not? Second one is, listen, number of interested directors must be more than or equal to uh, two-third of the total strength. Everyone, you should answer me. To apply the condition of concessional quorum, how many interested directors must be present at the meeting? Everyone, two-third 
are more than two thirds. Two thirds of eighteen means how much? Two third of you mean it? Chat GPT, eh? To answer you, tell me. Ah, uh, two third of eighteen means how much? Everyone. Twelve. Who should be present? Twelve. Who should be present? Uh, interested director should be twelve. In that case, this condition will be satisfied. In our example, how many directors are there? Totally. In that, how many are present? Ah. Huh? Therefore, how many are absent? That means twelve directors didn't even present at the meeting. We need twelve interested directors present at the meeting. So twelve absent are there in our meeting now. Are you understanding or not? First, tell me. Don't get irritated. I am asking you for a purpose. When I ask you question, don't give wrong answers. Okay? Ensure that. Tell me. First, there are two types of quorum. To begin the meeting, one quorum is required. After that, this is a Resolution related quorum. First, tell me. I need to check which quorum. What is the basic quorum? That number will be interested. A number of disinterested. Ah, very good. First case. How many directors are there in our company? In that six are present. How many are present? All the six are disinterested. Basic. I need to move to the right side or left side. Ah, yes or no? Ah. Automatically, what is that? Final quorum. Don't go for the other point. Okay. Next issue. Example. Anyway, they don't ask that. They will ask that for your yes, sir. So therefore, he will definitely move to the left side. So tell me, uh, basic quorum not present here. Where to go? Now tell me, what is a consensual quorum? How to apply consensual quorum? When to apply consensual quorum? Number of interested directors must be two third or More than two third of the total strength, not total directors present. Uh, total strength, and those interested directors must be present at the meeting. Tell me. In our example, I will change it. How many directors are there? How many? Eighteen. See the second case. See the second case. See the second case. This one. How many directors are totally there? How many are present? How many are present? How many are absent? How many disinterested? How? Sorry, directors interested. Sorry, how many directors are interested? How many disinterested? Quorum is there or not? Let us check now. Okay, let's start. Everyone, first in brain, chart basic quorum. What is the basic quorum? One third of eighteen. Or whichever is. What is the qualifying number? Six. Which kind should be there? Which kind should be there? In our case, six disinterested are there, ah, not there, ah. Ah. So can I continue? Cannot continue. Cannot continue. That means final quorum continues, na? Or we need to move to the left side, ah. Left side. Two means which quorum we need to jump? First, you need to check condition to apply consensus quorum. What is the condition? Number of interested directors must be. Two third or more than two thirds of the total strength. What is the total strength? Two third means twelve interested should be present. How many interested are there? Condition satisfied or not satisfied? Na huh? on that resolution no quorum. On that resolution, everyone on that resolution. On that resolution, everyone no quorum. What to do? Where the meeting could not be held for the want of quorum, what to do? Everyone, everyone, four resolutions are there. One, two, three, four. Okay, third resolution, R three. No quorum. What to do now? When a meeting could not be held, where a resolution cannot be passed for the want of quorum, what has to be done? Everyone, answer. Everyone, everyone. You cannot listen. But how simply you will tell for one resolution adjourn because it's not your pocket money. It coming from other pockets. Never it happen. Where a meeting could not be held for the want of quorum unless article otherwise provide the meeting shall automatically stand adjourned to the same day, same time, same place next week, which is not a national holiday at the same time and place. 
This is what said in section number 174, subsection number 4. What he said is, where a meeting could not be held, here meeting is held. Where a resolution cannot be passed. R1 passed? R1. R2. R4. What is not passed? Just for one resolution, you will adjourn the meeting. The only remedy that is available is pass that resolution by resolution by circulation. That's how 175 section came into the Companies Act. Where incomplete meetings, incomplete resolutions are there to fill the gaps. Next section have come called as resolution by circulation. There is a need for that section. Everyone understood the point clearly. Don't adjourn for every reason. Adjourn. You will adjourn for resolution if the meeting could not be held. Then you can adjourn to the same day, same time, same place next week. Here, meeting started or not started, everyone. Started, but a resolution cannot be passed due to want of a quorum. Everyone understood the concept clearly, everyone. Shall we continue? Now, I will give third example. Please answer after that. Five lucky fellows will be selected. 18. 18. 15. Okay. 15. What is 15? Follow properly. Okay. First, what is 18? What is 15? Directors present. One second. Ah, directors present. Next. What is 3? Directors absent. Directors interested are, say for example, 12. Okay, interested directors are 12. Disinterested are 3. All are present information I am writing there. Okay. Now, again question mark, quorum. First, you should tell me what is the step number 1 we need to check. Basic quorum means that number should be interested or disinterested. Satisfied or not satisfied? We require uh, six disinterested directors to be present. But how many disinterested directors are present? Condition satisfied or not satisfied? Then uh, no quorum. Uh, check for concessional quorum. Uh. Fantastic. What is the checking for concessional quorum? Interested directors must be present. What is the total strength? Two third will become. Twelve should be. Twelve should be. Interested director. And they must be. In this meeting, how many are present? Fifteen. Fifteen. In that, how many are interested? Condition satisfied. Ah? Next, to you should go for calculation of concessional quorum. Checking completed. Clear, ah, everyone. Then we need to go for a last calculation. Number of disinterested directors present at the meeting being not less than two. Number of disinterested directors present at the meeting. Tell me, not being not less than two. Tell me, how many disinterested directors are present? How many are present? Less than two or more than two? Then the quorum will be three. Understood the point or not? That means quorum is present or not present? Present in this meeting. Everyone understood the point? Shall I repeat? Understood? Shall I ask question now? Let's check one lucky fellow. Who is that fellow? Sorry, bro, for you. Checks uh, for you. Answer. Directors present. Um, no need. My car, so give. So you answer. These uh, recordings also will listen to your precious answer. Your answer should be in such a way that whoever is sleeping should wake up. What is this going on? Ah, so okay. Will you answer? Okay, done. The directors present. Okay, 15. Directors present, 15. Direct, sorry, 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 sorry. Total strength, 15. Directors present are, uh, say for example, 13. Directors absent are 2. 
interested directors are say for example 11 disinterested directors you should tell ya motta ne eptunu veni cheppedi koram also you tell sir lastly i will tell yeah <laughs> you are tell answer yeah 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 so tell me what is the quorum disinterested director two sir i ah, don't tell i tell like that explain from the beginning basic quorum how i said how i said atla anamata start basic quorum one third or two whichever is higher sir one third of total strength ah. or two whichever is higher very good five or two so five sir quorum okay basic quorum ah so put a resolution quorum okay nish quorum for the resolution basic quorum present or not present meeting started up quorum undi sir bro you are correct only you answer basic quorum is one third of total strength or two which are is higher uh, what is a one third of total strength five or two which are is higher five. you require five disinterested director ah uh, check the five disinterested are there or not oh, oh you need disinterested number ah enta anyayam bro end bro anta maatalo so disinterested director Directors present are thirteen. Okay, in that interest are eleven. This interest is how much? Two. And now you answer. So concessional quorum can last, sir. But basic quorum le do. Tell me about it. More than two third of interest. Two third of total strength ah, must be interested. Not just interested. Interested. And present. Present at the meeting. So ah. ten. Ten should be there, sir. Okay. Independent, are they interested? Eleven or nine? But the quorum, concessional quorum condition satisfied. Very good. Last, calculate the quorum, final quorum. Final quorum will be disinterested, disinterested director present or two, whichever is higher. Obviously, not less than two means whichever is higher. How many are present here? Two. Two. Two or two, whichever is higher means two. Two, two are present or not? Present. The quorum is there or not there? There. There or not there? Ah, now tell me. Now. sir listen sir listen carefully quorum is present or not present that means quorum is present now my question okay my question is in the first case first case ah uh, this one sorry ha uh, is yes, this one tell me how many directors are totally there in his answer what are the answer he has given quorum is there or not there are answer here there with how many directors answer here two directors yes or no okay now tell me quorum is there with uh, two directors okay now tell me here how many directors are uh, totally there in the company 18 la how many are present how many are interested how many are disinterested five disinterested la we have no quorum two direct two disinterested directors are we have quorum what is this nonsense did you understand my point everyone five disinterested directors so we said no quorum last answer what he has given two disinterested directors so we said there is a fantastic quorum what is this nonsense that's what the spirit behind the concept of quorum quorum is of two types first type quorum to begin the meeting second one quorum to pass a resolution quorum to pass a quorum to pass a common sense you should use tell me in the first example how many directors are totally there how many are present with the five you can't even start the meeting here that's why though five are there quorum is not counted clear everyone quorum is how much in our case to start meeting minimum how many should come and sit uh, six uh, how many are present actually 
means with the five can you start the meeting? I cannot start the meeting. Ah, then adjournment will come. How did you understand? Bad part is so many people are knowing all this. No, the resolution quorum and meeting quorum, no, both are not same. Are you understanding or not? Meeting quorum and resolution quorum, both are not same. Excitement. <laughs> so, both are not at all same. Both are different. One is required to start the meeting. One is required to pass a resolution. Both are not same. Are you understanding or not? One lead to RBC, another lead to adjournment. Both are not same. Are you understanding or not? One lead to calculation of quorum, another lead to begin the meeting. Both are not same. Did you understand the logic behind this? So therefore, please have a clarity. Quorum, he is not talking about the resolution quorum in subsection 4 and 1. They are talking about beginning of a meeting. Clear or not everyone? That's called as where a meeting could not be held. Here resolution could not be passed. Meeting is held. Here meeting started or not started? In his case, started. But what cannot be passed? On a particular resolution, more number of directors became interested. That's all. Are you understanding? Uh, that's the logic behind. In the first case, I am number A not present properly. Therefore, I can't even start a meeting. When you can't start a meeting, from where the resolutions and quorum will come? Therefore, adjournment will happen because of lack of interested directors, a lack of quorum uh, in person. Lack of quorum in person lead to adjournment of a meeting. Now tell me, when a meeting it could not be held for the want of quorum, what to do? Continue adjourn. Meeting could not be held. Meeting could not be held. Adjourn. Adjourn? When? Adjourn when? Same day, same time, same place, next week, like this. You should not think. Article should tell when to adjourn. Sir, I will tell you about the flow. Low, low. So tell me, you cannot adjourn to whatever date you want. Section 174, subsection number 4 says that where a meeting could not be held for the want of quorum unless the articles otherwise provide the meeting shall automatically stand adjourned to the same time, same place, same same week, sorry, uh, same, same same day, same time, same place, the next week. If that day happens to be a national holiday, next succeeding day, which is not a holiday, at the same time and place. This is what they said, simply to tell. Whenever a meeting could not be held, first don't adjourn directly to next week. Go to the articles, check. In the article, did they tell anything about adjournment? Hello? Something is said, follow that. Nothing is said. Then, same day, same time, same place, next week. Not being a national holiday. Clear everyone? That is the idea behind this particular concept. Hope you are clear to the logic, everyone in the class. Sir. This is what about the quorum concept. But one last counterpoint before we go to the next one called as a resolution by circulation. Okay. Answer this. Point number one. Meeting is started. Meeting started. We need to calculate quorum for resolution of meeting. Resolution of meeting. Next. Meeting started. 18 are there. 12 are present. Meeting started. Here. Yeah. After four or five resolutions, substantial directors left the meeting. Can meeting continue? Cannot continue. Cannot continue. That means if the number reduced below the quorum, existing directors can't continue the board meeting. Clear everyone in the class. Next issue. Adjournment can be because of two reasons. Number one, for quorum, other than for quorum, anything can happen. Yes or no. So many reasons are there in this world which lead to adjournment other than for the want of current classic example happens to be no agenda. Agenda is so much important that if you don't give an agenda, what will happen automatically in a board meeting we will discuss about proprietary and secret confidential information, public information. Always board meetings contain private and confidential information. General meetings will contain public information. Board meetings, when Reliance board meeting is conducted recently, no one will know. Someone try to explain that also. How should we beat him here? Yeah? 
someone try to tell the day to number also no one knows that when they conduct the board meeting what they discuss inside the board meeting so who seen all those things so board meetings no one will be aware they will conduct within the company without knowing to any other person because essentially it contains a confidential information which one board meetings therefore the problem is whenever the board meetings are conducted in a company not even a third party will know about it and moreover that's why board meeting resolutions will not be filed are you understanding or not there is no concept of filing board resolutions board resolution that's why board if they pass resolution they will note it in a register register if shareholders want they can check okay this happened in board meeting that's all but what they discussed in the meeting minutes to the board will not have an access to the shareholders clear everyone these are all certain important points everyone has to understand okay minutes of a board can be inspected by the shareholders or cannot be never they can do that they don't even have the power they don't even allow to see that it contains confidential information and a private information of a particular company which they don't want to leak outside clear everyone uh, this is one point why i am telling this is listen carefully agenda not given what is not given agenda 10 directors are there all the 10 directors came company secretary gave 10 resolution points like 10 questions in ca question paper he saw that they asked what is this company secretary said that sir that is our agenda please pass resolution what resolution you are asking to pass we can't pass unless and until we can we know this clearly we should understand the transaction then we have to pass a resolution because every resolution passed in a board meeting will have a serious impact on the stock markets clear one project is accepted by a company without checking that whether npv is positive or not it will affect the company's wealth or not answer here yeah. so obviously it will badly affect the wealth of a company so therefore sleeping and tie he put they can't pass a resolution that's why board resolutions require proper agenda though not specified in the act previously some of the students said agenda is mandatory optional means what answer i got it's 100% mandatory as a good governance in should also give the same answer okay for the first time so what answer they have given is as a part of a good corporate governance it is always required to give an agenda though it is silent as per the act do you know why this one and directors came they started reading the notice yeah they read the agenda agenda paper given as a surprise question paper they saw that like a student they said that what is this what's happening here they read the agenda they had said that i i i am not understanding what is there inside we can't pass a resolution now tell me 10 directors are there 10 let like 10 present in the meeting clear everyone Ten la tenu present in the meeting. Ten la tenu disinterested. But they passed the resolution. Did not pass the resolution. Answer: Why they didn't even understand the agenda? They said that, "Arey, let us adjourn the meeting. We will read agenda and come again." Now this this adjournment is a far korma, other than far korma. How to adjourn this? Can I adjourn? I cannot adjourn. Kenna cannot. Ah, on that section number one hundred seventy four discussed. Ah, one seventy four subsection four is talking about where a meeting could be could not be held for want of quorum. Ah, could not be held for any reason. Ah, held for quorum. Ah, any reason. Ah, any reason is covered. The word automatically. Regular classes, I said this very clearly. The word automatically used in section number one hundred seventy four subsection number four. automatically what do you mean by automatically any manual intervention required or not required listen to my words now we don't have time to read entire bare provision i will explain you the main point here where a meeting could not be held for the want of quorum everyone repeat where a unless articles otherwise provide the meeting shall automatically stand adjourned the meeting shall this is what they said means if this is a quorum related adjournment adjournment is automatic what does it mean sir if quorum is not present quorum is not present okay first one i need to check the first i need to check the art quorum not present constitutional quorum also not present first i need to check what articles articles something they said adjourn as per articles yes or no 
do you require any other person to give permission to you no automatically go by articles yes or no article silent what you will do same day same time same place next week that is also manual intervention automatic ah uh, that means when the adjournment is other than for want of quorum you need to go by manual route chairman has to take a decision that means section indirectly covered though directly section don't tell about uh, adjournment other than for want of quorum it was indirectly explained in section number 1744 clear or not everyone in the class understood or not uh, that's how you need to understand tell me section 174 covered adjournment for quorum other than for quorum both are. both are covered what is automatic what is automatic adjournment for quorum other than quorum ah uh, everyone other than quorum is automatic come manual who is that manual person to take chairman has to tell when the adjournment will be conducted again clear 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 everyone with this we completed the quorum concept but one last question not concept tell me quorum has to be checked for meeting a resolution of both both meeting will be checked before starting it quorum will be checked for resolution after starting and at the time of passing each and every resolution clear everyone done resolution by circulation already i told you the reason behind resolution by circulation four resolutions r1 r3 r4 what is passed what is passed what is passed what is left just because one resolution could not be passed because of the lack of quorum we need to adjourn the meeting answer here you can't adjourn the meeting no one will allow sir common sense will not allow for that one resolution again i have to come so that is not a wise decision so what to do what to do then you go for resolution by circulation for that one resolution so rbc what is rbc please fast everyone what is rbc rbc will be used in two cases number one, three cases technically number one it will be used when there is a routine business transaction which transaction business tra approval of board is required but it's a routine transaction then you can go for rbc instead of conducting a board meeting clear everyone second reason why we pass an rbc meeting is adjourned or meeting is adjourned or there is any unfinished resolutions like what we said what is there unfinished resolutions our example is there na if there is any unfinished business in that case you can use the rbc third reason when cost of conducting the board meetings is very high example physical board meeting i need to conduct clear everyone Uh, if i conduct a board meeting i need to spend minimum 5 6 lakhs on that travel cost of directors everything maintenance everything accommodation 5 6 lakh i need to spend on that particular board meeting resolution you want to pass is a contract worth 50000 did you understand the point cost benefit analysis la like, is it really required to pass a board resolution in that case pass an rbc clear everyone in the class tell me when rbc is required in general in general people will pass rbc in which which cases routine unique second one unfinished business meeting agenda unfinished business is there like in the resolution what we said 1 2 3 the 3 r1 r2 r3 r4 r3 is there that's not unfinished meeting it's unfinished business one resolution could not be passed meeting is held properly only clear everyone in the class sir understood ah last one when the cost of conducting board meetings is very high in that case we will pass resolution at the meeting ah through circulation ah means you will send by a email or post or hand deliver you will give a resolution okay listen rbc is a substitute for what hmm sir we can pass a resolution at meeting ah answer now we are passing the same resolution virtually ah now tell me rbc is a substitute for a dash answer voting not for meeting both are not same always remember this repeat rbc is a substitute for voting not for meeting what i said everyone sir not for fun sake tell me rbc is not a 
substitute for meeting it is a substitute for voting you can vote either at board meeting or you can vote through rbc if you tell that rbc is equal to meeting every company will pass a four rbcs and said that 173 complied what is 173 four board meetings must be held or not uh, then no one will conduct meetings four rbcs they will pass meetings completed therefore rbc can never be called as a substitute for meeting it is a substitute for voting instead of coming to the meeting and vote you vote at your place only five important conditions or six important conditions are there to make a valid rbc okay please repeat one by one first one resolution must be circulated in draft number one everyone resolution must be circulated in together with the necessary papers everyone first one resolution must be circulated in resolution must be circulated in together with the from here everyone can answer to whom very good place mode of giving mode of sending post courier or electronic mail up to here everyone understood huh? tell me now resolution must be circulated in together with to at their addresses registered with the company uh, either by way of hand delivery post courier or electronic means last one is a new point again who should approve this rbc directors who are entitled to vote who is entitled to vote that's all interested directors are allowed or not allowed or not allowed so who is entitled now this interested only entitled that's the meaning everyone understood the point huh? now tell me what is the deficiency in rbc when compared to both meeting physically what is the deficiency you found what is the deficiency interaction will be absent what is absent interaction will be absent in what in what now listen there are 12 directors in a company how many 12 in that 12 directors our company proposes a rbc on a particular issue every director received a draft notice received a draft resolution draft is there na? with the necessary papers they received i read the draft my friend also read the draft like me all the 12 directors read the draft out of 12 six directors found that the matter considered in RBC is very important decision, which is not really routine in nature. I want a physical meeting where interaction is possible to discuss pros and cons. Did you understand what I said? Company proposed, circulated, who opened up? They found that substantially half the directors have found that what is not required. RBC is not adequate, but what is required? In such case, they can request the chairman. One third director should request. Who should request? One third. Twelve one third means we have how many? Condition also satisfied. Clear. Huh? One third of the directors must request to the chairman to shift the matter from RBC to board meeting and chairman must shift it to the board meeting. Everyone understood the point clearly? RBC also completed. You can read. RBC, if you want, you can see here. So, please don't waste time. Everyone completed reading. Uh, understood the concept of RBC. Everyone in the class. Hello, everyone. I'm talking to you. Understood the point clearly? And now listen. Listen my point. You can read it later. Let me first discuss all the points. Later I will give time for you to read. I am going to discuss about video conferencing. What is the concept sir? The question will be there in May 23. Mark it very very important. 100% I expect a question from VC this time. 
Mark wherever the book, whatever the book you are reading, everyone will cover that concept. No one will leave. Very, very important for the exams. Which concept? Video conferencing. Okay. Why it is important? Everyone will leave. Tell me, frankly, you tell me, everyone in the class sitting here, you read everything in the board meeting chapter even before. Maybe here and there gaps I may fill. Quorum concept, etc., logics, everything. But at least you have an idea of all the topics or not? Are you answer here? Really tell me, do you have a conceptual clarity on VC? Sir, I will ask you one question. What is the concept of a roll call in video conferencing? Roll call. I want explanation for that. You can't write one line in the exam. This is a problem with VC. Why VC he will ask? Because of this he will ask. Next issue. Second one. Tell me how company should give a chance to a director to update his VC details. Some people didn't even know that there is a question like this. That's a problem with VC concept. Okay. Next, tell me what aspects of the board meeting you cannot use VC. Some aspects you cannot take to VC. Ah, everyone, what are those? First point that rule was deleted now. Don't tell the list. That is the amendment. Expected. Hmm? That concept is not there. Today, everything can be dealt by video conferencing, including approval of financial statement, approval of board report, approval of prospector, approval of merger amalgamations. Everything you can do through VC. Clear everyone in the class? Sorry. Some. Please, please. Some points inside this VC are very important. I will tackle those. You can read later. But listen properly, attentive. Number one, important concepts in VC. First thing, what is the difference between VC and a board meeting? Ah, their physical presence is there. Here also physical presence is there. Their interaction is there. Here interaction will be there. Ah, yes, VC has interaction. That's why I can understand your problem. So, therefore, point is, VC is a substitute for meeting or not a substitute. CT is a substitute. Who said? I am not saying that. Section 173, subsection number 2. 173, subsection 2 said that meeting can be conducted in two ways. Number 1, physical present. Number 2, VC. Number 2, VC. VC is of two types again. VC, audio visual means. Number one, number one, VC, VC la first one is general VC concept, second one, audio visual means, have you heard about this, that's a problem, so please have a clarity, questions are being asked on this area as well, one question came, I didn't remember attempt number it came, there is a difference between VC and audio visual means, video conferencing is different, Audio visual means is different. Clear? Zoom is a audio visual means. Zoom is a audio visual means. Sir, what is the difference between video conferencing and audio visual means? Observe audio visual means two words have been used or not. That means you can independently control either audio or video or both. In Zoom, can I switch on my voice without video? Can I switch off my video without audio? That's called as audio visual mean. Means audio video separately will be controlled. Zoom is a audio visual means. It's not a video conferencing. Video conferencing is softwares are there. You can't control anything. It will be on the central server. A person will give you a connection. You can't stop. You can't start. You can only participate with a web camera. Did you understand the point or not? These are the facts of video conferencing. Come to the practice, you can directly see. So many companies today, we are doing that. Video conferencing is different from audio visual means. Audio visual means is just a relay of audio, relay of video, both together. That's why Zoom Live, whenever you listen, more participants are there. Na? 
voice will come first later video will come or video will come first later audio will come or totally audio will go totally video will go but in case of video conferencing that problem will not come you can't control anything except to participate speak to shut down clear or not everyone so tell me we see ah uh, now the question start meeting conducted through zoom sessions is a valid meeting or not yes because it comes under the category of audio visual means clear everyone so therefore this is the first thing that everyone has to understand clear everyone shall i move on to the next area tell me vc is a proper substitute for a board meeting or not everyone yes what is not a substitute for board meeting what is a substitute vc is a substitute but what is not a substitute RBC can never become a substitute. VC can again be conducted in two ways. Number one, basic VC, proper VC. Or second one, audio visual means everyone understood the first two points. Ah, uh, third point, quorum will be VC quorum uh, or physical quorum uh, can be both. Uh. Means ten directors, twelve directors are there. How many should be present at a meeting? Twelve la. Uh, how many should be present at the meeting to start? Uh, Two present through physical, two present through VC, valid or not valid? Happily valid, no problem. That means VC can be counted for quorum. Who said this? Not Kaushik Mukesh. One seventy four subsection one. Section numbers, subsection numbers, so clause, subclause, sub proviso. Every explanation I will give you. You can go and check there. One seventy four subsection, one seventy four subsection number one. Clearly said that quorum need not always be a physical quorum. It can also be a Video conferencing through quorum. Everyone understood the point clearly. Next issue after that. Third, fourth question. First question. First question. Video conferencing can be a meeting. Ah, uh, there are two types of VC. Number one, proper video conferencing. Second one, number three. Can VC be called as a quorum? Fourth point. Okay. Fourth very important point. What are the duties of chairman and company secretary? With regard to VC, is a question. Seven points will be there. Seven points you should remember. Number one, easily we can understand. First one will be listen, listen. I will write here rather than reading there. Please see here. Ah, first one, confidentiality, integrity, availability. Or you can write integrity, confidentiality, availability. First, tell me, answer my question clearly. Chairman and company secretary should ensure that uh, ensure that there is a proper integrity in the meeting conducted through video conferencing. What do you mean by integrity? Integrity in real English terms is called as unchanging. Standing in the same position is called as a integrity. What does it mean? Simply the meaning of integrity here does not mean integrity of auditor or not that. Don't merge those here. Integrity here represent mean ten participants are there means ten no should be there till the end of the meeting except when you are not counted for quorum. Ten la eight came after half an hour ninth one came after half an hour eighth one went. This should not happen. Started a call. I mean, company secretary and chairman should ensure that no one is moving out, no one is coming in in the middle of the meeting. They should warn the directors at the beginning itself. They will give a time limit: ten fifteen in the morning. Ten fifteen. Who are there? They only can participate. Others, even though after they come, they will not take into the video conferencing. Clear or not, everyone? Okay. See there. First one. Ensure proper. Ensure proper. Spend ten minutes with me from now. With regard to this, VC will be completed. Please tell me. Ensure proper. Ensure proper. Confidentiality. Institute and subject will use the word security. Ensure sufficient security. Everyone, ensure. Ensure sufficient. Very good. First one. Ensure proper integrity. Ensure sufficient security. Third one, 
ensure availability you should answer what should be available to conduct a meeting audio video and video conferencing equipment computer system with a proper internet connection proper audio okay like this in the morning problem should not come okay connections lost audio problem video problem synchronization problem should not come availability of video conferencing equipment availability of uh, all the video conferencing equipment must be made properly available clear or not everyone in the class okay three points i said seven la three complete tell me first one ensure 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 and no, over meeting over here what is the next duty of me after completing the meeting minutes is a second issue first meeting completed ah, that recording is there na what you need to do with the recording storage and safe keeping and labeling three things should be done number 1 storage safe keeping and labeling number 1 labeling labeling when i have to do before completing the audit of that financial year you have to mark it clearly clear that means sir if you have five six ssds ssd means uh, solid state drives pen drives here in one particular pen drive if you uh, if you uh, dump a particular video conferencing which is coming into 100 gb like that because it's a 4k recording video conferencing so 100 gb or 150 gb or some recording will be there if you put all the recordings in the same place it becomes very difficult to point out where a particular board meeting is there therefore storage is important recording is important storage is important safe keeping is important more than anything else what is also important label mark the tape recordings clearly mark them which meeting which date clearly write down there clear everyone after that your point will come meeting over what to do within 30 days i need to prepare the minutes minutes i have to prepare five points completed everyone start number one ah one second one second what we are reading video conferencing ajay ante bro anta maatanna video conferencing i know that in video conferencing duties of chairman and company secretary number one ensure 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 done after that storage safe keeping labeling marking the tape recordings number next one fifth one is preparation of minutes over five points sixth seventh ensure that ensure that no other person other than directors are present at the meeting means unauthorized access can be there cannot be can never be there i told you reason also board the meeting is a confidential meeting no one should have an access ensure that ensure that no other person other than directors are having access to the meeting with one exception differently abled can accompany others deaf dumb blind they can't participate by themselves da you speak if i am a deaf i can't hear na some person will hear and they will write and tell me i can speak on the matter blind i can't see the participants what is what they are doing but i can have one person who will tell what they are doing now when they raise the hand na how can i know clear everyone dumb person is there who can't speak they can hear and see but what they cannot do answer here what they cannot do they can't speak properly in such a case what will happen they can't deliberate any issue but they can see and hear both of them clear ah huh? at the time some person will speak on his behalf did you understand what i said ah huh? there should the other persons other than the directors can attend or cannot attend other persons can attend or cannot attend cannot attend but one exception is there who can accompany but differently abled can accompany others understood or not understood up to here how many points are completed six last the seventh one seventh one is 
every participant should be able to see and hear all other participants every participant uh, should be able to see and uh, hear to all other participant but you need to ensure who should ensure that cs and company secretary should ensure that everyone understood the point clearly okay now tell me sir up to here everyone understood the concept clearly yeah what are the points we completed now tell me vc first one vc is a substitute for meeting true or false it is a proper quorum also true or false vc is of how many types sir number one proper vc second one audio visual means very good how many duties the company secretary and chairman have seven next one roll call roll call is like attendance roll call is like attendance school we will tell number one present sir number two presenter same that's called as a roll call means i will call on a roll basis one after another that's called not r o l e r o l l roll call clear and now listen sorry please listen sir eight directors images are available in boxes company secretary chartered uh, sorry chairman will first tell that i start with the block 1 to the left top corner from there you need to start the numbers clear first director say for example i am the first director standing on the box now i have to introduce myself okay i will tell that good morning i am kaushik mukesh i am participating from hyderabad i received agenda i can able to see and hear all the other participants thank you these are the four points you need to tell extra don't tell because this is what said in act tell your name tell the location from where you are participating tell whether you received agenda or not tell that you can see and hear other participant and fifth one you should tell that no other person is having access to my meeting move the webcam here and there and show that over that's all next party mr a will take i my name is mr i am participating from guntur my name um, uh, sorry uh, location also said that next one s i received the agenda papers i can see and hear other participant no other person is participating along with me move the webcam show them roll call again this is called as roll call tell me what are the things that will be mentioned in the roll call number 1 first one name second one location number 3 fact of receipt of agenda that means agenda is mandatory clear or not do not specifically said in the act number 4 number 4 see and here other party number 5 will be no other person is having a access to the meeting everyone understood the point or not everyone hmm. now listen last one up to here everyone had a full conceptual clarity on notice concept uh, sorry sorry vc now vc la notice concept very very important for the exams i will summarize and tell please remember forever till exams at least see here vc notice concept the so notice must be sent within how many days before the meeting if the meeting is a vc meeting how many days before then also 7 days this is the first one there is no change in the concept of notice if it is a vc or a physical you conduct physical meeting you conduct vc meeting shorter notice same provision original notice same provision no change in vc notices everyone understood ah however whenever company has a option of giving video conferencing meeting you should give a chance to the directors to choose well in advance at the beginning of the year itself that means year started by jan 1st or not calendar year answer put one day jan 10th to 12th to put one day on that day give chance to all the directors to choose whether they want to attend by vc or physical in the coming meetings in the year how many chances i should give at least to one chance you need to give to whom directors some directors reply Ten la seven replied. Ten la seven replied. Seven la five said that we will attend through VC. Two said that we will come physically. Clear, ah? Huh? Are there how many are there still participate properly? Some are not listening. How many are there? Totally. Ten la how many? Who how many replied? In that how many replied? Favor of VC. Five. How many against VC? How many against VC? Two. 
Now tell me five said yes, sir. Two said, uh, sorry, seven said yes, sir. In that seven, five said yes to VC. Two said yes to physical. Three replied or not replied? Uh, now the question arises. Next, uh, they gave answer on Jan 10th. Uh, 10th or 12th uh, they gave. February 20th, one board meeting is conducted. Board meeting is conducted. Now, five directors, what who have given the video conferencing affirmation, we will consider them to be coming for physical presence of VCA. Well, in advance, company will know about it now. Yes or no? They will make necessary arrangements to conduct a meeting for them. Clear? Second. Remaining three, three or two or two. Remaining two are there. How they will attend? How they will attend? Now the question is, what about the last three? They gave a reply or didn't give a reply? Answer. Presume that they will come through physical meeting only. This is what the question that was given. Presume that they attend physically. Presume that they will attend physically. Okay? Now tell me. I am among five. I will attend through? I will attend through? I wanted to attend physically, though I have given a VC. Can I do or cannot do? Can do well in advance, you have to inform the company. Did you understand the point or not? So what is the meaning of that well in advance? Act doesn't define that. It depends on the facts of the case. Clear or not? Did you understand what I said? I am among. First you tell me, how many favored VC? How many favored physical? How many abstained the voting? What about five? We will presume that in all the further meetings they will participate only through. For the next two, we will presume that for all the coming meetings they will present through. Answer. Last three, we will presume that they will attend through physical only because they didn't give any approval about the VC clear or not everyone. Very good. Next. Next point. Five directors who gave their affirmation for the Video conferencing meeting, they changed their mind. One of the directors said that I want to attend physical. Will you stop? Uh? Welcome. Uh. Welcome. But you need to give information well in advance. Likewise, reverse can also happen. What reverse can happen? Those who have given for a physical affirmation, they may tell that I want to participate through VC. For you, we are not prepared to conduct a VC. You should also give us a intimation in advance as that we can take necessary actions to give you a chance to attend through video conferencing everyone understood or not answer this is the answer for video conferencing these are the important areas of video conference beyond this exam questions are not tested understood the point or not everyone tell me tell me how many chances a company has to give minimum once to ask them whether they want to attend either through or through if you give VC intimation, I will presume for all the future meetings you will attend only through VC. You didn't give anything? Physical. If you give physical? Physical. Can I change from physical to VC on a meeting? Vice versa. But you have to intimate well in advance to the company. That's the answer for the notice concept. Clear or not everyone? With this, the board meetings area has been completed. Uh, this committees we will merge directly with the SEBI LODR because both are same. I don't want to waste time here. I will directly cover in SEBI LODR. Clear everyone? Next concept is board powers. Okay. Take a short break and come soon. It's 4.45. 5 o'clock I will restart again. So we completed all the section contents relating to the board meetings. Now, let us begin with the board powers concept. Very important for exam again. 6 to 8 marks question again you can expect from this area called as board powers. 5 marks from board meetings to 6 to 8 marks from board powers. Here, yeah, 8 marks to 6 marks to 8 marks from managerial personnel and another 6 marks question from normal director's concept. 30 marks solid will come from these areas. Here, very important three chapters in Companies Act.
clear everyone and in the last trends minimum 25 to 30 marks are coming from these three areas including mcqs and normal descriptive questions clear everyone so you should include also the mcq questions most mcqs are coming from directors area descriptive questions and long questions are coming from these areas okay this and the managerial personnel okay so the 30 marks area we are going to complete 30 marks are crucial for your syllabus clear everyone okay now listen so additional topics are there regarding this board meetings chapter what do you mean by additional concepts additional concepts are section contents are completed already beyond section certain important notifications circulars case laws important observations are there let us read those very clearly this one single chart will help you understand all other concepts relating to these sections let us see one by one first authority to call a board meeting authority to call a board meeting that means who will conduct a board meeting who will call a board meeting general meetings will be called by the board of directors yes or no like that who should convene a board meeting it is not said anywhere in the act therefore articles has to tell which one has to tell articles also didn't say anything about it okay then table f will apply which will apply table f first one from here table f will get repeated so many times first let us know about what is a table f any guess any guess model articles what do you mean model articles uh, listen initially five minutes of story listen carefully such that you will be engaged in understanding the concept initially when the company said 2003 sorry 1956 is drafted before 1956 there is no concept called as a private companies in india private company concept is not there in india before 1956 act i will give you quite a good number of examples listen india is the only country in this world which is having concept of a private company first point number one sir other countries they don't have that is entirely our creativity why reasons are very clear outside india if you see there is no concept called as a private company i will give good examples also family members started a company they will start as a private company a public company they don't want to allow others they only started they start as a private company a public company answer private company okay now answer uh, companies act like when you learn at the initial stages of your learning companies act one case law is there his name is solomon Do you remember ha, 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 solomon ha. tell me the case law name solomon versus solomon company limited not private limited it's a family company but because in uk there is no concept called as a private company even if you want to start within your family yes that company will have a government regulation there is no concept called as a private company public company there is no concept in america if you see usa there is only one concept inc what is that what is inc incorporated public incorporated private incorporated like this they will not form sir if they want to form a private entity how they form llps are the only entities outside india for less the llp also is there god should know why private company and llp at the same time when both are governed by same mca sir okay leave of all controversies with the government main thing that you have to understand in detail is listen there is no concept of what in india previously 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 not there who drafted companies act in india indians are british this act is drafted by british indians are british only drafted okay lord dennings is the person who drafted companies act for india clear everyone sorry this companies act whatever you are reading today is not the first companies act there is a previous companies act already yes or no what's that 19 is there any act before that yes 1942 transfer companies ordinance before that is there any act yes the indian companies act 1913 before that is there any companies act yes indian companies act 1882 before that is there any companies act yes indian companies act 1866 before that is there any companies act yes the english companies act 1812 before that is there any companies act yes the english companies act 1777 through which east india company has been formed in india 
ఇప్పుడు హిస్టరీ ఆఫ్ కంపెనీస్ ఈస్ అ లాంగ్ హిస్టరీ ఆఫ్ టూ ఫిఫ్టీ త్రీ హండ్రెడ్ ఇయర్స్ సో అవర్ కంపెనీస్ యాక్ట్ ఇట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఈస్ నాట్ అవర్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ బోర్డ్ టోటల్లీ ఫ్లేవర్ ఈస్ టేకన్ ఫ్రమ్ బ్రిటిష్ టాపింగ్ ఈస్ డన్ బై ఇండియా ఇఫ్ యూ అబ్జర్వ్ డెఫినేషన్ ఆఫ్ రిలేటివ్ అండర్ కంపెనీస్ యాక్ట్ ఇన్కమ్ ట్యాక్స్ సేమా బోత్ ఆర్ నాట్ సేమా ఆన్సర్ బోత్ ఆర్ సేమ్ ఆర్ బోత్ ఆర్ నాట్ సేమ్ బోత్ ఆర్ సేమా నాట్ సేమా ఎవరి వన్ వై వై ఐ టోల్ సో మెనీ టైమ్స్ ఇన్ క్లాసెస్ ఆల్సో వై ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ act which was brought by indians always you remember companies act is always british flavored act do you write anything in india but the origin of the very origin of companies act is taken from british okay the very origin came from british they only written they only drafted they only concepted it they only applied in india everything they are law refabricated like in india therefore that flavor can never go income tax is a drafted indigenously within india originally when they started writing income tax act they also got a doubt who is a relative who should be included into relative ah they father mother great grandfather great grandfather chak 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 vamsa parampara emma step son step father Please. <laughs> so, listen carefully. My point is, <laughs> my point is, there is no concept called as a steps in income tax. Tell me, where are you from? I don't know. You are in income tax. So, it is not there in income tax. A company's activity is there. Originally, when the law of income tax is drafted in India, they also got the same doubt. what could be included into the relative as a sir parents father grandfather great grandfather chak 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 vamsa parampara down below if you go na children grandchildren great grandchildren their creativity adho vamsa parampara down line they will go so try to understand clearly like that it will go down adho vamsa parampara also will continue along with them now this is a vamsa vruksham the tree of legacy okay the lineage continues to the topmost corner till the down so to the rock bottom and till the sky this vamsa parampara will continue law has also taken them when law on income tax was originally drafted in india indians only started writing it in 1961 at that time what doubt they got who should be included into the definition of relative therefore they thought that let's go to the manuscripts that were given they have taken one or originated manuscript called as a manu charitra they have taken that they read how beautifully they drafted indian com- uh, income tax act they said that who is a relative ni chotta evadu ane question vaste if that question arises you should write some names or not how beautifully they have taken from manu charitra a manuscript was taken they said if a person die who should be untouchable for 3 days 7 days 10 days 11 days include all of them into the relative definition because those are relatives this is what the definition of relative under which act that's why if you see income tax act all the members of hcf are relatives to each other are you understanding or not always remember law maker don't write anything without any intention he is intentional and he want to tell something and we need to understand that in a right sense sir eventually whether we remember properly or not is entirely different story but his intention is like that but companies act originally drafted by indians uh, flavor was taken from british yeah british law what is very common step concept they felt pride about saying that last year this year same person is there when they take it as an insult therefore what generally they do they will have that concept and uh, listen uh, seriously they will have that concept they take it as a pride therefore british act la relative definition la step father step mother step sister step brother all these are there in india it is popular ah though people have they don't officially encourage are fact is fact da really may be there but no one will tell as per companies are thinking so no one will tell with the pride 
maybe secrecy will be maintained ah uh, therefore there is no point of writing the relative definition that way so anyway come back to the point main issue is there is no concept called as a private company in companies act in india in india there is no such concept later down uh, in 1939 30 40 42 time because lord dennings has started writing the 1956 companies act from 1939 onwards he started writing the old companies act i mean the 56 companies act uh, in the year 1939 with some indian uh, lawyers as well like k s anantraman from chennai like that some great lawyers he kept with him who is having knowledge on indian culture they started writing companies act within india fantastic when they are writing they got a doubt private companies sorry companies partnership firms what are those companies and partnership firm both the comparison has come in india partnerships are there from 1932 onwards yes or no and the fun part is partnerships are doing equal business like a private uh, like a company at the time private company anyway not their 40s private sorry companies and partnerships are doing equal business equal business in sense volume of business turnover profits everything is same between whom and whom now tell me at that time also companies are governed by which act companies act but partnership is governed by partnership act partnership act is having 80 sections companies act is having 702 sections at that time 702 sections are there in the old companies act now tell me who is more governing companies act or partnership now companies act is having around 600 rules at that time partnership don't have rules they have notification they don't have notification they have circulars they don't have circulars they don't they have amendment they don't have amendment and their roc mca cb everyone will fall here here no one is there to fall on us now tell me who is more regulated answer here who are not at all regulated they are uh, not regulated partnership regulated company when it comes to volume of trade and business who is doing better everyone is doing in the same pace sometimes partnership may also do better government thought that everyone is shifting themselves into partnerships which is not regulated properly by the government government want to stop this what they said when they are drafting the new law on companies in 56 year they said let us bring a hybrid company concept what is that it's not purely partnership it's not purely a public company admit of both of these we will prepare a hybrid nature of company which is the first time brought in the world called as a private company called as a are answer here now they asked all the partnerships partnerships continue and convert yourself into private company they said partnership said eh, we will not convert they said eh, convert here they asked why i should convert why should i convert here what is the reason tell me one good reason why should i convert government said that why you will not convert here tell me one reason they said in reverse oh uh, no no company means uh, there will be seven direct seven members uh, three directors are required yes or no partnership can be started by two persons or not generally you see any partnership in india wife and husband will start partnerships i am talking about yes or no company means how many are required from where we should bring remaining five the question is a valid question one means <laughs> so from where we should bring balance of five and the standing in between it's not possible. hey listen here so partnerships uh, given a reverse jolt to the government tell me one reason here why should i convert if i convert na it becomes a company company require how many members how many members seven how many are we now two but if i convert how many has to be there seven from where we have to bring additional five government peda samasya ochinde so then again they ask okay only this is a reason second reason is also there what is that um conversion of uh, private company uh, sir conversion of partnership into company means uh, i will convert at fair values uh, you will levy capital gain on that government said that oh idi peda samasya government said that okay i will do one thing conversion of conversion of partnership firm into a company at that time if there is any transfer of capital assets i will not treat it as a transfer under section 47 really yeah? really you will convert ha huh? <laughs> why re 
I said all the two. You asked the two concepts. Are you understanding or not? Uh, what is the third wish? Also ask that. Uh, private company, sorry, partnership firm. Na, I will convert. Uh, when I am a partnership firm, I used to write only one document. That's called as a partnership deed. But if I convert into company, two documents are required. Number one will be M O A, A O A. Chartered accountant who ask five thousand for a drafting will ask two five thousand. So now, first five thousand is for A O A, M O A. Second five thousand for government also shakar. Oh, for that five thousand, ten thousand you are looking. That's why you are not converting. Yes. I will do one thing here. I will give justification for all the three government said. What justification? We are starting private company. In private company also number of directors and members are two. That's why to match with partnerships. Number two. What is the second question you asked me? Capital gains. Ah, I will not treat it as a transfer. They are convert. Third one. What you asked? You have to write the two documents. The chartered accountants will charge you double the time. One document, I will only give you free of cost. That became the table articles. Ah, uh, to tell that I said all these things. Everyone understood the point clearly, ah? Yeah. Are I will give Mustaf Patisko? I will double the cost. No. Really, this is the intention of government. Are five thousand rupees you are asking for uh, uh, non-conversion? I will only give you articles. Yeah, lelo, lelo, my articles. So table F was introduced. That was called as model articles. Uh, now to tell this, I said all these things. At least now you will remember. Tell me now. Table F provisions are written in table F provisions are written. These are called as a model articles. Model articles. Please listen here. Model articles. Model article means like this. Articles can be. You can apply entire model articles. You can change here and there. Or you can apply your own articles. Anything you can do. If you don't write articles, those will automatically apply. Which are default articles? Your articles, sir. Table F is a default. Table F is a default. If you don't write articles on your own, automatically what will come and fall? Answer. Table F is M O A na, A O A na. Huh? Everyone? A O A. It's a Templated AOA, sir. You will have a message, sir. Not template messages in phone. I can't speak now. I will call you later, which will I will do? Yes, sir. No, I am very busy. Please call me later. These are all typed messages, sir. Template messages, sir. Means already they are included into that system. Will generate same AOA in the articles in table F is a templated articles. Already there is a template given. Where it will be given? Schedule one. How many schedules are there in Companies Act? Seven. Seven schedules. The first schedule is called as Table F. Not Table F. Table A, B, C, D, E, F. Like that, it is there. F is important for us in examination because it contains A O A. Clear, everyone in the class. Now tell me, if I don't write articles, what will apply? If I write articles, what will apply? Own articles will apply. Some may have written, some may have applied. Can I do like that? Yes, you can do. Who said section six? If you have doubts, check after the class. So, what section you need to read for that? Section number six. So five or six, so you read properly. You can understand whether articles can be done like that or not. Okay. So up to here, everyone understood the point clearly. Yeah. Last ten fifteen minutes. Though I really made you to come back to the normal. See, first thing what I want to convey is you should understand what is a table. If understood everyone in the class. So table if is a model article. Okay. Like that it can be. You can directly apply that. Now tell me what logic the partnership can speak now? It cannot do anything. Are you understanding or not? And the fun fact is, till today, even today, partnerships are always discouraged. Do you know why? Can I act? Can I pay as much remuneration as I want in a private in a partnership firm? Income tax act point of view, huh? Answer: Can I pay? Or cannot pay? Ah, there is a limit on payment of remuneration on a book profit basis. Hey. Book profit basis, so you need to calculate or not? First ninety percent, like that we need to pay or not? Can you pay whatever amount you want? Limit sir. In a company, there is a limit on remuneration. Ah, in a company, answer here. 
ప్రైవేట్ కంపెనీలను యూ ఓన్లీ సైడ్ ఇన్ ద మార్నింగ్ సెక్షన్ వన్ నైన్టీ సెవెన్ డాస్ నైట్ అప్లై టు ప్రైవేట్ కంపెనీ మీన్స్ కెన్ అయిపోయి వాట్ ఎవర్ అమౌంట్ ఐ వాంట్ రెమ్యూనరేషన్ that's called as a discouragement if you are a partnership i will i will not allow you but if you are a private company i will allow you so please convert now that's why partnerships are not there in india today previously if there are 100 partnerships today there are 10 partnerships only reduced to a severely down level most of them closed and started partnership private company some are converting their partnerships into private company who is having partnerships still today means chartered accountants even till today reason is also there for that reason is partnerships once again partnerships don't survive if money is involved chartered accountant firms like capital will be one lakh or one and a half lakh what is your capital your intelligence your wisdom is a capital for a partnership in a chartered accountants i'm talking about partnerships of movie business etc if you do not lakhs and crores are involved frauds will happen in partnerships very easily therefore no one is starting partnerships if you want to start partnership go as an llp better clear or else come as a company 100% secured business clear so therefore try to understand clearly why i am telling discussing this in 15 minutes is the most important concept table f what is the concept sir table f table f is also called as a model articles if you observe there just in case see there once Authority to convene a board meeting. Okay. Please read that. Director may. Please read. Director may summon at any time. Uh, next. Uh, manager or company secretary can also summon a meeting. But on the request given by the directors. Means tell me. Can a director call a meeting at any time he want? Yes. Company secretary and manager can call? Yes. But not Sumoto. They can call a meeting only on the request given by directors one of the mcq recently tested uh, mt pillar this mcq has been tested and this point was analyzed in table provisions where this question answer will be found table f table f 68th regulation and 67th regulation you can find this regulations will be there in table f clear everyone so table f provisions i think in most of the books it may not be there so somewhere you copy this who can convene the board meeting everyone who can convene board meeting directors can convene or manager or secretary company secretary uh, if requested by the director can a manager secretary directly have a power to call a meeting no okay now this is one point next you should only tell notice to various directors everyone answer do i require to give notice to alternate director or original director of both do you know the concept of alternate director who is an alternate director original director <laughs> went uh, outside india in that place who will come and sit uh, now notice of a board meeting should be given to original or alternate or both uh, both uh, original director uh, yes or no tell me alternate interested 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 who is an interested director who is having some concern financial or otherwise on the contract yes or no i may be interested in one resolution but not on others and moreover interest is one issue and giving a notice is another issue it is none of your business whether i have interest or i i have a, a i have a every right to know that a meeting is getting conducted or not therefore notice is required to be given to alternate or original both so tell me alternate original interested director last one a director is showing unwillingness he is telling i can't attend is there any mandate requirement to give a notice to him yes yes and yes clear everyone in the class whether he show unwillingness or not you have to give you don't give na later he will tell that i didn't receive a notice the meeting will become invalid you can't prove that he said that he is unwilling unnecessary risk why so send a notice so tell me notice must be given to whom in that all the directors who will come original alternate interested director showing unwillingness everyone will come okay next uh, main points i am going to discuss conditional notice i gave a notice and said meeting will be conducted if it rains on that day 
If it doesn't rain, what I have to do by coming there? A question will arise. That kind of conditionally contingent notices you should not give. Next. Ah. Failure to give a notice. What is the concept, sir? Failure to give a notice. Failure can be of two types. Number one, accidental failure. Second one will be deliberate failure. First one will be? Second one will be? If it is a accident, general meetings you might have heard in CA inter. Same point will be there for general meetings as well, provided if you read at that time. What they say is, there are two types of omissions of general meeting notice also. One is accidental omission. Second one is deliberately omitting. Accidental omission, meeting will not be invalid. Intentionally, if you omit the notice, then meeting may become invalid. Listening, ah, both the meetings, both becomes invalid. Whether you accidentally miss the notice, whether you deliberately miss the notice, if you miss giving a notice, meeting may become invalid. Reasons are very clear. Their number will be in thousands, hundreds, lakhs sometimes. Here, how many will be there? Maximum 15. Their, their decision is not so important. Here, every person's decision is important for the growth of a company. Which is more dangerous and serious meeting? Both is very dangerous here. General meeting, la, if you observe, quorum is not one-third. Reliance Industries Limited is having 36 lakh shareholders. One-third means 12 lakh will come. Are you understanding or not? Hey, answer here. Okay, you tell me, for Reliance Industries Limited, what is the required quorum? 30. 1000 or more members company should have a general meeting quorum as 30. Hey, understand now, what is the lawmaker's intention? General meeting, no one will attend. Are you understanding or not? General elections are conducted in Andhra Pradesh next year. Elections will be conducted or not? Not only in Andhra Pradesh, so many states it is getting conducted. People will be asked to go and vote or not? At that time, in Andhra Pradesh state I am talking about, voting percentage will be around 63, 64 like that voting percentage will happen. Means how many are not voting? Eligible voters are 36 percent are not voting. Last time 63, 37 percent didn't vote in elections or not? Are answer here. How the election will be conducted in India? Just half kilometer away from your house in one school meeting, uh, voting will be done. Yes or no? Even then our people are not going to vote. Company voting, how it will be? Company rest office is in Mumbai. I will be in Vijayawada. I will go by flight to vote and come back for my one share. Are you understanding the concept or not? Therefore, general meeting attendance is very low. Eagle dole kunter. So, no one will come here. Even today, voting is done by electronic means totally. Electronic voting system came then. Why I have to go to Mumbai? Only those who reside in Mumbai or those who is having a good stake in the company, like 30% stake or 20% stake, who want to talk in the company, they will go. But the board meeting is not like that because everyone is not allowed. Who is allowed to the board meeting? Only directors. And decisions taken are confidential and affecting the company stock market first. Therefore, it will be more serious meeting than general meeting. Therefore, law said in one of the case, they said that KMP versus Mahendra Agrawal case, court has given a final judgment saying that if accidental omission happened in board meeting also, it rendered the meeting as invalid. Clear or not? That means it is a duty of company secretary to ask every director, have you received your notice? Have you received your notice? Ask them clearly. Here, yeah. uh, this is the some important points that I want to stress on. Next, board powers. First, listen carefully. Both the powers, I will first cover important section. Later, I will come to generalized sections. First, three very important, three marks questions are there. These are those three. Please see the screen once. 181, read, read. 181, 182 and 183. Can you please explain me what is 181? Charity. 182, political contribution. 183, national defense fund. National Defense Fund. Entire answer I kept in these 10 points are there. 10, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 points are there. 10 into 3, 30 types of questions will be covered here now. Clear? Huh? See the screen once. So please seriously observe the points clearly. See there. See the screen. I will zoom it. No problem. First see there. Which section we are going to start? 
181 charitable contributions okay see here point number 1 what is governed by section 181 power to make everyone power to make now what is the second one power with whom who can make charity shareholders are board of directors are we are reading which chapter now board powers so no doubt these are all powers of the board day clear who can make charity who can make charity board only can make very good applicable to all companies whether public or private next one mode of exercise in the power I'll listen carefully in the act if they use the word board of directors means board of directors have to exercise that power either at a board meeting or even by RBC but sometimes they will clearly mention board of directors at a meeting of the board clearly they will tell at the time RBC is not possible understood or not understood or not the examples I will give political contributions board of directors at a meeting of the board loans to directors board of directors at a meeting of the board 186 186 loan and investment by company board of directors at a meeting of the board appointment of MD board of directors at a meeting of the board appointment of whole time KMP board of directors at a meeting of the board these are all possible through uh, RBC or not possible through RBC or not possible through RBC everyone understood the point or not answer here everyone uh, this is the issue okay see there point number one Charitable contributions should be made by whom? Again, you slow down your concept, please. First, everyone, tell me, come to the beginning, first one. What is section 181 talking about? I will show only the question. Tell me, power with whom? Section applicable to? Means whether public or? Very good. Tell me, mode of exercise in the power. Board will exercise, but board will exercise where? Board meeting or RPC? Next, uh, ceiling limit for board of directors to vote approval. Can board contribute whatever amount they want? Huh? No. To what extent? Average net profits of three immediately preceding financial years. Preceding everyone. 5% of average net profits of three immediately preceding financial years. Okay average represents a simple average so many people will get different different doubts i don't know why they will get a uh, one year uh, loss uh, one year profit uh, one year loss uh, can i make or not or i'll leave off all those unnecessary questions only one question i will an uh, answer i will give you re uh, remember that three years you will give information uh, add all the three net should be positive sorry i will tell you this way 5 crore profit, 3 crore loss, 1 crore profit. 5 minus 3 plus 1. How much it will be? Numerator is a positive number or not? You can make a charity. Which year loss, which year profit, don't care. Okay, next. Minus 5, minus 3, 3. Minus 5, minus 3, 3. What will happen now? Not minus y, you can't make. He didn't expect Chila. Why minus y? What you will do with that? You will apply 5% on minus y. He didn't expect Chila. Sir, tell me. Minus 5, minus 3, 1. Tell me now. Numerator is a negative or positive. Uh? Average will become negative or positive. Uh? You can't make charity. Understood the point very clearly, everyone in the class. Uh, now listen carefully. If company averagely, if it is making a loss, board also cannot make any contribution. <coughs> Shareholders' permission also cannot be given. Okay. So this is the point that I want to convey. Hope everyone understood the concept clearly, right? Next one. So tell me, what is the ceiling limit, by the way? 5% of average net profits of 3 immediately preceding financial years. Next one. Shareholders approval required or not required? Uh, yes. Required. When? If the board want to contribute beyond the ceiling limit, then it has to take whose approval? 
very good next answer my question clearly now contribution mode can i make contribution in kind answer yes it is possible can i make political contribution in kind no check only possible what only possible check check on any kind of bank payment only allowed in political contribution like that a point is not there in charities means you can also make a charity through the kind kind represent does not mean spoons to tables kind represents you can give shares of an equivalent amount monetarily you should monetize something or not yeah if we give blankets to clothes that will not become under this chapter first point now those charities you should not do are you understanding or not so chemulu chatalu is a contribution anaddu in telugu those will not quantify as a contribution under this chapter contribution should have some monetary quantification possibility okay instead of giving money sometimes you can give the shares of the company free of cost to them clear ah that is the meaning of kind kind does not mean spoons or tables okay so over next disclosure what disclosures are required no disclosures are separately mentioned in the section so don't write anything okay just write in a p and l account debit contributions you will write contributions and donations next one prohibition is there any prohibition on charitable contributions is there any cha prohibition on charitable contributions actually there is no prohibition every company can uh, make charity provided it is there in your moa moa la objects class will be there or not are answer in the objects class if the class gave you a power to make charities happily you can make the charitable contribution everyone clear huh? next consequence of contribution is there anything provided in the act no that's what i asked you previously also this particular section don't carry any penalty or punishment then which section we need to go 450 will get attracted what is 450 penalty hub whenever no penalty is provided under any section that section will come in place clear so summarize everything answer properly concept delta it's your turn to answer you are complete three sections in 5 minutes ah uh, concept delta contributions ah uh, power with whom board of director applicability all companies mode of exchange power board meeting or rbc ceiling limit 5% of average net profits of three immediately preceding financial years shareholder approval required when ceiling limit exceeds next contribution mode cash or in kind disclosures no separate disclosure prohibition no separate prohibition consequence of contravention section 450 will get attracted in this section no consequences given clear everyone in the class and prohibition is non bona fide charities what does it mean company is providing education facility to the employees children in its school free education given to whom employees children it is a welfare benefit given to your employees not a charity okay if you give to the public at large we can understand only for your employees you are giving it to encourage employment in your company or doing that again in the business element is involved are you answer here everyone tell me one question came in one of the old rtps i will ask that question try to answer uh, everyone now have a knowledge on csr auditing it is there audit it is there na ha ah, frs it is there sorry there is a standard guidance note is there something standard ah ah sorry okay namaste okay listen something is there with regard to csr kada ah, no answer i made csr contribution okay i also made this for example there 2% of net profit is the amount here 5% of the net profit is the amount now tell me i made 7% of net profit to a charity a charitable organization or some section eight company something i used clear everyone now my question is my net profit is 100 crores average like came into 2% into 7% i applied it came to 7 crore 7 crore i spent on i gave as a contribution to some charitable organizations etc etc everything i have done now answer can i take 2% into csr and 5% into 181 now
seven percent by using it. I will tell five percent towards the CSR. Sorry, one eighty one and two percent towards the CSR. Why you no? Know? Yeah. Did you understand my question clearly? How quantification can be done? This is to the CSR. This is towards one eighty one. Both are talking about same concept, or not? Everyone, so CSI and one eighty one is talking about same concept, or not? Hundred percent opposite concepts. So listen, one eighty one is a contribution. CSI is a spending. CSI is an expenditure. Yeah, one eighty one is a contribution. Dhanam adi karchu. Both are not same. Are you understand the concept, or not? so this is a donation that is a payment it's an expenditure it's a spending that's why you see section number 135 subsection number 5 class number a csr la they use the word ensure that the company spend they don't use contribute csr is not a contribution this is not a expense this is a contribution that is a expenditure both are Not same. Everyone, come to the logic clearly, yeah. <laughs> Next, second question to answer. Sir, listen. Two percent to three, that is two percent to five percent. Can you add both of them? No, that is a different section. This is a different section. Here, section to use this five percent is optional and mandatory. Yeah, charities, 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 optional and mandatory. Yeah. Answer, yeah. Their CSR spending of two percent per annum is optional and mandatory. Yeah, everyone, optional. Listen, this is the question, sir. Everyone said that, sir. Everyone said that means everyone is wrong. Listen carefully. After that, see the bare act and then put me a question. Tomorrow only you can tell. Okay, sir. Listen, if you see the CSR section, subsection five will tell. Every company referred to under subsection one of section one thirty five, the board of every company referred to in section number one thirty five subsection number one shall ensure that the company spends at least to two percent. Like that they will tell. Shall is for ensure, not for spending. Shall ensure that the company spends, not shall spend. That's why you know the guidance note on uh, CSR, another accounting standard, whatever you call. You can postpone your CSR for five years. Uh, then where is the question of spending every year mandatorily? Are you understanding the concept or not? Okay. So therefore, shall is applicable for spending. Ah, uh, shall is applicable for insurer. Uh. Means uh, every year two percent you have to transfer to CSR fund. Spending you can do in the future. Listening or not, everyone. So tell me, CSR spending every year is optional mandatory. Optional, but transferring to a CSR fund is mandatory every year. Clear? This is what said in the CSR bare provisions. Okay, we are having around thirteen listed companies today. For every company, we are doing CSR. So you need not question our integrity whether I am correct or not. Hundred percent, we are following the policies. CSR policy we are having. We are some members in some audit committee say. So therefore, you need not doubt on that particular concept whether CSR is optional mandatory. Now most of our companies we are having CSR only as a fund which we are using in another three four years at the time of preparation of financials for that third year or fourth year. So therefore, CSR every year spending is optional, but spending is mandatory. Every year spending is optional, but uh, ultimate spending will be. Mandatory, but here everything is optional. Where, where everything is optional? One eighty-one. Very good. Now we completed charities. Let us come to political. Now you should only answer same question. Say change the answer sentence. Concept dealt. Please, sir, everyone participate. Concept dealt. Political contributions. Power with whom? Applicability. Uh, applicability 
all companies except government companies companies which are in existence for less than 3 financial years very good next mode of exercising the power only at a board meeting not by next ceiling for ceiling limit for the board of directors sumoto approval tell me now ceiling limit is there any ceiling limit no ceiling every rupee both can make clear everyone when ceiling limit is not there beyond the ceiling within ceiling concept doesn't arise therefore shareholders approval required huh? not required huh? concept is not there understood or not everyone up to here next contribution mode only by way of uh, account to pay check or a account to pay bank draft or electronic clearance system net banking all these things nift rtgs ecs okay like that you can use electronic system of payment and you can make the payments okay next and every app today we are using or having everything inside it including phone pay google pay all those you can make lic payments directly using phone pay now by giving the lic number like that electoral trusts also are included into phone pay today because elections are there in the next year na? throughout india i am talking about most of the states elections are there na? and they are opening all electoral trust accounts also through phone pay if you want to transfer to any party, a local party, international party, you can transfer directly using phone pay. Like how you are transferring LIC payments. SIP came to phone pay. SIP, SIP. SBA SIP, UTA SIPs are added to phone pay. Separately, you need not open a website of SBA and pay. You just give your reference number, pay. That's all paid directly to SBA. Like that, now political parties are accepting political contributions for the next year. If you want, you can make. No. You want to make political contributions, huh? you are prohibited. So don't make. Huh? So the point is, which companies are strictly prohibited? Logic is very clear. Government companies are companies in which not less than 51% of the paid up share capital is held by central government or state government are a combination of central and state. That means who will have influence? If you allow government company to give contribution, what will happen? Swaha. Swaha. Net profits. Swaha. So, therefore, law also have said that who cannot make? Number one, government companies. Second, companies which are in existence were less than you started a three years, two years before or three years before, not even three years completed. You are so excited to make the contributions to political parties as if you are getting exorbitant profits in your company. That means your company is indirect political party therefore since political party if it accepts it, it will attract other section you started company who will divert its funds to the company first three years you are not allowed everyone understood the point clearly or not right next disclosures do i need to put any disclosures yes p and l account don't write anything just to tell political contributions and amount prohibition you should only tell prohibition prohibition already we said now who is prohibited Government company, companies which are in existence for less than three years. Okay. So that's what I have written also here. Government company and company less than three financial. Consequences of contravention. It is there or not there? Don't apply 450 always. Who is telling 450? For everything you write 450. Eh? In uh, SEBI also you write 450. So, companies act like any provision of penalty as no, don't write 450. So, don't write like that. There is a penalty and punishment for this. This is a punishment. Imprisonment? Up to, what do you mean by up to 6 months? And a maximum 6 months or minimum 6 months? Ara and da. Dangerous or not dangerous? Sir? Very, very dangerous. These are called as non-compoundable offenses. Which one? Non-compoundable offenses. In SEBI Act, I will tell in detail about what are these non-compoundable offenses. So PMLA and SEBI will come now. At the time, we can see the real funda behind this. Okay, non-compoundable offenses. Non-compoundable offenses means what? You can't convert these. Uh, what I, meaning I will tell in FEMA and uh, SEBI. So, okay. Imprisonment, six months. I will not leave you. Another bumper offer is there. Plus, uh, fine. Up to how much? Uh, five times amount contributed in 
contravention example i will tell you government company canna cannot two years my company life canna cannot i made 5 lakh now what is my pen might is my fine that can be levied 5 into 5 25 lakhs okay ha huh? ha huh? and directors will be levied with how many months of imprisonment uh, six months happy life uh, so six months plus 25 25 is only fine already you donated 5 lakhs na huh? anyway they will not save you so therefore there five gone here 25 gone you gone inside so balance so therefore never give political contributions in contravention so now summarize everything please tell me concept at fast political contribution next power with whom applicability mode of exercise in the power only both the rbc or both the very good ceiling shareholders approval contribution mode only cash but cash does not mean currency and so many people will tell the same thing cash means it's not currency currency is different cash is sir cash in hand cash at bank means what cash means it can be electronic cash or a physical cash electronic cash represents checks drafts etc clear so many people are having a wrong notion cash means 100 rupee note those are called as currency those are not cash okay so therefore know the difference between both of them said so, okay tell me cash means no no bank some people are telling that's why adi paytm chei so how coincidentally you got a message eh? your ringtone na eh? you got that message your ringtone na bro okay so okay listen carefully the point is tell me about uh, national defense fund now tell me concept dealt contribution towards national defense fund or any other fund related to the defense not just the name national defense fund only for that you should be no any fund created for the purpose of national defense pulwama attack happened na for the matters of pulwama government of india announced that you can make a contribution for their uh, fund so that is also for national defense only uh, why i am telling this is they need not use the name national defense fund then only i should make no either national defense fund or any fund for the benefit of national defense okay next uh, power with whom power with whom either board of directors or delegated persons board if delegate person power to anyone that person or even shareholders in a general meeting can also authorize that persons okay next uh, applicability to which company defense yeah they will allow outright they will allow okay tell me applicability mode of exercise in the power either board meeting or rbc or delegation anything you can do read the answer first one power to contribute to national defense fund who can board or delegated authority or general meeting anyone so applicability to who can take who can take a decision board where either at board meeting or at an rbc or by a delegation okay next mm, ceiling limit is there any ceiling limit on a national defense fund contribution no shareholders approval required not required not required. contribution mode cash or in kind next disclosures P and L just to disclose the amount of national defence fund. Prohibition? Is there any prohibition, sir? No, it overrides M O A A O A also. Uh, this is one important observation. One question was asked, May 2019 question. Number? Which year? May. Which attempt? 2019 May. Four marks question was tested on this area. Surprising. Six marks question. Sorry. Three questions are asked. Two marks or two marks or two marks. One two marks is on uh, charity. One two marks is on politics. One two marks is on NDF. what they asked is mvoy and avoy of a company is clearly telling that you cannot contribute to ndf but still company want to contribute can it this is the only section in entire companies act which will override act itself clear or not everyone because what is involved in the answer national defense therefore even if my mvoy says no 
I can still make a contribution to the National Defense Fund. Can I do like that for political contribution and charity? You cannot make. Therefore, this will override whom? At the memorandum, articles, section 181, 182, everyone it will uh, override. What do you mean by overriding 181? Like 181, here there are no ceiling limits. Clear? Yeah. Like 182, there are no prohibitions. So 183 section is a free flown section. Therefore, 183 doesn't have any strings attached, no prohibitions, no restrictions. Happily, you can make whatever amount you want. Okay. Now, I want every one of you summarize. I want three, three answers for each question I ask you now. Tell me now, point by point. Concept delete. First one. Are I revise properly? Are you don't get opportunity again? Please tell me what is the concept delta? Charitable contribution. 182. 183. Very good. Power with whom in the first case? Second case, board of directors. Third case, board of directors or any authority delegated. Next. Okay, next. Applicability? Second section? Third section? Sorry, second section, all companies except less than three years. Uh, last? Very good. Mode of exercise in the power? Board or RBC? Board or RBC? Only board or? Only board meeting. And last one? Board meeting or RBC or even you can delegate. Next one. Ceiling limit? 5% of average net profits of three immediately preceding financial year. Second, third, no ceiling. Shareholders approval required? Uh, yes, if ceiling limit exceeds. Second and third, no shareholders approval. Contribution more? Cash or kind? Cash, cash or kind. Disclosures? No. Huh? I didn't understand. Political contributions, cash. Uh, accord. Just <laughs> cash does not mean currency. Cash means cash. Cash equal and everything. Checks. You are testing me. Whether I remember or not. So, just don't tell you that. I will tell you that. Cash does not mean currency. Cash means what? Cash, cash equivalent payments like checks, account paycheck, bank drafts, all these will be included. When I say cash, cash includes all this. Thank you, madam. So, therefore, up to here, everyone understood uh, contribution mode also. Disclosures? No. Second, third, P and L disclosure. Prohibitions are there in first case. Second, yes, what are those? Okay, next. Is there any prohibition on NDF? No. Consequence of contravention? First case, la? consequences are there. Ha? No consequence. Second case? Yes, in that section. Fine of, sorry, first imprisonment of, and fine of up to five times amount contributed in contravention. And last case? No fine. Section 450 will get applied. This is all about the next set of three sections that we need to understand. Very, very important. 180, 181, and, sorry, 181, 182, and 183. Up to here, everyone understood the point clearly. Yeah. Next. See here. See there. What is the next concept, sir? Board powers. Board powers. Here there are five important sections that we need to read now. Okay. So, first one is 179. Next one, 180. Next one, 185. 186. 188. 184. Six sections are there. Six sections, are definitely one question will come in exam. No doubt to take it for granted. No to date to time today. Compulsory one question will be there. In what section, sir? 179, 180, 185, 186, 188, 184. From these six sections set, six marks or eight marks question, 100% will come in exam. Okay? Sorry. In that, first, let me first complete the first two, what I said. What are the first two? 179 and 180. Concentrate properly. Please see the screen. Just 
10 minutes, 10 minutes, each concept can get completed because you are already aware of these concepts, not so new like managerial personnel. Okay, listen. Sir, this 30 marks are crucial for you in exam. Please don't leave. MCQs, mandatory question. Everywhere these three chapters only will come. So, the heart and uh, soul of the entire subject will be these three. So, please don't leave them. So, listen carefully. Point number one. General powers of the board of directors. What will be there inside? First, let me explain the full chart. So, this chart will be helpful to understand the complete section number 179. 179 will be governed through this particular section. Sorry. Let me first explain what is there. What board can do will be discussed in this section. What board can do? What board of directors can do is what discussed in this section. Clear? Simply the section tell that board of directors are entitled to do whatever the company can do. Whatever. Company is an artificial person, a natural person. Can it do anything on its own? Who should do on its behalf? Ah, that's why doubt has come. What board can do? Whatever company can do. Then what company can do? Whatever is there in the memorandum of association. Memorandum of Therefore, what board can do? Conclusion. Whatever company can do. What company can do? Whatever is there in the memorandum objects clause. Then what board can do? Whatever is there in the objects clause of a memorandum. A equal to B. B equal to C. Fantastic. Now answer now. Tell me what board can do? What company can do? Whatever is there in the articles and memorandum, or memorandum and articles. Then what board can do? If a board does anything beyond memorandum and articles, it's called as ultra wires. It's called as a ultra wires. Okay, sir. Anyway, one point over. So first, see there. Read. What board can do? Board of directors of a company uh, shall be entitled to exercise. All such powers and shall be entitled to do all such acts and things as the company is authorized to exercise and do. Okay. So, board can do whatever the company can exercise and do. But their powers are not ultimately given. When they are exercising the powers, they shall be subjected to the following. See here. Read. Second one. While exercising such powers while exercising or doing such acts or things the board of company shall be subjected to five things number one act MOA AOA agreement resolution resolutions are two types again resolution passed by shareholders in a general meeting resolution passed by board of directors now everyone answer this question point number one what board can do but more legally you write what board can do they can exercise all such powers. They can do all such acts and things. As who can do? Company can do. They can do whatever company can do. Means they cannot do in whatever way they want. They can do whatever company can do. But not in the way they want. The way will be given by five things. First, act, MOA, AOA, internal agreements, resolutions passed. Everyone understood the concept clearly. Everyone. Now tell me, board can do whatever the company can do or not? In company, two types of persons are there. Board to shareholders. Company is a combination of only shareholders, only board, both are. I can do whatever company can do means I can do what shareholders can do also. Therefore, which should not be done. Subsection number 1. Proviso 2 in section number 179 says that board can do whatever company can do does not mean he can do what shareholders can do. Therefore, they clearly mentioned in second proviso saying that the board of directors of the company shall not be entitled to exercise, shall not be empowered to do what shareholders can do in the company. Means board of directors what they can do? What board can do? Whatever company can do. That does not mean you can take the shareholders powers. Who said that? Second proviso to section number 179. Please read that sir. Important points. So read this. What board cannot do? See the screen. What board cannot do? Board of directors of a company 
shall not be entitled to exercise all such powers shall not do such acts or things uh, which is required to be done by general meeting three points we learned now i will repeat three points after that you have to repeat point number 1 board of directors shall be entitled to exercise all such powers entitled to do all such acts and things as who can do company can do perfect while exercising those acts and powers they shall be subjected to five things act moa aoa agreement resolution passed by company in a general meeting or by the board of directors understood everyone next they cannot exercise what powers shareholders powers in a general meeting everyone understood the point huh? uh, next after that tell me as we already read while exercising such powers and do, uh, doing such acts or things board shall be subjected to five things or not what is the fifth one fifth one resolutions that means resolution passed by company in a general meeting or by the board of directors that means can shareholders pass a resolution restricting the board powers example company can borrow money by its memorandum objects clause by the memorandum objects clause what company can do company can borrow money but how much board can borrow no one said in the memorandum memorandum will only tell what company can do articles will tell how company can do clear everyone what is defined in moa how is defined in so both are not same again both are two different documents here. okay different different discussions will be made in both the documents so please concentrate sir slowly you are uh, what to say level of understanding is coming down please important listen for your sake point number 1 first one everyone understood what the board can do second one everyone understood what the board cannot do understood ha huh? now question can shareholders restrict the powers of the board answer board is having power to borrow money can shareholders pass a resolution putting limit on that they can i will give you an example tell me yes or no Bo shareholders passed a resolution saying that board can borrow but only up to 10 lakhs or 10 crores beyond the 10 crores shareholders permission is required like that can they write answer here yeah. now tell me who is borrowing board they borrowing even now but there is a restrictions on their powers everyone understood ah so shareholders can they pass a resolution and say that we will borrow on behalf of company no because in this case they are not restricted in the powers they are taking the powers do you understand my point everyone so tell me can shareholders regulate the powers of the board of directors they can take away the powers of board of directors or they can only restrict the powers of the board of directors or what they cannot do what they cannot do they cannot take away the powers of the board what they can maximum do they can only restrict the powers of the board clear everyone restrictions will be kept by the shareholders through which meeting answer now listen what is the date today 3rd of the march 3rd march meeting conducted you are all the shareholders you kept a limit that up to 5 crores board can themselves borrow beyond 5 crores special resolution is required like that you passed a resolution which date you passed a resolution answer here yeah. 24th feb okay company board of director themselves borrowed 8 crore rupee money will that get affected because of this resolution answer why whenever regulations are put on the powers of the board they will take effect prospectively and not retrospectively means prior prior acts done will get invalidated or will not get invalidated that's what said in subsection number 2 this is the point please read what gm can do me impose they can take the board powers or they can only impose restrictions on board powers impose the restrictions on the board powers regulations made by company in general meeting shall invalidate the prior acts shall not invalidate prior acts shall not invalidate the prior acts of the board of directors everyone understood the point clearly yeah? next after that important 5 by 5 minutes we will close this particular area 
first lesson carefully this section will be completed concentrate to, to some extent 5 minutes only lesson up to here everyone understood huh? there are 10 powers where rbc is not possible means only 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 that's all what is not permitted is not permitted in how many cases 10 very important cases those 10 we are going to read now please read the first five first one make calls on shares everyone repeat first one second one authorized by back next one issue of securities next one borrow money next one invest funds of company next grant loans give guarantee next diversify the business next approve annual financial statement next approve merger amalgamation and takeovers okay now tell me five six keep it aside we will understand later first tell me how many are there totally actually 10 i merged them into nine okay so 10 are making calls on shares authorization of webback issue of security borrow money invest funds of the company grant loans give guarantees of providing the securities in connection with the new approved financial statement to approve the diversify the business approve major amalgamation and approve the takeovers and controlling stakes in a company and the cape clause will be talking about any other power as may be prescribed read right with rule number three two which will be talking about political contributions power to appoint and remove the camp and power to appoint internal auditors this is also in the original companies act like they said okay 179 subsection number a to subsection number uh, subsection number 3 clause a to clause k 11 clauses totally 10 clauses directly they will tell 11th clause is linked to rule number 3 okay so first what is the first one making calls on making calls on authorization of issue borrow invest grant loans give guarantee provide security in connection with a loan approve financial statements diversification of business mergers amalgamations takeovers controlling states all those things will come first tell me these are all unique decisions are routine decisions are calls on shares buyback all these happen every day in our routine activity yeah? therefore they thought that let not take them to rbc they should mandatorily go only through what both the meeting point number one over however if you observe all the 10 in this 10 some are relatively frequent i'm not telling they will happen every day clear huh? what are relatively frequent you tell i will round off borrow money hmm invest funds grant loans these three are when compared to buyback calls more frequently they happen in a company may not happen every day but happens maybe once in every six seven months or not in the same year everyone in the class therefore which are not frequent but compared to the others these three are relatively frequent in a company or not therefore exception has been given to the three points what they said is grant sorry uh, borrow money, invest funds, grant loans, these three powers of the board can be delegated, can be, means all the times you need not come to the board meeting, all the times you need not come to the board meetings, you can also tackle these issues using the delegation to five persons, any of the five, so you are listening or not, I don't know, my responsibility is to make you understand. Please repeat once. Tell me how many powers are totally there. Tell me four, five, six in that. Grant loan, give guarantee, provide any security. These three, if you do, these are frequent, huh? comparatively frequent. Huh? To approve these, generally what meeting is required? But there is an exception. What is the exception? What is the exception? Delegation. Delegation will, will provide relief from what? Listen sir, please. Delegation will provide relief from what? Everyone. Delegation will provide relief from what? Therefore, that delegation should be made by board meeting only. 
last time na they are coming so therefore board meeting ge should tell that don't come to me from the next time you go to any of the five committee of directors number 1 or managing director or manager or principal officer of a company directors or principal officer of a branch office in case of branch powers okay sorry tell me first tell me how many powers can be delegated answer number 1 number 2 number 3 these three powers can be exercised either by the at a or they can also delegate to whom any of the five persons first one committee of directors managing director principal officer of a company principal officer of a branch office all powers we can delegate uh, only uh, three powers are uh. remaining above there are another uh, four are there or three are there below there are another three four are there those can be delegated or cannot be delegated uh. one last question for you before we uh, close this point number one tell me what is the first power uh, what is the power that can be delegated borrow money uh, next one the next one Ah, uh, what is the fourth power and sixth power? Fourth power is what? Borrow. Sixth power is what? Rent law. These two are frequent or relatively frequent. Ah, uh. very very frequent in case of banking company. Therefore, for banking company, these two are exempted again. Clear or not? Everyone in the class. For whom? Are for normal company, these are relatively frequent. But for a banking company, every second they will do that. Every second, if you ask for board approval, means it will become board meetings India Limited. They have to change the name from SBI to board meetings India Limited. What you will do in your company will pass board meetings. When every time, what is happening in a board branch of a particular bank? Board meetings are conducted. Keep silent. When it will end, it will not end. So banking hours, the board meetings will be conducted. Banking transactions will stop like that. It will be in reality. So therefore, tell me, in case of a banking company, fourth point to sixth point to villa will not apply. Yeah. That's why a proviso has been inserted below section number one hundred seventy-nine, subsection number three. This is the end of section number one hundred seventy-nine. But this is not the moment where which makes us happy. Answer the points clearly. Just tell me first point. Point number one. What both can do? whatever a uh, company can do next uh, number 2 okay both can do over next issue after that tell me uh, what both cannot do <laughs> sentence you have to write in exam na? the board of directors of the company shall not be entitled to exercise such powers or shall not do such acts uh, which can be done by whom shareholders in a general meeting shareholders in a general meeting next next after that can shareholders put restrictions on board powers can they take the board powers can they restrict the? they can restrict the board powers everyone understood the concept clearly and next one after that uh, uh, tell me what powers cannot be exercised in a rbc how many are there in that how many can be delegated number 1 these three can be rbc a delegation a delegation to whom committee of directors managing director manager principal officer of a company principal officer of a branch office all powers are only three powers are 4 5 6 6 clause if you see 179 subsection 3 clause e clause d clause e clause f very good next uh delegation banking company this section will apply will not apply will apply clause number d clause number f only does not apply are if you make calls on shares anyway the sbi will make calls every day na and every day it will go for public issue ha? it will is public issues india limited ha? answer here if you say yes buy back for sbi is every day task ha? Every day, SBI will buy back its shares, sir. Huh? Then, 
the mining sections are uh, as unique like any other company also to SBI. SBI means I mean to say a banking company. For a banking company which is a everyday business, borrowing and lending the money will become everyday business. Therefore, from that we have given exemption from this section. Everyone understood the point or not? Okay, next. 180 section. 180. Simple section only, some level of concentration, dead easy. Five minutes, I will close. See here, 180 section talks of what? 180, please, please listen. 180 section will be talking about powers of the board that can be exercised only by passing special resolution. Means, who will exercise the powers? Board will exercise, but before exercising the powers under this section, first they have to take whose permission? N not just normal permission, by passing initial resolution. Answer. Four powers are there. How many powers are there, sir? Four power. Power number one. To sell or lease undertaking. To sell or lease the undertaking is a first power. Second power is to invest the compensation received on mergers and amalgamation number three borrow money number four will be to remit or give time i will explain each and every concept in detail please listen carefully hardly takes max five to ten minutes to complete of please show some importance on this section important for exams as well point number one tell me this is a section which is talking about powers are restrictions on powers are this section is talking about shareholders power or board power. But both can exercise these powers only by passing A. Ah, now tell me one by one, point number one, how many powers are there? Number one, to sell, lease or dispose of. What they are disposing? Undertaking. First question number one, what is a undertaking? See here. Something will be qualified as an undertaking. If it satisfies any of the two conditions, either you should satisfy the investment angle or you should satisfy the income angle. From the investment point of view, how much you have invested on that particular undertaking? More than, everyone repeat, more than 20% of the net worth is involved in a undertaking. Then it will qualify as an undertaking under this section. Clear or not everyone? There is a factory. My net worth is 50 crore. In that factory I have invested. Say for example 20 crore. Now will that factory be called as an undertaking or not? 20 by 50 will be more than 20% or not everyone? Answer. So therefore that will qualify as a undertaking. So tell me what is the first angle in which we need to see? Investment. How much investment I should put in that? How much? Uh? More than a, not, not less than a, more than 20% of the net worth should be invested in that asset. Then I will call that asset as a undertaking. Sir, total net worth is 50, sir. Only 7 crores have been invested there. More than 20, uh? not more than 20. Uh? Answer. Now will that be called as an undertaking? Yes, if it satisfy income condition. Investment point of view, you couldn't satisfy. At least satisfy through which condition? Income condition. Income generated from the undertaking should be. Uh, here not more than 20. Here it is 20 or more than 20 of total income of the company during the preceding financial year. Now you should only answer what is an undertaking. How many checkings I need to do? Number one, investment angle. Number two, Income angle from investment angle 20 percent of more than 20 percent of should be invested or from income angle 20 or more than 20 percent of the total income should generate from that asset then I will call it as an undertaking though investment angle is not satisfied clear everyone now tell me factory is there net worth 100 crores I invested 30 crores in that factory now tell me that factory is qualified as an undertaking or not. Answer. Very good. Now I am selling some of the part of that factory. 
okay some machinery inside the factory i am trying to sell now will the section gets attracted or not it depends next question is you should either sell entire whole of the factory or substantially the whole what is substantial 20% is called as substantial now listen what is the factory investment what is the net worth 100 crore what is the net worth in my example 100 crore okay what is the uh, amount of investment made in the factory 30 crore listening everyone it is an undertaking or not an undertaking now in the factory i am selling 50% of the factory now section gets attracted or not yes because to attract a section first there must be undertaking you should not just sell peanuts you should sell either whole of the undertaking or substantial whole of the undertaking substantial means how much percent now i'll ask a numerical question answer i go to the next point point number 1 tell me how what i am trying to sell when something is called as an undertaking investment should be how much ha uh, more than 20% of the net worth income 20 or more than 20% of total income both conditions should be satisfied any one very good second point point number 2 it is an undertaking that's all uh. if i sell peanuts in that undertaking also section gets attracted uh, no once it is an undertaking then go for whether substantial portion is sold or not what is substantial answer here 20 and now tell me numericals i will give net worth 100 investment 30 in that factory i am selling 10% section gets attracted or not attracted it is an undertaking or not an undertaking it is an undertaking but do not apply this section because you are not selling whole of the factory you are not even selling the substantially the whole section don't get attracted though it is an undertaking everyone understood the point or not that's all this is a point second power invest otherwise in trust security simply company listening everyone at the time of amalgamation purchase consideration will be paid or not if to our company purchase consideration is received how you can utilize that purchase consideration received you can use for any purpose permission of shareholders is required except in one case i received purchase consideration compensation we call na who received compensation our company received a compens our company is an investor we received a compensation one company can invest in another company or not x can invest in y or not y is taken over by z who invested in what first one everyone come in a sequence x invested in y is taken over by so who should pay purchase consideration ha huh? z to whom shareholders of y in that shareholders of y who is one of the shareholder like that x received what ha ah, that what he want to tell that purchase consideration you receive how you are utilizing it if you are investing that amount in a trust security means risk free securities no permission required because the money is in safe hands clear or not everyone if you invest in any place other than trust securities special resolution is required what resolution is required sir special resolution is required understood or not everyone tell me what i received everyone i am not satisfied what is what you received at the time of who received company received how it is going to use it if i invest in trust securities section gets attracted or not attracted if i am doing anything other than that immediately what is required special resolution is required third one borrow borrowings okay very important to borrow money see here i will write an equation see here to borrow money means proposed borrowings are already existing borrowings listen to my language here yeah. to borrow money proposed uh, already existing uh. okay see here to borrow money where the money to be borrowed to be borrowed means proposed uh, already uh. proposed together with means plus money already borrowed means existing a uh, proposed uh. will exceed will exceed uh. 
aggregate of uh, paid up share capital plus securities premium apart from temporary loans if this particular point is satisfied it attracts section 180 subsection 1 clause number c clause number c so tell me now two first one tell me now proposed borrowing space how to write already borrowed to be borrowed plus means plus means what together with uh, next uh, existing means money ex uh, proposed borrowed already borrowed will will uh, aggregate of simply the logic of the section is if uh, debt equity ratio is crossing 1 is to 1 special resolution is required in FM language if the debt equity ratio is crossing what limit sir 1 is to 1 what is required special resolution is very much required everyone clear to the point or not answer tell me the equation now tell me don't like this don't like this tell in a law language only tell me to borrow money where the money to be borrowed together with the money already borrowed will exceed aggregate of paid up share capital free reserves securities premium in this existing or proposed temporary loans you should not include what loans mark this in brain get it taste in your brain exam this question only will come temporary loans should be included should not be a what is a temporary loan temporary loan is a loan which will be repaid within a period of six months or on demand or on that means either you will repay on either you will repay on demand or you will repay on six months period you will repay those are called as those are called as i entered into agreement with a bank i asked for a loan which will be paid in five months period paid in period i took the loan I purchased a plant and machinery. Now tell me, is this a temporary loan or not? No. Capital expenditure, if you use, though it is for six months, it cannot be considered as a temporary loan. This is a question asked in 2019 May attempt. You can check whether it is asked or not. This is a question they tested. Plant and machinery is a revenue expenditure, capital expenditure, capital expenditure. Temporary loan is for working capital purposes. Loan, uh, long term loans are working capital. Then why you are using for that? If you use working capital loans for capital purposes, I will not treat it as a temporary loan, though it is for six months. Understood the point or not, everyone? Very, very important. Get it pasted in your brain. Get it printed. So tell me now, what is a temporary loan? Loans repayable on demand or loans repayable within a period of six months. But does not include temporary loans. Okay, sorry. Temp uh, uh, does not include any expenditure in which nature capital nature if you use that will not be treated as a uh, treated as a that's all everyone understood the concept clearly done next issue after that this point also please remember whenever you borrow board of directors should mention clearly in the resolution what is the maximum amount they want to borrow example listen paid up share i will write there through numbers you can understand it much better paid up share capital free reserves and uh, securities premium listening everyone uh, paid up capital 100 crore free reserve 20 crore securities premium 30 crore tell me what is the ceiling limit now answer here yeah. existing borrowings of the company means already the borrowings in the company existing borrowings of the company are say for example 120 crore 100 100 okay now listen till how much i can borrow without shareholders see the screen and tell you how much is the ceiling 150 how much is the existing still how much i can borrow without permission answer but board of directors said that we want to borrow lot of money therefore they said that we want to borrow 
in excess of 150 crores they said very clearly not within 150 they want to borrow in excess of uh, is it valid or not 100 percent invalid beyond 150 you want to borrow means you can even go to 500 crores 600 crores 1000 crores also clearly tell how much beyond 150 that means the board of directors in the resolution should clearly mention the maximum amount up to which the board want to borrow simply to tell how much is the existing borrowing huh? how much a cushion is there still I want to borrow 50 crore how I have to tell as a board member now in the resolution the board of directors want to borrow 20 crores in excess of ceiling like that I should tell clearly if I don't tell So listen, so just you should not tell that I want to borrow beyond 150, you should tell that I want to borrow 20 crores above 150, you should clearly mention the maximum amount or else the resolution will become void. This is not my voice, this is said in 180 subsection number 2, 180 subsection 2 will clearly mention this point, if you want you can check later, okay, up to here everyone understood or not. How many powers we completed now? Three. First one, sell, lease, otherwise dispose of. Summarize everything. I don't want any other thing. Please tell what is an undertaking. How many angles we have to divide? Number one, investment. Number two, income. Investment should be more than 20% of net worth. Income, 20% or more than 20% of the total income. Very good. Second one, I sold a small amount of undertaking. Attracted, huh? you should sell either full undertaking or substantial undertaking substantial undertaking means how much part minimum 20 percent part you need to sell very good next the second one what is the second power invest uh, first to tell me company has received as a result of that amount i want to pay salary required or not required power shareholders permission required or not required required i want to pay creditors purchase plant and machinery Invest in Reliance Industry shares, Reliance in RBI bonds, not required because it comes under risk-free trust securities. Clear everyone in the class. Next, uh, borrow. Tell me, how do we to borrow money? Where? Money to be borrowed, together with money already borrowed, will exceed aggregate of paid up share capital, free reserves, securities premium, but not including temporary loans temporary loans means what loan repayable on demand or loan repayable within a period of six months but do not include whatever the loan you use it for capital expenditure fantastic next one to remit or give time for any debt due from a director means director has already incurred debt with the company you want to extend the terms okay for example credit period is only two months he is asking for extra credit special resolution has to be passed he is asking please waive everything special resolution has to be passed so no benefit should come to the directors without the permission of shareholders with this 182 sorry 180 is also completed okay now so tomorrow session we will continue with this first two three hours i will complete all these areas i guarantee you at whatever the time may be tomorrow we will be completing all core areas of companies act because the biggest areas first i complete now my birthday will be completed small small chapters nclt half an hour special codes so 45 minutes like that we can complete i am the guarantee substantial more than what you expect will complete in the tomorrow session yeah let me complete these big areas first 30 marks next to 40 marks of the syllabus just like a cakewalk you can complete in company side tomorrow session please don't get absent three days a session ah, listen sir once after the company's sorry once after the law sfm also will start once this is completed 
I guarantee you that from the beginning till the end, I start with uh, first. Uh, it will be started with the bond valuation chapter, where I promise you that definitely every single problem or every single formula will be analyzed, explained. Everything I will analyze in a clear terms. If you are really interested to solve those problems in the class, the best 120 problems I have selected from all the chapters put together, including the swaps and uh, currency options and currency futures. Simply to tell, derivatives, I mean, last attempt to paper was a DTC paper for SFM. For that reason, and moreover, Forex is not tested anywhere. Derivatives not tested anywhere. Moreover, they didn't test properly also on the transactions like currency options, currency futures, okay, OTC derivatives, they didn't touch that properly. Substantially, the question paper came from equity valuation more. Portfolios came for 20. Portfolio is a general trade, sir. Portfolio minimum 15, 20 marks. Every attempt it will come. Sir, listen carefully. Therefore, this time, expected areas will be, paper will be moderately hard in group number one. Because last time was a very easy paper, direct questions. So therefore, definitely he will try to put some points inside that. Therefore, in that outset, first we will start with the questions which are not tested so much in the past exam. In that, I expected some dangerous areas in the last item for SFM, but they didn't come. One of the concept is bond convexity. I really expected that and I also made a YouTube video also on that the day before examination, but it didn't come. It really hurted me. Why it is not coming? Why he is not giving? Dangerous area. Yeah. No one is doing that the bond convexity. It has to come. But they didn't give. Next one, bond immunization strategies. Those also, normally 100 rupees divided between two bonds they are giving. What if the market yield changes? They are not asking a question on that. That area also, I made one uh, point. That also didn't come. It hurted again. Next, Forex, one day before examination for six hours, I sat from evening 8 o'clock to morning 2 o'clock and I have done full Forex video lectures before the day before exam. I thought that he will ask questions like anything. He didn't touch Forex. It again hurted me. Okay, so small question, have five marks to three marks question again. Okay. But that is not the range of Forex. Forex means people should not sit in class. So, like that, you should ask. It really hurt it again. Therefore, okay, no problem. But try to understand. Uh, in uh, SFM revision as well, logics will not be missed. It is not like a question answer type format of a class where you will be doing, I will be writing the answers. No. Starting from the bond violation, basic bond calculation. Simply to tell, in one day, I will release you the complete schedule as to what are the concepts you are going to cover. To summarize everything, just to understand, you can inform your friends, therefore, number one, for example, if you take a bond valuation chapter, what problems I compiled is basic bond valuation, also called as a plain vanilla bond. Okay? One second, sir. Let me, let me talk. Basic bond valuation like bonds, uh, plain vanilla bonds. Second one, after the plain vanilla bond, a semi-annual coupon bond, perpetual bond, Deep discounting bonds, zero coupon bonds, these are all five types of bonds which are done on the problems on valuation. Valuation of a plain bond, valuation of a semi annual coupon bond, valuation of a perpetual bond, valuation of a deep discounting bond, valuation of a zero coupon bond. Over with the logic, with understanding. Regular classes, if I do 100 pro 60 problems on that, in a crash session, each model I will do two problems. Okay. Next issue. Best problems are selected from the study material RTPC, MTC in the past. Along with this attempt, RTP will come in the meanwhile. Yesterday, uh, IPCC was released. Maximum released a final. Final not released, I am not sure. Yesterday, IPCC was released. Uh, CA Inter has been released. I hope that it will come by the time we start. If that also come, that one question from each chapter also we will do. Next listen. Bond violation, five topics, five problems. Done. Next problem. YTM, there are two kinds of YTM concepts are there. YTM, realized YTM. Two YTMs are there. YTMs using CAGR model. YTM with a basic bond model. Two problems I kept. One with the tax, one without taxation. With the tax, if it comes out to do, without taxation. 
both we will do using approximation model as well as accurate model using IRR. What examiner will expect from you? Next after that, this is YTM realized YTM. Next after this, next point what we are going to cover is in the bond relation chapter is bond immunization strategy, one of the finest models in the economy. How insurance companies will do the bond immunization? What is immunization concept? How to understand? One old study map question I have taken, which explains the whole idea behind the concept of bond immunization. After immunization strategy, bond convexity. How to calculate the yield change using bond convexity? Using its derivation. Volatility definition is there, the duration and volatility. What is a duration? Weighted average duration. What is a volatility? Duration by 1 plus y. The real meaning behind what is the d by 1 plus y? How to interpret that? How to uh, include this formula using convexity? And what is the link between both of them? We can understand in a clear sense using that particular model. In class, we will also draw a graph to understand really how examination questions can come on convexity. Three types of questions we will do. General convexity problem, yield change convexity, and price change convexity. Three kinds of convexity questions you can ask in exam. Three kinds. Two are taken from RTP. One question already came in exam. These are the three. After that, the most important area which we will again use in the swaps called as forward rates. What is the concept, sir? Forward rates in bonds. Sir, you think that bond violation is a 8 marks chapter? No. Bond violation is a source for one big area called as a OTC derivatives. Because what you do here again, you will do in forward rate agreements. You don't understand forward rates in bonds, nah. you can't understand the swap violations properly. So, that area. Next after that, forward rates. Forward rates after another concept is there. Bond valuation with the swaps concept. Again, expectation theory. You might have heard about it. Zero coupon bonds have it. After that, we will go into bond dissection concept. You might have done that problem. Concept you might not know. Accrued interest, clean price, dirty price of the bond. Uh, that one. We will do a complete analysis on that. Once after that, we will be going into the next area called as a bond con sorry a bond repayment decisions means callable bonds we call it popularly they will call the bond and they will again repay the bond it's called as a bond buyback very big problem will be there na? you might have already done that area we will concentrate after that convertible bonds concept is there which one convertible bond after that we go into the repo rates and reverse repo rates in RBA money markets. After that, money market commercial papers and certificate of deposits. With that, bond valuation chapter will get completed. Like this, each and every minute concepts in bond valuation, not just I am not telling that only overall review or something like that. If that be the case, law also require only overall analysis in a crash. But I don't think that today's session went like a crash batch. Just because of one good reason. When I start teaching this particular concept from the student reaction, I can understand to what extent they understood the concept. According to that, I should react. Whether they understand or not, if I start reading everything. So, it doesn't have anything to do with After three days, again, you will feel that why I attended. So, which should not happen. So, try to understand very clearly, sir. Our intention is not just to read and go. Our intention is you should get benefited from this three-day session. What are the concepts we covered? Definitely, there should be some change after the class. Before class, after class, same thing means you will also advertise about the same. Whether you attend or will not attend, it doesn't matter. So, therefore, every single chapter also in SFM with the same level of clarity, starting from the bond valuation, bond valuation after equity, equity after mergers, mergers after forex, forex after derivatives, Derivatives, law, options, futures, currency options, currency futures, OTC derivatives, everything. Yeah, these are all called as a forex and derivatives set. Four days, that's why I kept a session. And classes will be till 8.30 at that time. For SFM, because it requires a lot of time for me to cover. So, the 36 hours will be the session time. 35 hours you can take. In that 35 hours, we will complete the entire syllabus. All the models with one or two problems from each set. Rather than doing 10 problems on each set, I will tell you the logic of one particular problem. You can have an ability to do all the things inside that. 
clear everyone main concentration is on options futures forex forex are not normal forex normal forex currency options currency futures and currency swaps these are the areas because this time definitely they will concentrate more number of marks in derivatives and forex area just intimating such that you can convey your friends as to what has to happen in the class so therefore you will tell to your friends and if possible and if you want to get uh, uh, through this particular sfm in four days the substantial portion just i am giving you what is the thing that i am going to do in the class which will make you more clear on the concept so anyway thank you very much tomorrow session we will be completing this entire company sector everything all the important concepts i will cover and one full day we will be putting only on the economic loss okay thank you very much good night Eight o'clock.